Thus, Good morning and welcome to the 2023 USA Rugby Club Championships. We are underway here with Atlanta versus Boston. John Broker with Craig Wilson, the contact coach. We have an early score coming up and the ball is touched down here. It is Atlanta with first blood. That's number seven, Monica Rodriguez. Touch it down. We have a great day of rugby for you coming up. This is Pool A, women's action and craig welcome in and this is going to be a good one thanks for having me john yeah wonderful to see the best talent within the usa out here in madison wisconsin uh, great start to the day looking forward to it and that one is good we're at seven nil it is atlanta 2.0 in the lead we're gonna bring you atlanta and boston right now chicago north shore and the san diego surfers coming up and slaughterhouse versus hbb Phoenix versus Nova in the first round of these women's games here on field one. If you're looking for field two action, you can find that one as well. The B, Craig Wilson, and Liz Entwistle all day bringing you these exciting matchups. Good stuff to come. So we are already underway here at Madison United Rugby facility the madison rugby facility beautiful location out here yeah absolutely wonderful location two fields one clubhouse balconies overlooking both wonderful work by the madison crew and brad dufek who's running it out there it's just a wonderful facility in the u.s would imagine we're going to see a number of tournaments taking place in the coming years this relatively new facility that one bounces just inside 10 doesn't make it. it's going to be boston's opportunity here at midfield pop that ball up there to tiffany arc Tiff, she'd like to be called. I'm going to get this going with a free kick here at midfield. Down 7-0 in this first half. Ball comes out there from Linto. Moving it to the wing. A little trouble with the handling there, but it gets to Nelson. Nelson gets that one back. It's coming across field. A little bit of a low pass. A little bit tight are this Boston team. And a knock on there for Atlanta. Referee's going to whistle that one up. First scrub of the game here is going to be to Atlanta 2.0. Yeah, good defense there from Atlanta, but you can see there initially from Boston playing very flat to the gain line, which is good if you've got that momentum, but it also gives the defense a little bit less time to, to make their tackles and stick, and that's what happened there, forcing the turnover. Ball going to come here in here from Akila Guzman. Guzman called Goose from the U.S. Virgin Islands. The Kennesaw State University, a nice work around the outside, but ball eventually just rolls 10. in a touch. We're going to come back. However, player is not 10. It's going to be a penalty for this Atlanta team. Nice opportunity to push this one down field if they want, Craig. We'll see what they decide to do. Yeah, just in the sevens game, the penalties come a lot thicker and faster. You've got to be really on point. It looks like the Boston didn't get back 10 there. So we've got a free kick, Atlanta. Oh, it looks like a penalty, and they're ready to uh, launch their attack. Let's see what they do. Straight out of this, Janae Peacock from Laurel, Maryland. Another one of the many Kennesaw State University players on this team. That one gets spilled forward by Sutton. So we'll come back with a scrum just inside their half. We got a beautiful look at this facility. What a shot from the next level rugby crew we have. Yeah, just wonderful. Just look at that. Just great angles, particularly for us. So we can see everything that's going on. It's going to be interesting for the players. Like sevens is a war position, particularly over first day, but also the two days. Uh, and a few early mistakes here just while the team settle in. And this is Pool A we have going on here. Boston's up with that one. Just trailing by seven. One converted try. Coming across midfield they go. They are looking at runners either way. Going to come back here for a penalty. Player has not released on the ground. So it will be Atlanta ball here. Guzman, Goose, quick to that one. Chooses to go the other way, does Goose. Runners off to the side, a little show of the ball. They're going to come around the edge here. Big bend from Caitlin Frisha. Frisha over the 22. Frisha headed towards the line. The Marietta, Georgia native looking at the line, powers her way over. Try number two for Atlanta, another Kennesaw State University alum. Yeah, wonderful try there. Not only did she show gas down the wing, was really fast, but as that defense came across, she had the presence of mind, lean into it. Big, big shoulders, and then get over. So that was a great, great mix of power and pace there, John. Wonderfully done by Atlanta as they take the lead here. Just about five minutes gone in this first half. 
Again, plenty of action here today. On each game, we're going to swap back and forth, four women's games, four men's games, four women's games, and back and forth as the day goes on, as we move towards the medal rounds tomorrow. Guzman, a little bit of an angle here, is not going to hit that one. Yeah, now it's the time for Boston just to just to relax. There's still plenty of time, as we know in sevens, that it's just one break away can really bring this back together. Uh, but maybe we've got to think about moving that ball a little bit wider and trying to stretch that Atlanta defense, which has looked very solid, John. Yeah, they have looked a bit tight there, has this Boston team not using the full width of this beautiful field. Sometimes remarkable how big a rugby field looks from that angle. Oh, absolutely. There's a lot of space up there. <laughs> Only seven players from each team. Yeah, it's definitely a game for athletes. Rolling ball down, taken by Victoria Avery. But Avery knocks it on the Nashville, New Hampshire native Northeastern University grad. And Liz, Boston playing Atlanta. So it has Chicago up on our scoreboard. We'll get that one fixed. This is a great picture to see where the space is. A midfield scrum is very difficult to defend. Let's see how the Atlanta launch here. They're going to go off to that right-hand side. Look for Guzman. Guzman's going to get through a couple. Ball up quickly. Pardon me, that was another player. These numbers and that kind of font look a little uh, the same to me once in a while, but I'll get it as the weekend goes on. Ball down to the ground, picked up by Rodriguez. She scored a try already. Working back, Boston, good work to get over that one. They've stolen it. They can use these points going into halftime. Looking good here. Avery moves that one. Now they've got a little bit of room. Ball up to Ordeal. Ordeal working her way forward. They're right at the 40-meter line. Have to be a little decisive there. Menendez works it out to the left-hand side. They develop the one-on-one. -on -one. Let's see what they can do with this. The side's open for Nieves. Nieves steps inside and outside. She's across the 40. She's got a player on her in Parisha, but she's able to sneak away. And great work there. A wonderful try coming. Well-deserved by Boston. Points on the board to end the half. Very needed. Yeah, so Atlanta are doing a rush defense, but what have we seen from Boston there? Once they manage to get that ball past that rush defense, then they can give the speedsters their time. And again, much like the, the line break we had before, it was a sustained speed, which is brilliant. And just as that pressure came on, turned on the leg drive, and that got her under the post for a beautiful try. Really well worked just before halftime. And it scores that one. The Middlebury College grad from Middletown, Mass., Kick goes off the post. We're going to remain at 12 to 5 here. Referee whistles us for halftime. That's going to be halftime of this first matchup. We have this one and again after this Chicago North Shore versus the San Diego Surfers. We'll take a break for just a minute. We'll be right back.
Welcome back. It's the second half of this first matchup between Boston and Atlanta 2.0. Atlanta 2.0 leading 12 to 5 here. Great matchup so far. Craig Wilson, Boston able to find the corner at the end there. Good second half coming up. Yeah, it looks like they've really adapted well within the game. So Atlanta will do a rush defense. And it's all about just trying to find those edges. And that's exactly what they did. So Atlanta, they're going to try and keep finding the edges. Boston have got to move that ball as well. We've got a wonderful matchup here, John. Boston in the white, running from right to left on your screen, getting a kickoff and not going to make 10. Unforgiving there, this Madison turf. It's going to be a free kick for Boston right in midfield. Good way to start the second half here as Menendez. The hold that ball, Samantha Menendez from Boston University, Portsmouth, Rhode Island, native. We are underway in the second half. A little move off that penalty there. Knocked on by Boston right at midfield. It's going to be Atlanta ball. See if they want to even worry about this as the player right there, Akila Guzman. Goose comes up. Ball gets spilled away. Push back in a couple directions. Going to come back to Atlanta. They have the full width of the field out here. If they can use it, they're going to keep that one just a little bit tight. The pressure was on there. If Park taking that one in. Ball coming out a little wider here. That's out to Rodriguez again. She's going to try. We have a high tackle creeping in there. So it's going to be Atlanta ball right inside their own 40-meter line. They have a penalty this time. Rodriguez takes it. Waste no time. They're going to go straight up the middle here. Try to get something set. Drawing a couple defenders. The power is on there. Good run by Janae Peacock. Janae Peacock from Laurel, Maryland. Atlanta moves the ball just a little wider. Out to the left-hand side. This time it's Atlanta playing a little bit tight in the field. See if they can move that one just a little wider as we get going. But penalties will come in here against the Atlanta team. Boston at the forward immediate line. Good opportunity here to try to tie this up. Yeah, absolutely. Brilliant defense there from Boston. You can see they really changed what they're doing. They're getting off the line and they're putting the attackers, the Atlanta in this case, under pressure and therefore getting the turnover. And now they can launch their own attack. Ball coming off the left-hand side. There's space right up the middle. They're going to waste no time getting through that. That's the try score. Nieves takes it right outside the 22. The player comes off their feet. It's going to be a penalty here for Atlanta. They're going to get out of trouble in this one. Yeah, Boston are going to be kicking themselves. That's uncharacteristic mistakes from them. Just really killing their momentum. But it does give an opportunity for Atlanta to launch their attack. Atlanta from a bit of a standstill here. Gets that to Keita Sutton. We're going to take this one in. They have some good, powerful runners for this Atlanta team. Don't know if you can play the power game through an entire weekend of seven. Gets a little tough after a while. But Peacock's going to be happy with that one right there. She's drawn in from the defenders. They're going to come right back towards that defense. Boston in and over it. Going to draw that penalty. Just not looking to that outside. Yeah, the game's got very tight here. It looks Boston actually look like they're potentially a fitter team right now. Uh, they've just turned up the momentum. And Atlanta are starting to buckle a bit, but they do have the score lead. So it's going to be interesting to see how this one pans out in the last few minutes. Certainly will be plenty of time here. White substitution. Take time off. White Clear, five just getting off. A, Took Black. a little bit of hard shot there. Black, I think we have a couple of changes coming in as well. Yeah, Boston have really upped the athleticism this second half now. It's just the mistakes what are breaking their momentum. But they don't really want to be getting in an arm wrestle with Atlanta. They're big, strong players. So it's a good clash of styles here. Ball oh, coming across for Boston. They have a runner outside, but it just spills forward out of the hands. Hard luck, early morning hands here in Madison, Wisconsin. Yeah, that's four really clear opportunities where Boston were on the front foot, and it was the skill and what, what let them down. So it's definitely, look, it's not all won and lost in the first game, but you certainly want to be, you want to be improving as the tournament goes along for sure. Coach, bind. Split back line here. Lana puts this one in. Working the time down. I'm going to come back to this left-hand side. Player just a bit isolated. No, no. Have a runner with him now. It's sorry, a support player with him now. I'm able to move that one off to the left hand side again, keeping it tight. Is Atlanta? Little pick and go there. Able to reset. Little chip over the top here. See if this pans out. Is it 
Winds backwards. up right inside the 50 meter line. Ball's gone back. Referee says that's fine. The corner's open. Going to step inside and put one around. Beautiful offload and pass. This could be a tying score. She scored one. That's Nieves, the Middlebury college player. She touches down again. Nieves. Another five points, but a tough kick here. There'll still be a couple of points behind, potentially. Yeah, like you can't take away from a wonderful line break, but I just wish she had got under the post there, particularly with the score. But let's take a look at that offload. Let's celebrate that skill level. That was awesome. And then great running down. But you've got to give massive credit to the defender there. Just look how she cut off that angle under the post to make this kick extremely difficult and just yeah, might preserve the lead. But we'll see as this kick goes ahead. But wonderful skill level all around. And it does not look like that kick has made it. So we're going to come back. Still a bit of time here for Boston. They're going to need to try to take their own kickoff here. It's going to really showing well at the moment. Art takes that one and just dribbles it forward. Can they come up with it? It comes up into the hands of one of the Atlanta players. We have about a minute and a half left on the game clock here. Referee has a time. Peacock, the power runner, is taking Yet another one, but penalty against Boston this time. We'll see what Atlanta decide to do. It might be time to just slow things down, Craig. Yeah, I suspect Atlanta's going to take their time here, wind down that clock, and to just try and hold on. Coming across to this right-hand side. Here come Atlanta. Atlanta, the move of Goose, Guzman gets it back across field. Off, coming. Here comes Atlanta, just widening that time down. And ball back across. We're giving just a little bit of an audio issue for a second here. And turned over there by Boston. Is this the opportunity? Time's winding down. Do they have the runners? They have a runner out wide here. They get that pass away. It doesn't quite go to hand. Still some work to do. That's Margaret Reese. She's headed for the corner. Reese, an exciting first game. Not sure I can do this all weekend. What a try. And Boston takes a lead with little time to go. Oh, absolutely. What a wonderful try. Defensive pressure. Boston have really had a chat at half time and put pressure on Atlanta. And they managed to get that ball back and then move it. It wasn't the prettiest of pass, but it's effective. I mean, it allows that speedster to race over and get the try. And now it's going to be Boston who's going to be taking their time here. But this game is still very much in the balance because I suspect a kickoff's about to come. Wow, this has gone down to the wire. Reese had just scored that try, a University of Connecticut grad, but coaches at Northeastern who just won a sevens national championship of their own. So she certainly knows the game as that kick doesn't go over. But we are at 14 minutes of the game clock. Referee saying there's time for one more kick. This is a big moment coming up, John. Last play of the game. Atlanta have to score. Boston have to finish the game out, but they have to give up possession as well. This is the beauty of sevens. Three-point game here. See what they decide to do with this one. I want to heave this one as far as they can go, but they're not going to make 10 on that. It's going to come back. Another opportunity coming for Atlanta with a kick at halfway. Yeah, that was one. Unfortunately, you didn't want to be doing that, giving the possession away. But Boston, they're going to be happy that they, their defense is really working out. But Atlanta have definitely got a trick up their sleeve. And now's their time to use it. See what they decide to do in the second half. It's changed a little bit. They've kept it a little tight at Atlanta. They need to find a seam off the middle or some space around the outside. They can put this away. John has a hold of the ball. She's going to get it going right at halfway here. Going to come off to the right hand side. See if any substitutes they've used are going to make a difference here. Boston trying to hold that player up, but get to the ground they do. No penalty there. Boston going to need to be careful here. Off to the left hand side. Ball is not going to go further than the first receiver, but back to Guzman. Guzman to the ground. Two Boston players digging over that one. A referee sees it. A referee spots the great work there, not releasing. Going to be a penalty for Boston. All I have to do is get this one out of bounds, and they can be done with this game. And they're going to do just that. Our first one was a barn burner, 15-12 Boston. Coming up, we're going to have Chicago North Shore versus Surfers, but what a finish. Yeah, great. Well, fair play to Boston. They hung in there, 12 points down, 12-0 uh, down, but they managed to score the rest of the remaining points. Wonderful try. All right, we'll be right back. Next game coming up. I might just be talking to you.
Welcome back. It is game number two. We are looking at San Diego Surfers taking on Chicago North Shore here. This is a big one. Good work here. This is a Pool B matchup. Other teams in this pool are WAC, Washington Athletic Club, and Little Rock. John Broker with the contact coach bringing you this one. About to see San Diego Surfers in those lovely, I don't know what color to call them, jerseys. They're waiting just a second there. They're going to take on Chicago North Shore. They're going to be running from right to left on your screen. Yeah, they certainly look the part, San Diego, but they also play the part. A wonderful team, but Chicago North Shore, also a strong team with a proud history. So I think this is going to be a wonderful matchup. And it's interesting, John, because it's a, it's a full weekend event. But you have got to start strong, but you've got an opportunity to build in. And it's interesting, all the preparation, all the weeks have gone into this. And then it's all about executing when the day comes. Everybody's got themselves out here to this Madison United Rugby Club, Madison at Rugby Complex. We see field two in the background there. You take a look at Pool B, Washington Athletic, WAC, Chicago North Shore, San Diego Servers, and Little Rock are going to be competing for Pool B. As soon as we get underway here, we'll be waiting for a referee, and we have one. We have a whistle. San Diego is going to kick this one off. Or behind the mark next time. Ball to the 22. A nice high kick there from the surfers. Chicago North Shore in green here is going to get an early penalty. Players quickly moving back. See so they decide to do their other 22. They may kick this one forward. Look at the line out, but looks like they can go for the run here, Craig. Yeah, there's options across the ball, but they're going for the run. Let's see what we do. Gonna send a power run in there just to get that set up. Ball squirts out the back. Have to just pick that one up quickly. On the move there is Sienna Jordan. Jordan gets it out to that wing. They're gonna play this short side. This should be no problem to get over. Good work there. Nearly to pick that ball up by the player releasing, but it was knocked down in the attempt. To be a first scrum here just inside the 50 for the surfers. Plenty of room out to that right-hand side. Yeah, you can see the, what she was trying to do. We're trying to pick the ball up after the tackle uh, to kind of keep that momentum. Unfortunately, just the knock on there. And as we know with sevens, the referees are much stricter around the ruck. Any slight errors, any penalties, it's usually given in sevens. That's why we have a fast-flowing game. Fine. Surfers, first scrum just inside North Shore territory. Big drive there. You don't see that often in a sevens game. And Chicago North Shore puts down a statement of intent in that scrum. The corner's open. Can they get it? Going to wrap around. Going to keep the ball in hand. A big run coming. Right hand out for the fence. She may not need it. She's by. That's Emma Farnan. Emma Farnan skips out of another. Emma Farnan looking for a runner. Ball is loose now. Surfers have it at their own 10-meter line. They're going to go to the boot. There's plenty of room downfield. However, a sweeper back here. The player's off sides. We're going to come back for a penalty player. Hit someone off sides from Chicago North Shore. Penalty to San Diego. What a great move there by Chicago North Shore. Yeah, really getting there. Absolutely. Wonderful wrap around. But you've got to give massive kudos to the defense because that for all money was going to be a try. But the defense didn't give up. And that allowed them to get that ball back and return the pressure. And now we've got territory. So just wonderful rugby all around there, John. Absolutely. And just inside the Chicago half, two minutes in to this first half of Pool B action. It's going to be a surfer's line out here. See Tiana Cullen to throw that one in. But taken away by North Shore, their set piece looking very strong early on. They've got the ball in the middle of the field. They're going to keep it there. Not going to look to go wide, wide on that one. They're going to keep going in the same direction. They have two runners. Can they get this offload in? Have not. Ball spills on the ground. Foot race to get it. North Shore is up. North Shore pretty active around this ball. Very well connected as a team as that one nearly goes wide. Nearly picked off by Buescher. But it's going to come back for the knock on of a scrum here. Oh, penalty. It was an intentional and a yellow card. Hard luck there for Julie Buescher Back from up. Shawnee, Kansas. Yeah, that was a tough one. It looked like she was going for that ball, but as we say in seven, the referees are just that much more stricter. It was a wonderful high-risk, high-reward play, and I think she just slightly came on the end of it there. But you can see that North Shore really trying to move this ball. Very well drilled, this North Shore team, as the ball comes out onto that wing. There's room here again. The afterburners are on. Look at that speed coming from Sienna Jordan. Sienna Jordan from Carmel, Indiana. Went to Washington University, was a track athlete, and you can see it right there. 
First points on the board for Chicago North Shore. Five nil, three and a half minutes gone. And with a player in the sin bin there for San Diego, it was just a numbers game, okay? Just moving that ball into space. And as you mentioned there in commentary, John, it was the handling skills. The ball's in front, the pass is crisp, and then that allows our, the sprinters to really get onto the ball, particularly when they have one defender down. And when we take a look back at this, so a little switch move, and it's just great catch pass, and then that, Numbers down in defense, leaves the overlap, and the rest is history. Wonderful rugby there. Wonderful. Look at the try there. Early lead here for Chicago North Shore. Two and a half remaining. 15 to kick. 15 Set to, to kick. kick off. Jess Dombrowski right there. Brosky has Watch been a key playmaker, as you've seen, from Wheaton, Illinois. Long rugby career. So director of operations for the Chicago Hounds, the MLR team. So rugby full-time for Jess. Kickoff near the 22, but San Diego surfers will be able to get that one. Getting a penalty player not staying on their feet there for the surfers. A lot of things going Chicago way at the moment. Yeah, it's just a little inaccurate there at the Rock. you really got to make sure that you're keeping your feet. So you're not sealing off. Uh, referee, it was an easy and picture, really. Uh, head going straight down, and that allows now North Shore to launch another attack. See the little move there from North Shore. The big power run coming straight in. Back they go. Looking for some room. Very aggressive defense now from the surfer team. But Mackenzie Wood is able to get herself free. Mackenzie Wood across the 22 has players there. Good work getting the ball back. Looking to the right, going to the left. They've got a couple of runners here. The space is opening up. But they got that wide pass there, and that's the try score. Jordan handoff one. Jordan shakes off the tackle. Two in a row. Sienna Jordan, great work here from Chicago North Shore. Yeah, wonderful mix between power and then finding in the edge. So it was the power game, but also the subtle little offloads just to keep that momentum so there's no offside line. And then it was all about that crisp passing we talk about. And check that ball out. That is absolutely beautiful. Doesn't break stride. And then it's the right-hand fend, the leg drive, the power, a wonderful try there. But a good mix of really speed, pace, skill execution. North Shore are looking good. Emma Farnan taking her time here. Farnan from Bayshore, New York. Went to Notre Dame. Was going to push that one across the post. The bagel connoisseur misses. North Shore to kick off as we're winding down this first half, taking a good lead over this San Diego Surfers team. San Diego puts one high. It's going to hit the ground, taken by the Surfers. Ball across, looking to that width. They've got a runner out wide. Let's see if that speed game is on here. Looking for the corner, and here come the Surfers. Well taken, well tackled is Cherie Collins. But possibly a little high there, so we're going to have a penalty against Chicago North Shore. Quickly, Tegan McDonald gets a hold of it. Tegan McDonald pushes that ball across field, but it slides in front of Kathy Kai. It's a little stop up in the midfield here. Player coming over there. Advantage here for the Chicago North Shore team. Nice ball over the top. We may get another one here before the half is done. Big break for Emily Cron. Emily Cron across the line. Emily Cron touches down, and Chicago North Shore really showing this field what they have early on in this tournament. Yeah, I'm really impressed with the contact skills. It was all about that turnover there. Then the presence of mind just to move that ball into space and the support players there and racing away. But it all came from that pressure in defense and then the turnover. That's what set this try up. So that was total rugby for me from defense into attack. Good work there by North Shore. Kick to come here. Others have been scored a bit on the corner. And that, that one is good. Referee whistles us for halftime. Chicago North Shore out to a pretty good lead here. We'll step aside for a minute and be right back with second half action. Okay. Foul play. I have one high tackle.
in our game. We play with our hearts. We don't play with sticks, bats, or gloves. We don't wear shoulder pads or helmets. We keep playing when it hurts. And we leave everything on the field. What we wear must be built for our game. Sore San Diego Surfers, a bit of work to make up here. Coming around, looking for some runners. <laughs> Taking a couple of turns there. Chicago North Shore has a hold of this ball. The Surfers get it back. Just spills out there. Quickly over is North Shore. They are doing great work at the contact area. Fortunately, I have the contact coach with me. Keep an eye on this. Yeah, it's just Looked really w wonderful work at the breakdown. That's a lot of momentum killed from um, from San Diego. But absolutely wonderful work. Just see how they're going low, but they've been really patient. They're picking their moments, and that's why they're getting the reward. So great, great coaching there. 19 nil. it is to Chicago North Shore right now. Long kick down the sideline. So they're going to have a line out here inside the 22. We take a look at that scoreboard just 30 seconds into the second half. After this matchup, I'm going to hand it off to Liz and Twissa with Craig. It's going to be Slaughterhouse versus HEB and Phoenix versus Nova to round out the first part of this women's tournament. Ball goes up to the front there. Old school pass up the top in the lineup, but it works. Got runners coming. A little switch back in, but look at that show. Beautiful work right into the hands. And this well a drilled Chicago North Shore team. Get the ball up Mackenzie Wood. I feel like we're going to see this team go far based on what we're seeing here, Craig. Yeah, beautiful skill execution from the line out, off the top, moving the ball, and then that little dummy switch, and then also to give the pass. It was just wonderful. This is going to make many highlight reels. You can see, just look how the go for the dummy switch to show and go. And then have it straight up to get that last defender in. Gives the ball into space. That is brilliant rugby. And North Shore are looking very, very sharp. Wonderful work there. Finished by Mackenzie Wood from Geneva, Illinois. She went to Northern Illinois University. Said she started playing because she wanted to find a sport where she could hit people. Suppose well, she found one. Yeah, well, she wasn't hitting <laughs> anyone there. She was in space. She looked pretty good. Tell, but uh, it's always great to hear that people liking the contact side of the game. Uh, it's a big, big part of what I love. And I tell you what, I'm really impressed with North Shore so far. Just Dombrowski to kick this one off. So Please she's a in. proud dog mom to Bucky, who may be home watching. Let's go. Time is done. Thank you. Dombrowski set to kick this one off. Inside the 40 meter line, San Diego Surfers down 26 nil now. Things are looking a little uphill for them as they roll take away. the ball back in and keep it tight against that very powerful defense. The player can't roll away, so it's going to be a penalty here for the Surfers. They're going to waste no time getting this one wide. Coming out to the right hand side, they've got two runners, excuse me, and ball out to the wing, but just a little behind there, giving that Chicago North Shore defense a little time to work their way over it. Surfers. Yet again, a little rush defense just closes off that passing lane. Good work, North Shore, to slow down their momentum. 
Now pretty even numbers out here again, pushing up. But look at the speed coming around from the surfers. Surfers looking at the line. Surfers getting the ball going. That is Kayla Walker. Kayla Walker can only do so much. She's in a full split at the five-meter line. Ball gets kicked out. Referee says that's fine. Chicago North Shore, good urgency to get to that ball inside their own line. Still four minutes to go with the 10-minute mark here. They are on their line. Dabrowski shows, takes a big hit for her troubles. The surfers to turn this one over. Ball coming back to the surfers. Good attacking position. Do they have the runners out here? See where they decide to go with it. They have another person. They had to show and push that one out. But try coming for the surfers. Potentially ball rolls over. And finally, they get there. Made to work hard by the Chicago North Shore team, but points on the board for San Diego. Yeah, much better from the surfers. Excellent rugby all the way down. Uh, they were moving that ball into space. Although they got turned over, they didn't give up. They put the pressure back on defensively. And that was a really great bit of skill there because there was a rush defense coming onto the, the attacker there. It was a slight step with the right foot and then under the post. So that's a really good response from the surfers and will give them momentum going into the rest of the weekend. Kick is no good. It was Amy Verdonic that scored that try. Butler, New Jersey, at the University of Scranton. Now playing in San Diego. Just as we see here, that step and then the power through. She still had a lot of work to do. Great pressure on, but great try line awareness. Knew where it was. Two hands to get that ball down and really well worked. North Shore take this one. They change the direction of the attack here. Good footwork gets that player out and across. Ball up. Defensive pressure coming on from San Diego. They know time is against them here. Another nice offload from Chicago North Shore. A couple of players working their way around. They get that one down. Lamont eventually steps into the distributor position, but big hit forces a knock on there. Got to be a scrum just under 12 minutes gone for the San Diego Surfers. Yeah, really good play there. And again, it was it was that pressure defensively. Unfortunately, in the first half, it turned into a yellow card. It was a similar situation there. So definitely high risk, high reward. This time they're on the right side of the outcome. Now they've got one of the best attacking opportunities Crouch. there is in rugby. A midfield scrum, 20 meters out. Bind. Thanks, your bank. Set. Putting in from the tight head side are the surfers. Little pick up and go, shakes away from that tackle. The line is open there if they can get it. They've got it to Verdonic. She's already scored one, tries to put the offload away. Can't get it there, but looking at the corner, spinning back around, looking at the try line. That may have been a high tackle. See what the referee deems. He's going to have him keep playing right here. Line opens up for Verdonic. Verdonic gets someone back. Little pick and drive over here. Try awarded. The surfers have two. Good work as time marches on. Or Tegan McDonald. Yeah, wonderful response from the scrum. They put the pressure on. They moved the ball wide. But you saw that Sa uh, San Diego there were really comfortable in that close quarters, those tight, tight kind of contests. A few offloads and good movement. And it all eventually came from a pick and go. So really good, quick momentum. You can see the ball's been moved. They're not, they're not getting stuck in the tackle. And I really like this, just that quick tap and go, uh, pick and go. And then you're going to see one more great try line awareness once again. Burrows over for a wonderful try. There's Tegan McDonald that scores that one. Comes from a good rugby family. McDonald, father, got everybody into playing the game. Played in high school for the Pleasanton Cavaliers and UC San Diego. Now here at the USA Rugby Club Sevens Championship. The ball rolls in a touch. Just about 20 seconds to go here. It is going to be Chicago North Shore ball. I don't imagine they will take their time about this. Yep, just uh, it looks like it might be full time already. Actually, full time. Referee whistles us for full time, and that is the end of this one. Chicago North Shore looking strong, taking this one. What a, a game we have here. Next up is going to be Slaughterhouse versus HEB. Craig is going to stay on for this. I'm going to hand over the play by play reins to Liz and Twistle. Be back with you a little later on today when the men's action kicks off here on Field One. We'll be right back.
Welcome back to Field One here at the Madison United Wisconsin Rugby Complex. I am Liz Entwistle alongside Craig Wilson here with women's pool action. We just saw matches in Pool A and Pool B. Victories for Boston winning 15 to 12 over Atlanta. Chicago North Shore, my alumni team, winning 26 to 10 over San Diego Surfers. We are moving on to Pool C action coming up. We have Slaughterhouse out of Eastern Pennsylvania taking on the HEB Lady Harlequins out of Texas. Story of the tournament so far has been penalties. Craig, thoughts on the matches we've seen and key points to look for in this game ahead. Yeah. Wonderful start. It's lovely to be here with you, Liz. Thanks for having me. Yeah, it's been great rugby so far. Lots of ball movement, lots of strength. The old teams feeling each other out early in this uh, competition. So we see the action on the field. Both of these teams debutantes here in the club sevens setup, but no strangers on the field. We'll keep an eye out. Eastern, sorry, this Eastern Pennsylvania team, the Slaughterhouse, plenty of college talent. And here we go on the field. Wonderful ball movement getting towards the near sideline. The cut back towards the middle. Look at this chase from the defense, but it is going to be all Slaughterhouse going over the line, going from left to right across the screen in the more red jerseys. Yeah, great start there. Great ball movement to find that space, and it's all about that speed. But as you mentioned there, Liz, credit to the defense, working hard to get back. That shows a lot of desire for the team. So I think we're going to have a wonderful matchup here. Great start. The conversion kick missed wide and low. Score is going to remain 5 to nothing. one minute into this opening half of play. We look at this Pool C, and there are plenty of new teams here in the competition. Again, a little bit of a different setup coming into Club 7's 2020. Out of that Southern California West region, the Slaughterhouse team from Pennsylvania, the Lady Harlequins out of Texas, and a newly formed Oregon Sharks team that has brought in several capped players. Pool C, a pool to watch, a pool of unknowns, trying to make their mark on the field here in this opening round game. We see the penalty awarded, and our referee appears to be going to the pocket. We saw a yellow card earlier, that high-risk, high-reward situation when it comes to the intentional knock-ons in the game of sevens. HEB moving the ball across the field, looking toward the right-hand side. This is a team that has, again, been newly formed. Several experienced players on the field. Keep an eye out for Etta Mailau. She's a capped player when it comes to the game of 15s for Samoa. Angelina Lomu, a veteran of the Life West Rugby Program, as well as the American Rugby Pro Training Center. We'll get a look at this from and the power of this HEB Lady Harlequin Coach. squad. Slaughterhouse, Five. ball in hand. Set. Slaughterhouse going around the back. We see the scoop, the ball bouncing on the ground. Good composure from the wing on the outside, cutting away towards the middle, finding her support on the field. See something she liked going up the field. We see three HEB jerseys. There's going to be space left to right. Left on the field is where they go. Slaughterhouse. Punishing tackle here by HEB. Advantage being shown. Or perhaps forming the offside line for the ruck. Slaughterhouse. Maintaining possession, looks to go left, does a little bit of the spin move. Still see something around that left sideline. Slaughterhouse going to their strengths. Slow play around the rock and it's Slaughterhouse. Player in motion, taking the ball up field, tackled well by HEB, looking for a bit of the counter ruck and pick and go. It is off. Slaughterhouse again, numbers to this left hand side. We see Kelsey Diabo in the action. The pick, the place, the attempt again. The ball just knocked forward and a scrum to HEB. Well, I tell you what, that was a, a battle of attrition there, Liz. You could see the Slaughterhouse were asking questions. They were keeping the ball alive. They were really quick at the ruck, but HEB had all the answers. They were sticking their tackles. They were putting defensive pressure on, and they eventually get their war with a scrum. But I tell you what, we've got a, we've got a tough battle out here Five. right now. Set. HEB with the pudding going to the weak side, wrapping around. Slaughterhouse there in defense. The tackle is made. And now we see the counter ruck and we see the poach by Slaughterhouse. The Slaughterhouse able to recover after a strong HEB scrum. Slaughterhouse on that far sideline. Look at the positioning of our referees. Ball still in play. Slaughterhouse favoring that far side of the field, Craig. We'll see how that develops as the rest of the game goes on. Slaughterhouse making their move towards the middle. 
Redder like a book. H-E-B there to make the negative grade tackle. Slaughterhouse redistributing. Patient possession play out of the team of Pennsylvania. H-E-B on the counter ruck. H-E-B may have the ball. We'll look to see who digs it out. Plenty of play on the ground. And it is H-E-B that comes away with possession. H-E-B on the go. Looking deep into the try line, deep from the heart of Texas. And it is H-E-B going over the line right in front of the goalpost. Craig, we're going to see one of the easiest kicks we've seen all day long. Absolutely, but they were certainly made for work for it all the way up to that. It was very, very tight contest, and it's all about these close quarter skills now. You can see the rucks are a real battle right now, and then just turning on that power, that leg drive. The defense nearly get there, and it was just great try line awareness just to know that they've got that one movement to reach out. That's exactly what we do, get the ball down. And I tell you what, this is, this is a really great battle right now. Pool C being the pool to wall debut on the club seven year action. Pool B kickoff with Chicago North Shore and the San Diego Surfers. Those are three of last year's four semifinalists. The fourth semifinalist team, the Scion, not competing in this year's event due to eligibility issues. So we see Pool B as a pool of death. Pool C, a bit of the unknowns. And if we're going to follow the lines of the Women's World Cup in soccer, anything is possible. Absolutely. That's the beauty of -E -E these ball competitions. In hand with a split. you off there craig go ahead yeah sorry liz yeah i was just saying that's the beauty of these competitions isn't it that any team if they get a little bit hot they can go really really deep and that's just the beauty of sevens and also testament to the athletes out there who work hard to put themselves into this position so back onto the field we see heb waiting for their restart split three and three across the field keep an eye on number 11 that's angelina lomu again a very experienced player on this squad the kick is up about 15 meters deep downfield. We see the shape here out of Slaughterhouse now coming toward this near sideline, getting some action towards the right. Look at that dummy, the show and the go, finally taken down in defense. And HEB is there. They draw the penalty. Looking for a quick tap scenario. There's Lomu with the ball in hand. Lomu with a bit of the slow play, looking to create some space, but knocks the ball on. So good defensive pressure with the launch coming from Slaughterhouse. Absolutely. It just looked like they got caught in two minds there. It was a tap and they were trying to invite that defensive pressure, perhaps to get that power play going. But it was good defense. They managed to hit the ball. There's the knock on. And tell you what, look at that beautiful view there. Uh, we've got a real great game on our hands. Two good teams here. We are in to extra time here in the first half of play. HEB leading 7-5. to five. The penalty, though, to Slaughterhouse. If you're Slaughterhouse, you'd love to get some additional points on the board. They take the quick tap. Numbers towards the far side of the field, looking to stretch their legs and stretch the width. It is Slaughterhouse with a little bit of a loop, and here is the tiniest bit of space, threading the needle, making her way downfield. She's got one to beat. Dummies towards the inside is able to take the ball outside. Is she over the line? It looks like time won the race in that one. So HEB maintaining the 75 lead. We'll be back with the second half of action in just a moment. Looks, looks like that was a try.
here to the second half of action. We have Slaughterhouse in the red jerseys going from right to left across your screen, kicking off to HEB out of Texas. Waiting on verification for the end of that first half. It seemed the try may have been scored. We saw a conversion attempt, but we also saw the clock running down. So if we have any fans who want to tweet us in with official updates. HEB in action saw the dummy from Lomo. Lomo again there with the ball in hand. The long blonde braid dragging down, drawing in three slaughterhouse defenders. HEB. On the go, we see the offload. This is a team that's coming in with nine players well. tournament. So we'll see how those tactics pay off with the team in trying to and trying to maintain their lungs. Yeah, Slaughterhouse have been really impressed with their tackling. You can see that HEB, they're really big, powerful players, and they're really trying to get the momentum through the middle of the field. But Slaughterhouse are keeping their discipline in defense critically. They're sticking their tackles, and they're giving themselves big opportunities to get the ball back, and that's exactly what's happened there. Beautiful shot here of a scrum at the middle of the field. We Slaughterhouse pressure from this HEB defense. HEB comes away with a turnover. HEB about 25 meters away from the goal line. Options right and left. We see the long looping pass towards the near sideline. Lomu quick in support, but not quick enough. It's Slaughterhouse draws the penalty, ball in hand. Really good tactics there. It was a leg chop tackle that brings the attacker down to the floor quickly. And then great contact skills for the Jackal to poach the ball. That was just really wonderful work. A beauty of a kick it takes Slaughterhouse to a line out about 30 meters from the goal line. We did get confirmation the first half did end without the try scored. So the score line you see is correct. HEB leading 7 to 5 over Slaughterhouse. Once again, this overhead view here in Madison. The Cottage Grove Complex has been in the works with the Wisconsin Rugby Club and all of their partner teams, a whole Madison United effort. Gorgeous conditions on the field, a gorgeous line out to follow, but not quite straight, a good lift. And this is going to give HEB the choice of the scrum or the line out, scrum chosen. And if I'm HEB, I'm loving those tactics, trying to, again, eat up the clock. The enemy here in the game of sevens where anything can happen. We have nine minutes gone on our official time, so about four and a half minutes left to play here in the second half. Be interested to see the tactics if we've a call to that first scrum from HEB. And you got Yafate, number nine, who really took that line on the blind side. So let's see what happens here. This time she goes strong. Takes a bit of a line cutting out towards the outside. A shallow cut looking for a strike runner. We see the go forward, the carry by HEB. HEB resetting. Lomu. Ducks and dives and finds her way towards that far side. She is a player that can shift direction on a dime. HEB again with a well-timed offload, getting the pass before the tackle is made, but not quite able to hold on to the ball. The ball knocked on. Scrum to Slaughterhouse in a dangerous position. Yeah, just as the as the attack was starting to develop there from HEB, they found themselves really flat. Because they're going for that power play and they're trying to go through the middle, you have to get the gain line. If you don't, it becomes very static and it becomes much easier for the defense, and that's what happened there. Again, oppressive defense from Slaughterhouse. Steep setup by Slaughterhouse. We see HEB flat in defense, and again, the pressure on the scrum. Uhutafe comes away with the ball. She's one of the pro players for this HEB team, and she has been showing why. Offense and defense around the scrum, and now look at this stride down the field and over the line. HEB gets it, turns over the scrum, and adds to their lead 12 to 5 with the conversion kick to come. Craig, thoughts on that oh. sequence of play? Oh, just absolutely brilliant, Liz. Just, I love that counteract in the scrum. It was all about power. They get the ball back, and then that allows the speedster, you have a, to do what she does best. But it all starts with this power at the scrum. Look at that, and great awareness. And then just look how she takes off a really balanced runner. She's got the ball in the left hand side, so she can fend on the right if needed. Wonderful technique. It was a good effort to try and get her down, but she had enough power and pace to get over there. Really great try. We're talking about pro players in this tournament. We do have some women that are coming off of the PR7s Championship Series this summer. We saw action last weekend at Audi Field in Washington, D.C., where it was the Loonies victorious on the women's side. And we saw the loggerheads for the men. 
These teams limited to four professional players on their roster for the weekend. Some exemptions for homegrown talent. For anyone with questions about what's going on with eligibility, why we see some teams and we don't see some others, there are some good statements on the rugby breakdown. There's a whole 19-page document out there outlining every player's potential to play. Right now, back on the field, though, it is Slaughterhouse showing off that they can play. Currently trailing 12 to 5, two minutes left to go here in the second half. Slaughterhouse taken down, looking to maintain possession. The ball bouncing on the ground. Slaughterhouse draws the penalty. They need to draw another try. Let's see what they draw from their playbook. Yeah, you've got to be really clean now as a defensive team with the clock ticking down, or also as an attacking team, um, as they look to the kicks. So let's see where this goes. The ball dribbles its way into touch inside of Slaughterhouse attacking territory. 90 seconds left to go. This is where you start to get some chills. Anything possible in the game of sevens, a seven point margin at the moment. We saw last year's pool play games where each team went through 3-0 and on the women's side. This year, again, with so many unknowns, with the defending champions out of the tournament, with three teams that came in at that 16-14 and number 12 slots filling in for teams that could not make it due to WPL action, this is the weekend where anything is possible. The slaughterhouse, ball in hand, set for the throw. A good technical shot of the line out. It is off the top, but not straight. Craig, this is going to give HEB possession and their favorite thing in this game so far, a scrum. Absolutely. That was a big moment in this game. That's when you needed your execution to be off. Unfortunately, just that line out wasn't straight. An easy call from the referee. And it gives HEB one that time to really just take the clock down. But also, as you mentioned, Liz, they love a scrum. They're very powerful athletes, this team. 15 seconds remain here in the second half. 12 to 5 the lead. HEB with the scrum. The ball in hand. HEB looking to split up the middle. We see the desperate tackle by Slaughterhouse trying to do anything they can to stop it. Penalty awarded to HEB. Time up on our game clock. Referees with official time on the field. Lomu takes the tap. Lomu finds a support runner. Lomu this time looking towards the far side of the field, deploying those stiff arms. She is a distant cousin of New Zealand legend Jonah Lomu, but right now it's all about these women on the field. HEB is on the go. Time is up on the clock, leading 12 to 5. They do not need a try. They just need to maintain possession. If you're Slaughterhouse, you're looking for any opportunity to create the turnover. They've got numbers there on defense, but is able to break these tackles. It is HEB driving downfield, eventually knocking on. And that will give us a substitution. So our time on the clock, some extra minutes allowed. We had some stoppages earlier. And now that is the game. It is HEB coming away. First win in Pool C, their first win here at Club Sevens in their first appearance. 12 to five, we'll be back with more action.
We are rounding out the final game of this first round of women's pool play here on Field One. I am Liz Entwistle alongside Craig Wilson, and here we have some veteran teams. Phoenix, based out of Florida, taking on Nova. Nova will be in the purple. Phoenix here in black, Cindy Campbell with the ball in hand. A few of these Phoenix players worth watching. We'll keep an eye on Antea Dedek, Morgan Freeman, and Lindsay Mahoney wearing number two, five, and 11 respectively. Players with PR7's actions. Antea Dedek is a player that actually Craig and I both familiar with. Craig, you coached her on one of our Stars tours. She's Captain Croatia. She's there with the red scrunchie towards the near side of the field. Yeah, an absolutely wonderful Phoenix athlete, is a as team you said. That then, placed is. Uh, eighth in the tournament last year, comes as a number five seed this year with the WPL teams that are not in action in sevens this weekend. So the favorite in this matchup, but Nova, a team with several national championship appearances under their belts. It's good to be here. Black captain, white captain, excellent. Cindy Campbell gets under the ball 12 meters down the field, the ball bouncing its way from the contact. Agnes First on the far sideline, a rugby league experience player coming out of Southern Florida. The ball knocked on, scrum to Phoenix. Yeah, this is a wonderful attacking opportunity here early in the game. Let's get the first set piece in that allows the forwards to, to really get their aggression out and go from there. It's going to be a really good attacking platform. Phoenix with the scrum near the far sideline. We see the challenge from the defensive scrum half from Nova a bit too early on the release. A penalty to Phoenix. Phoenix with a tap, the ball in hand, numbers towards this near side of the field. We see the carry, the switch back inside. There goes first, taken down by Nova. Nova quick to realign on their defense. Morgan Freeman with the run downfield, attempts a stiff arm taken down by that Nova defense. Nova is always going to be patient, a little bit of slippery conditions on the field. Phoenix able to recover. Dedich finds Christina Swift. Nova looking to counter. Phoenix taken down again. Now we're settling a bit more into the pattern of play. We see the contact, the contact, the attempt for the stiff arm, taken down, quick to realign with pods of support. Phoenix distributing the ball towards the outside. It looks like it may have been off the boot of Cindy Campbell. And now Nova is going to get their first touches on the ball in offense. The Northern Virginia program, again, a storied program in the game of sevens in the early days, as well as the reboot back in 2012 in the women's edition of the game. But Nova loses the ball in contact here. A good strip by Phoenix. Phoenix has numbers towards the near sideline. You see the offload ball in hand. There is Antea Dedich. Dedich over the line, that number two jersey for Phoenix. Thoughts on that sequence, Craig? Craig. Yeah, so yeah, Phoenix have really they set their stall out early. They're moving the ball, some great skills. And although they had to go into the defense there, they didn't panic at all. And it was good pressure just at the tackle. Really just putting the pressure on here. Leg drop tackle. And then look at those contact skills straight to the ground. That's two of those players there. I mean, it's all about playing the advantage, moving that ball into space. I mean, it was just a nice offload to finish it here. I and mean, then a wonderful try to start the game. excellent patience in their pattern of play we see them looking to break the line but when the line break is not there they're keeping the ball and keeping possession looking for support able to take the ruck establish that offside line and we see patience again here in defense so the hands on the ball rights to the ball we had Nova with the player trying to contest her knees are on the ground so Phoenix able to get the strip and quickly convert off the turnover and we see so many tries in the game of sevens that happen in those turnover situations Phoenix currently leading five to nothing three minutes into the first half of play. A longer drive on the restart. This time Nova able to cleanly field the ball. Again, towards that far sideline, Nova can't quite connect the pressure on that first receiver reception. And so we're going back to an earlier infringement, a penalty to Nova. So a chance for redemption. This defense coming up 
par coming up fierce, causing disruptions in this Nova pattern of play. Nova has not been able to get, get through one of their offensive set sequences. Credit to Phoenix. Just got no, they are launching yeah, just and they are disrupting. No time. Sorry, Liz. Sorry there. Just no time on the ball whatsoever. Uh, the Phoenix Rust defense is really, really hunting like a pack of wolves. You can see there's two players each time. Very impressive. Beautiful shot here overhead of the scrum. Just past midfield, Phoenix steep with their attack with plenty of capable players. A program that focuses on sevens. One of them here is Lindsay Mahoney making the trek from Arizona to play for this Florida-based team. They have been a team that tours, takes trips overseas. Several times we've seen them gone to Dubai. They draw players from the Carolinas. A lot of their roster, again, South Florida based. Several Life University alums, as well as some from Lindenwood. So heaps of experience on this team. Founded, coached, and led by Ail Hakim, who's also been involved in the USA Maccabea Games. Coached the Women's Sevens program that was in Israel last summer. Scrum to Nova, the put in by Amalia Allen. And again, pressure, that connection on that first receiver is something you're going to be looking to straighten out if you're Nova. Again, trailing just 5-0, five, five minutes into this first half of play. Nova. And taken down at the ankles by Phoenix. does it again. We see the scrum to the team in black sporting their red scrunchies. An offensive scrum to Phoenix. Just inside of the 22. One minute left to go here in the first half of play. We see their backs are split. Options to go either way. But right now, you hear the whistle on the scrum. The quick tack taken. Lindsay Mahoney looking towards the outside. Morgan Green finds Antea Dedek. There's Mahoney again in the number 11 jersey receiving the ball. Mahoney looking to drive over the line. And over the line she goes. Lindsay Mahoney, a veteran player with heaps of experience with ARPTC, Old Setonians out of Ireland, the current head coach at Grand Canyon University, showing she still has some skills on the field, adding to the Phoenix lead. And it was all about those contact skills, keeping the momentum, keeping continuity. It was that footwork, the athleticism, but also the presence of mind to move the ball into space with good skill execution. And then I just really enjoy the offload. So you can see wonderful view here, just a step. And then it was the offload to keep that ball alive. Great support play. Just look how they're faking and pumping that ball. Footwork once again. That was just really nice skills there. Well worked. Phoenix has done an excellent job catching Nova unaware. So we saw the first try scored in transition from that defensive poach. We see the second try in transition coming from the scrum set with the penalty awarded. The quick tap taken. This is a team in transition and a team leading by two tries as we go into the half. Phoenix leading 12 to nothing over Nova.
Welcome back to Field One here at the Wisconsin Rugby Complex in Cottage Grove, Wisconsin. I am Liz Entwistle alongside Craig Wilson here for the second half of Pool D matchup. We have Phoenix in the black taking on Nova. Phoenix currently leading two tries to nil, but this is a Nova team with multiple 15 national championships under their belts. We'll look to see what they can do. They need to make something happen here half. The Phoenix defense has proved too deep so far. Samantha Aguilar with a restart for Nova and the purple going from left to right across the stream. A bouncing ball. Nova able to recover. So now they're inside of Phoenix territory with advantage being shown. The ball knocked on off the fingertips of Phoenix. Nova maintaining possession. Possession the advantage when it comes to the game of sevens, but not enough advantage gained. And here the hot contact. So Josephine and Asumang able to draw the penalty. Nova with the tap. Allen on the go. Quickly met by Mahoney in defense. Nova getting some ball movement. Gabrielle Avila looking towards the outside. Gabrielle Avila, look at these wheels. She takes on three Phoenix defenders. Avila says, catch me outside. How about that? If you are Nova, you are starting the second half strong. You couldn't ask for a better start as a coach. Hey, Craig. <laughs> Absolutely. I tell you what, that halftime team talk must have been special because it was a great, really good receipt from the kickoff. And then they just moved that ball really well. Evan, it was just that one on one pace, little fend. It was really subtle, but really important. And I tell you what, Avila there just breaking away. We've got the ball in the left hand, so a fend if needed, two hands down, safe as houses. Really great start from Nova. We have a game on our hands. We absolutely do. And if Nova is able to take advantage of more of those opportunities, they caught the Phoenix defense in a very vertical position, not quite that like shepherding position. They gave the sideline, but they gave too much because we saw three Phoenix defenders basically in a single file line behind themselves. Something to adjust. Their defense has been so strong interior by the rough. We'll see how this continues in the second half if Nova is able to get that ball wide and stretch Phoenix out. Aguilar on the restart, a low slip, driving kick in the hands of Lindsay Mahoney. Phoenix able to recover. Kate King with the ball in hand. Campbell to the outside, Mahoney to the outside, and now we've got a bit of a Ray taking on the try score. Avila gets the offload, Cindy Campbell on the go. Cindy Campbell going over the line. She's able to get the job done. So a quick answer by the women out of Florida. Yeah, talk about just composed under pressure. It was just a great play to get that ball out back towards the right-hand side. But she passes there, number six, Campbell. But look how she follows the play. So wonderful for Mahoney. Gets the fend, the bump, and the offload. And Campbell started it, and she also finished it. So a wonderful bit of support play there to get the try. Much needed Phoenix to get themselves back with a comfortable lead. All the more impressive, too, with these women, not all centralized in Florida. Campbell, a player that started her rugby career in Ohio, was recently living in Atlanta. Lindsay Mahoney, again, flying in from Arizona for some of these weekends. Kate King out of the Carolinas. So this is a team that comes together to play quality sevens. And right now we see that paying off with a quick answer. So easy to get a bit down when you get scored upon. Nova starting the second half strong. But Phoenix with a quick answer. 17-5 to leading with four minutes left to play. Campbell on the restart, a beauty of a kick. Gave her team a chance, but Nova able to cleanly field the ball. You see the quick defense up for Phoenix, and now Nova on the go, looking towards the outside. Skip pass corralled off the ground by Aguilar. And again, some of these first reception ball handling is not buying Nova the pace and the width that they would like to see in the game of sevens. This time a bit of a leg drive gets it done by Haley Robinson. The Phoenix, no counter here on the ruck, lining up seven flat in defense, looking to smother this Nova attack, and that they do. Agnes first nearly coming away with the strip. Asameng fighting to keep possession. And Nova back inside of their 22. Again, this first reception, slippery conditions, slippery balls in hand. And this defense continues to walk away field territory and now they're going to walk away with a penalty just in front of the goal line. 
Yeah, Campbell was really showing her just her smarts there as a rugby player. Just give himself some, the referee a really good picture in that ruck. Her jackal position, it was wonderful. Nice straight back, clearly keeping her feet. And then she just wins that ball back for her team. Nice, smart play. In at the scrum half position for Phoenix. The ball is in and quickly out. Kicked back by the hooker. Phoenix numbers towards his right sideline. Steep on their offensive attack. Agnes first. Taken down by Nova. Supported by Phoenix. Phoenix looking to quickly redistribute. Can they go sideline to sideline here? And will they need to? We see the kick off the outside of the boot down the field off the boot of Mahoney. Recovered, corralled. Phoenix, Caitlin Edwards adds to the tally. Phoenix going to be leading 22 to 5 with a conversion to come. Well, if you can't go around them and you can't go through them, best place is to go over them. What a beautiful kick here. Really, really well done. And there's an old adage, the kick is only good as it's chased. And that was an absolutely wonderful chase there. Uh, just to get that ball down, get the try. So just, uh, you can see here, just wonderful variants of their attack through power, pace, skill, and then with the boot as well. We'll correct that earlier. That was Cindy Campbell with the vision on the boot. A player well weighted on the boot, well read on the field. Having out of 1823, some time with USA Rugby League. A lot of representative rugby. And she's showing off how all this education on the field and the ability to play with a variety of teammates pays off this spacing, this overhead view. The numbers were there if Phoenix needed in support. This is a team on the go. So the restart, not 10, free kick to Nova here at the middle of the field. One minute left to play here in this opening round matchup. Again, all of these games key. It's so much easier to advance when you win the first one, but anything can happen in the tournament. Anything can happen on the field of sevens. Again, this women's bracket is anyone's up for grab with Scion out of the tournament. And with all of last year's semifinalists pooled together in pool B, Nova towards the outside. The try scorer, Alan Avila. On the go. Tackle to touch. The quick line out here from Phoenix. The ball goes five. It goes backwards and into the hands of Kate King. Kate King looking for that offload, looking for support. Tangled up in a sea of Nova purple. So good for you can see the spirit there for Phoenix. They really wanted to play. It was a quick line out. They want to move the ball. They want to really show what they can do. And for Nova now, from this scrum, it's all about just getting some good feels. Okay, you can say this game with uh, with the scoreboard now in the red is over, but the weekend is still a lot to play. So let's just get a really good set here from Nova, build some good feels, and so it's all about momentum as they build. Aguilar with a quick put in, the ball quickly out. Asimeng dancing away in the middle of the field, looking for that offload, finds it, but quick, quick tackle coverage by Phoenix. Nova keeping the ball alive, looking towards the far side of the field. The slide as the pulls, Nova able to get some go forward. Again, a team well versed in the game of 15s, multiple national championship appearances in the last few years. And Nova on, on the go, again, a drive through contact. Phoenix with the tackle, Asimeng with a quick pick, and now it is Nova on the go. Again, looking for these holes, excellent strike lines, getting to go forward with the front foot. Asimeng again in that ruck half position. We see the quick launch by Phoenix. This opens up a bit of a gap. Nova again. Getting their connections. It is working when their first receiver is able to hang on to the ball. Nova marching their way downfield. Quick play towards the far sideline. Nova with numbers steep here to the right. Looking left again. There is a matchup there loving towards that left side of the field. Phoenix able to shift and cover. A shot of Caitlin Edwards crawling her way out of that ruck. And now look at this ball passed higher. Phoenix able to close the gap on defense and take away the space. And this is what they have done well all game long. Phoenix again patiently able to drop the turnover. Phoenix with possession middle of the field. Ball in hand, 24 to 5 the lead with two minutes of extra play here in this opening round game. Phoenix looking to add some points to the board. 
Looking to add to that point differential, that try differential, and adding another try. I believe that is Kate King, and it is indeed Kate King going over the line, adding another five for Phoenix. Yeah, just soaked up the pressure well, really well, and just great skills. It's just the balance of the running. You can just see just pure athleticism, but it was well worked moving that ball into space to get the ball under the post, and round off at the break try. They didn't need the try, but they're looking for points to add to the differential to ensure they go through with the top spot here. That is the final of the women's opening round matchups here. Phoenix victorious over Nova. We'll be back in just a moment with men's action.
And welcome back here to Madison, Wisconsin. We're at the USA Rugby Club 7s National Championships. This is John Broker. I'm joined by Liz and Twistle now as we start the men's divisions. This first matchup is going to be Life West versus the Dallas Reds. Following that is going to be Belmont Shore versus Oregon, Chicago Lions versus Tennessee Elite, and the St. Louis Bombers versus Mystic River. Liz, we have some great games coming up. This is the game I want to watch, John. This is a match of last year's eighth and ninth place finishers, Life West out of Northern California, a team I got to see in action many times in last year's qualifier series, a team that draws from all over the Northern California region, several ties to the Pac Grizzlies program and college programs. Dallas Reds, though, this is a team to watch. It's a team coached well by Lynn and Chris Howard, a team that returns the core group of their players from last year and one player to watch. J.P. Aguirre adds his first debut with the Dallas Reds here at Sevens Nationals, one of the pro players from the Dallas Jackals in the MLR. Keep an eye on as well as their number four, Aaron Gray, coming off of a PR Sevens campaign. So this is going to be Life West here in the blue and red. Kicking off. All right, we're ready to go. Thank you, Liz. And Liz in the blue and red is going to be Life West kicking off this one. Cool match here on field one. First men's matches of the game. That one goes high for the Dallas Reds. Dallas Reds seem to knock that one forward, but referee says it's okay. Driving it forward, a little kick. We're going to come back for the knock on. It's been spotted right outside the 40 meter line. Life West will have a first scrum of this game. Great attacking with out to that left hand side, Liz. We saw Ani Mateto trying to get his hands on the ball, kicking it downfield. A veteran out of Lindenwood University. We'll keep an eye, though, on this scrum. We have Dylan Perry. It's going to be Dallas Reds. Life West, plenty of depth. We'll see what they create. To the defensive scrum half there, Dylan Carrion. He has a big sevens history in USA Club Rugby. That ball comes out the left-hand side for Life West. Life West looking at the corner, getting it around there. Dalen Denenberg, he gets across the 50-meter line, could just toss the ball up. Dallas tries to take that one back, but it winds up in the hands of Life West again. Aaron Pass just going to slow down their attack for a second. Coming across the field, little goose steps coming in, looking for the run, looking for the switch, puts it up to the big number eight, Dante Bandani. Bandani takes contact, but eventually can't get the offload away. He's going to put that one down, and Tavares moves it off to the left. They're coming to the right. Quick ball here, Skylar Mitchell. Skylar Mitchell, the big boy, is not going to find the speed corner. Big power coming in from Dallas, but not rolling away from the tackle. It's going to be Life West ball. Chukogu, Chukogu gets us going quick. Gets the ball down to McCarthy. McCarthy, they're moving it wide right away. Denenberg, he's been across the line. Not across the line, but on the width already in this game. We'll see a lot of him. McCarthy, ball comes left. A little offload. Just to gather our Life West. McCarthy moves it again. Chukogu. Looks at the space, steps back edge. Kogu looking for someone. Beautiful offload. McCarthy off to the left hand side. See where they want to go with this one eventually. To Kogu again finds short pass there after taking the contact. Back across to Varus. To Varus into contact. Good continuity. Lots of phases here from Life West. They look comfortable. Ball in hand. Power towards the touchline. Can this player stay in? Ball touched by one of the Dallas players. We'll see what the assistant referee says. After a long passage of play, Liz, it is going to be a line out here for Life West. It's been all Life West so far. Big hit coming in there as we take a look at that replay. We'll be back to the line out in just a second. Electing for a scrum, however, is Life West. Life West at the five meter line, try line, beckoning them. Good scrum by Dallas, putting the pressure on. We're going to come back for it. Players driving up. The penalty here, and here goes Life West quickly through McCarthy. McCarthy at the line. McCarthy scores the first one. Five points to the good for Life West after a sustained period of pressure. Liz, some excellent play there from this Life West team. John, I'm going to see you on some internet issues and cannot see the play on the field. I am frozen on a scrum. So I'll have to be And that try is there. We're waiting for the kick to come. Some technical issues for Liz. We'll bring her back in just a second. So don't worry, folks. We'll bring that one. 
looking at the kicker. That ball is up. Assistant referee says no good. We're going to make it 5-0. Life West over at Dallas right here in this first half. Great try all. Life West, Dallas going to need some time with ball in hand. In order to make their case. I did see him walking for a kick. Four minutes of nearly full possession by Life West. Ball down to Dallas. Dallas taking the ball to the center of the field. Big run coming in from Jalen Tatum. Gets the ball up to Aaron Gray. Aaron Gray gets that ball down. Big handoff there from this Dallas team. That's Imonugo. Gets the ball up to another one of the big boys, Tiaki. Dylan Carrion goes out the back, but can't find Timo Mohamed Hadar, the Wheeling University product. Good work there. We're just going to wind up here in a line out for Life West. Look at Etiaki here. Dylan Carrion just puts that one out. You see Hadar just looking for that one. Hadar, a member of the Moroccan national team. Great seventh player, collegiate and club here at this club seventh championship. Ball moves to the middle of the field for Life West. Big boys looking to come through and release that one. Ball up, taken in. Ball's come back. A referee says play on. Teto. Gets it up to carry on, carry on, gets it, Etiaki, Etiaki, ball, Etiaki. Looks to get that offload, but it's knocked on. We're five and a half minutes going. From here at the 40 for Life West. Life West. Has a scrum here, but we're going to make a change. Substitute coming in for Dallas as Atiaki. Going to take a little breather for the remainder of this half. He can come back in. You just have a number of subs and sevens. Five nothing Life West. Scrum here to. Life West, Life West moving it out to the left hand side here, to the right hand side. Nice break up the middle. That's Kovu. He's been the playmaker so far. McCarthy, the try scorer, gets it out to the wing, gets it into Bandani's hands. We have a breaking play here just for a second. Lands the way, just the ball went. I believe it's going to be a line out. I think we have Liz and Twistle back with us. Liz, entertaining game so far. This is a physical matchup that you'd expect to see. We've got such talent on both of these teams. And now I'm back to the action on the field with you, John. Timo Hadar puts that one forward. Hadar gets a kick, but it rolls out before Annalisa Mateto can get to that one. So we're going to come back. The referee has a flag out. The referee's going to have a discussion. We'll hold on. Okay, so he took a clear step after he kicked the ball and committed to the tackle. Do you have a number? Blue 11. Blue 11! Mm. Referee wants to have a word with Denenberg Wait, here. Looks like kicker. he hit Hadar after. Step after he kicked the ball. Yellow. Over seven minutes of the game clock in the first half. So we're at referee's time. It's going to be one player down for the first two minutes of the second half as well as the end of this. Going to be Dallas Reds penalty opportunity to put some points on the board here. Mostly life west ball so far, Liz, but Dallas opportunity to level this one right here. So Man, life lost west players getting again evaluated. Here. Oh, there we go. Go ahead, Liz. Sorry. We're going to give Dallas the ball in hand at the 22 meter mark with a one man advantage, currently trailing five to nothing. These are the pressure situations that you live for. We spoke about Dean carrying here in this front pack position, an experienced player coming on Arkansas State, spent some time in the USA development pathways, and here he goes with what play develops. Dylan Carrion moves that one. Dylan Carrion has played sevens in a lot of places. Nice wide pass to Hadar. Hadar looking for the corner. Hadar just has to let it go. Ball to the 22, Mateto has a hold of it. The referee spots the knock on. And we are going to go into halftime here. A slight lead here for Life West, despite all the ball, 5-0. We'll be back in just a minute with second half action.
John Lefers. Welcome back to Field 1 here. We're taking a look at Field 2, but right now Life West is going to receive from Dallas. Dallas Reds in the white kick off the Life West. They're leading 5 to nil. John Broker with Liz and Twistle. All goes back to Life West. See what the discussions were like in the sheds at halftime here. A little work to do for Dallas. They've had very little ball. Lucky to be just 5 nil down at the moment, but a knock on by Life West. Could be a scrum here for Dallas. You see carry on coming to get the ball quickly. Liz, great attacking opportunity for this Dallas Reds team. Yep, Dallas coming out hard, and they still have that one man advantage on the yellow card to Life West. So, an opportunity to score the try. They should have opted either way, left or right, off of the scrum. Life West is going to have just two backs in defense. So, it makes some magic. Carry on, he's always aware, pulls it a defender, draws it, gets it out to Hadar. Hadar hasn't found a line yet, but he's gonna find it now. The Moroccan speedster touches one down, and it's tied up here in Madison. Cool E action, 5-5, Life West Dallas, kick to come. We saw the situational awareness again with the option to go to either side. They were able to draw a two-on-one towards that left side of the field, and Hadar getting the work done, going over the line, scoring when it counts. So we see him keeping his feet on the tackle attempt, and it is just too much for Life West to handle. Excellent work. We wait a kickoff here. We're all knotted up. Referee just waiting for some changes to come in here. We'll just hang on a second. This is going to be Dallas a Dallas seems team. To wanna looking for an emphatic win last year they had a bit of a rocky pool very competitive between dallas the beltway and the chicago line dallas had a run on day one they did rebound on day two winning the bowl final over whack 27 to 14. so a team on a mission ball down to life west life west little work to do they're at the touch line here this ball comes down on the hands of youtube youtube offloads it there to mccarthy he has to take it in See what they can do with this across field. So we're getting a double look at it here from up top and from the action. Ball coming around. Nice work. And it's a Tavares. He's been a power runner for this Life West team so far. Inside their 22. Haven't gained much ground. Looking to get some phases together. Just find a little difference in that defense. Is that it? It's the show right there. But good work by Hadar to come in. Saving tackle for a big line break. Ball goes out to the right hand side. Here come Life West, still in the attack. Patient, able to go through the phases, just to show the ball. They're going to drive that one in. Again, good work by the ball carrier. Gets in, gets a second ball. Gained a little more ground. The space opens up there. They're on the right-hand side. Good break, good work. Life West, they're at the 22-meter line of Dallas right now. They're going to get a penalty right there. Ball gets put down, not releasing from a Dallas player. Life West on the move, coming across field. Life West got the ball to Skyler Mitchell. Mitchell moves across to McCarthy. McCarthy puts a long one in. They're at the touch line. It's a little bit of work here to do for Sam Biutu. Sam Biutu working his way towards the line. Goes into contact. Referee spots another penalty for not releasing against this Dallas team. A little bit of trouble here as Biutu gets it going again. Puts it up to the big boy. He's looking at the try line. He is over. Skyler Mitchell, the 24-year-old from Lindenwood University, touches down five points. And... 
the Life West team takes the lead again, Liz. You have going far downfield. We saw the ball going through the hands of several of their players fighting forward. The physicality of this Life West team, something that's always one of their assets. We saw Skyler Mitchell on the action, Dannenberg, like you said before. And look at this, just the offload towards the inside, finds a connection, able to break that tackle. There is nothing that the Reds can do. They get the wrap, but he got it. That one is no good. We're at 10. So Life West with the 10 to 5 lead as the clock is winding down. Two and a half minutes left to play. A Life West team that finished eighth in last year's tournament also competed at the LA 7s in a few different editions. Reloaded a lot of their team. We do see some players coming from Santa Rosa rugby as well. See if they can keep this momentum as we go into the final quarter of play. Life West, you said it was small. He's going to kick this one off. Michael McCarthy gets a ball up in the air, taken by one of the Dallas players. We may have a knock on or a penalty here. We'll see the referee comes back with. Was the player hit in the air? Will be the question. We're just going to call a knock on here. We're going to have a scrum to Life West. That will be to their advantage at the moment. Burn off a little clock here. We'll wind this game down. Tactic play from the Gladiators, so frustrating if you're Dallas. Inside of two minutes to go and all the time being taken here on the scrum. McCarthy, the St. Mary's College product, gets that one out in the middle of the field. The replacement comes in, looking to the corner, looking to keep that one wide. Big power coming in, the offload goes. Denenberg is headed towards the line and Denenberg is headed towards the middle. Try coming, a life west. Looks like this is going to be their game as De Deontay McMurray couldn't quite catch him. Five more points for this Life West team on a great offload. Life West again proving so powerful. Look at them stretch this run toward the outside. Porter able to offload. It is time. Well, Dannenberg, right place, right time. He makes up for that earlier yellow with the five points on the board. And this is going to be a key first pool play victory for Live West. McCarthy hits that one. Referee checking her watch. Time is winding down. McCarthy, one more kickoff at least in this matchup. A work to be here for the Dallas Reds. Kick just over the 10 meter line. Where's it gonna come down? Knock forward, it looks like, by Life West. So Dallas has the advantage. Dallas, a little slip in the midfield there, but ball comes back around to carry on. He's gonna go to the left-hand side. Good work to keep that ball wide. They've got a runner on the width. Nice step outside. Does he have the pace to go all the way? He's looking inside the 22. Eventually hauled down by the jersey. A couple of defenders getting back, trying to put the pressure on. Nice ball up there into the hands of Ali. Ali, it's one down ball. Knocked all over the place. Looks like a knock on by the Dallas Reds. Referee says so. We're going to go back here for a scrum for Life West. Time winding down here, Liz, certainly. Still key moments here in the final minute of the match. Teams looking to make sure that they get their point differentials there. Last year, men's edition of the tournament, we saw every team that went through into the semifinals go through with a loss. So teams looking to make sure that if we have these two on one and two on one and two on one ties, that they are the ones to go through. So if you're Life West, you would love to get another. You want to ensure the victory, but ensure that in the event of later pool play disruptions, you still go through. Life West is just going to put that one into touch. And that is the end of this one. First men's games of the day. Life West takes over the Dallas Reds. Coming up in just a minute here in field one, we're going to have Belmont Shore versus Oregon. We'll be right back with that action right after this.
Ryan, we have field two. We are ready to get underway here. It's going to be Belmont Shore versus the Oregon Sharks. John Broker with Liz and Twistle here, bringing you another matchup here. We're waiting for a referee to get us underway. Just about good to start. Looks like Oregon. John, we to are in for a treat off. with this one. Go ahead, Liz. Apologies again. Interviews and some connection here, but I was going to say we are in for a treat with one, this one, the Belmont Shore team. Keep an eye out for number 10, Paul Scanlon. He's the third fastest man on the, in the World Series out of Samoa. They've got four players coming off of PR7, but Oregon has rebooted and reloaded as well. We'll look at Nick Taylor in the number 13 jersey, Luis Atama in the number 10 jersey, and Johnny Fuemoano in the number four jersey, a player experience with USA Cup. Big pitch from Belmont. Belmont making their way downfield. Oregon defense a little tight there. You can see it just on the screen. Nice step. Big break here across the 50 meter line. This is some gas for this player. Taking around, turn to the corner. Belmont Shore is headed towards the line. Numbers a little tight to see on those, but it looks like Pelosi Taupo touches down in five points for Belmont Shore. John, this is a Belmont team that blends experience with their youth. We have Ty Anosa, again, a very experienced capped player on their team. But we also see some young guns, Peter Co. Jr. We also see Gibson Channel coming out of Long Beach State, a team that competed well in the fall seven series in Southern California. See Belmont Shore getting ready to kick off again. Right in front of the post. So seven points to nil. Get that ball back right now, ball on. Belmont sure to kick off yet again. Oregon, it's on a smaller screen on the bottom here, bottom right of your screen. We're looking at the Belmont Oregon game here. Belmont moves off to the left. They're already up by seven points. A little step there, a little chip ahead. Daring play in seven, but what individual footwork that is. And ball in hand, another try for Belmont. With Entwistle looking strong, looking daring this Belmont team. And kick to come here. We'll bring Liz back in as soon as we can. Just a couple of technical issues. And that one is good. We're at 14 nil on the lower screen here. As we're watching Belmont take on Oregon. Ready to kick off right away. Belmont Shore, they want to make the most of this. Good pool here. Austin Huns and Old Blue also in the pool. He playing both teams today. Oregon takes a ball. That's Gabriel Smith. Little step up the middle. Off to the right hand side. Ball down to the hands of Luis Kama. That's the wing finally for this Oregon team getting some play. That's Nick Taylor. Nick Taylor has to push it back in field. Looks like it comes back. To Belmont. He's going to whistle that one up from here for Belmont. A good place to attack here on this near sideline. We're going to see Belmont Shore with the scrum just inside of midfield, but plenty of space to run on the far side of the field and the team with several speedsters. I mentioned earlier, keeping an eye on the likes of Peter Co. Jr. in the number nine jersey, as well as Paul Scanlon in the number 10. Of course, they have to win this scrum against Oregon. Belmont Shore takes that one down. The penalty against Belmont, Oregon. Good work at the breakdown there. Trying to get that ball back. They can use the points before the end of the half. Ball goes away there from Umeano. Right in the middle of the field they go, but a Belmont player right over the top. Penalty not releasing. Player got themselves isolated quickly. Be Belmont ball. They take that one quick. Looking off to this right-hand side, a little step around the end, good footwork. It's a foot race here, the breakaway comes across the 22 goes Belmont. 
Belmont headed towards the line and not in the post, but in the corner. Another Belmont try, Liz, looking very, very strong, this team. They moved the ball to space, and they did it so well, able to recover after giving up the penalty, taking it quick, moving the ball towards the far sideline. That was Scanlon with the try. Again, it capped international for Samoa Sevens. We see the step in the middle of the field. We see him take the corner. Look how flat Oregon is with their defensive attack. You want to think of your defensive shape. If you know you have that much speed to battle, we want to think about giving the sideline, looking at the shepherding, but not overcommitting in defense, but you certainly can't come across just in a flat line. We have a look at field two of the larger part of our screen here. Teams battling it out on the other field at this Madison United Complex. We wait for Belmont Shore to get us underway. That one just over 10. Great restarts here from this Belmont Shore team. Taking it down. Can he keep it in? And he will not. It's going to be a line out here for Oregon late in this first half. Love that challenge with the aerial game. We've seen many of our restarts just go to the other team possession in hand without much of a challenge. Belmont really going after it, just taken into touch. Oregon with a scrum, though we've seen Belmont recover from each of their set piece setups in the half so far. Crouch! Bind! Set! Oregon. Good work the last breakdown. Nice work from the scrum half to move that one back out. In the middle of the field they go, but a big hit comes in. They're going to stop that sideways passing as Belmont Shore able to get it again, but knocked in the contact. Oregon under defensive pressure to be a scrum here for Belmont. So we saw that recovery. We saw them take away the space. They create the mismatch. They are going to come away with a scrum just outside of the 22, inside of one minute left to go. Coaching caps on. You're looking to score, looking to push the pace and really take Oregon out of this match. Belmont gets us started again. A ball under the feet. Good work at the set piece for them. Get that ball quick and a couple of shows, and it's going to open up on the outside again. Yet another try for Belmont, taking a commanding lead here in the first half. Oregon forced to play a lot of defense. Lee is just a little show of that ball, opened up the width. Absolutely able to go again towards the corner, towards the outside, getting the points on the board. We see this again from the base of the scrum. Time for the scrum half to carry. Oregon scrum half caught unawares on the other side of the scrum. And look at this. He is able to take it all the way across the try line. So good heads up play, reading the space, knowing he had that defensive mismatch. And Belmont with a commanding lead here in the first half. As the referee whistles at the halftime, we're going to step aside. We'll be back in just a minute with second half action. Belmont Shore after a good lead. Welcome back. It is a good lead here for Belmont Shore. You see the lower right of your screen there. Belmont Shore is set to kick off to the Oregon Sharks. Oregon Sharks, a lot of work to do. John Broker here with Liz Entwistle. 
bringing you this USA Club Rugby Seven Championship matchup. Liz, a bit of work to do for Oregon in the second half here. They've got quite a hole to dig themselves out of, and Belmont Shore is going to make it difficult. Belmont has done so well to recollect the ball anytime they've given up possession. They have made all of their tries happen, quick in transition, threats to the outside. We will see what unfolds. Ball picked up there by Oregon, but referee's going to whistle it back. Again, I can't speak enough to the depth of this Belmont Shore roster. They have four players this year designated as professional, whether that comes from Major League Rugby or PR7s, but we also have the likes of Anthony Munoz, the number three jersey, played in PR7s last year. Paul Scanlon in the number 10 jersey, plays for Samoa 7s, was also on PR7s. So, again, a team with a lot of depth, but also coming up against an Oregon team that heavily favors a game of touch. They're a team that knows to use space. This is a program in the state that really lends itself into USA Touch Rugby. You can make anything happen. First, they're gonna to need to try to turn this ball over after the scrum. Ball in from Belmont Shore. They've been strong. This scrum out has been fantastic. Keeping the ball moving, opening up some bases. A little switch back in. The player's gonna stay outside. That side opens up again. Headed towards the try line are Belmont Shore. Belmont Shore under the post. Five more points to open up the second half. Liz, it's looked like they're going to run away with this one. And that's a man that'll do it. That is the third try of the match for Paul Scanlon, the Samoa Sevens International. He's going to get the ball from Anthony Munoz, taking the hitch step in the middle of the field. He's got Paul towards the outside, takes the littlest step towards the inside, cuts back out, easy as you like, zigging and zagging, and another five points, a trio, a hat trick so far for Paul Scanlon. Some changes coming in according to the referee. It's going to be another kickoff for the Belmont Shore team as we see one of those replacements in right there. Belmont hoists a high one up the middle this time. It's going to come down for Oregon. Well taken. Juwan Johnson moves that ball out to the right-hand side. Lost the 40 meter line right at the 50 there. You can see it. Johnson puts in the pass again. They're looking ahead with the boot this time. Get the foot races on. Can they get back? Belmont Shore was that player hit before he had the ball. We'll find out. Referee has an arm up. Knock on by Belmont Shore to the Oregon ball. It's good visibility and pressure downfield. Oregon trying to catch Belmont out of alignment with their sweeper. Able to get the ball downfield inside of the 22. A real attacking platform for the Sharks. Sharks, one of their few attacking platforms of the game. Sharks, messy ball, back to the 22. Belmont inside their 22, get the ball. Out to the right-hand side. Little handoff down. A lot of room to go here at the halfway. Digging their way back in. A little offload as the space going to open up. There's another player waiting. It looks like this time they're going to be headed towards the line. Scoring in the corner. Great work there. A Gerald Lowe. Fantastic play. Originating deep inside of their own 22. We saw the defensive pressure here. The steal at the ruck but a lot of calm and composure in the middle of the field out of Anthony Munoz there in the number three jersey. So we see the player originating. He's the one that makes passes towards the outside, moving the ball, this pace down this near side of the field, able to evade tackles with the fingertips. There's Munoz there in support, able to take the ball, moving it again quickly. So Belmont able to align, take opportunities, take the gaps, and another five over the line. Belmont Shore looking to make a statement after their seventh place finish last year coming out firing in the second half here, John Broker. They are looking good, Belmont Shore. Another team making a statement early on in this tournament as we get the later rounds. We'll see if these teams can hang on to this impressive start. Belmont Shore certainly running away with this one. Belmont knocks that one down, Belmont Ball in hand again, dangerous as you like. Moving it across for that left-hand side. Pass doesn't quite go to hand, gonna have to step. 
They have to take some contact here. Ball hits the ground. It's fine, says the referee. They're going to be able to make something out of this. Is this Belmont team? Belmont holds the pass, puts it nicely there, headed towards the corners low for another one. And a touchdown try. It is good. Belmont Shore yet again. Love the timing and the connection that we're seeing here. Again, distribution of the ball. Look at this pass just before the tackle contact is made. Coming up at pace, getting the ball towards the outside. They are drawing in the Sharks defenders and creating space for their teammates. It is unselfish rugby. And again, all these tries towards the outside of the field because of the space that has been created. Ball movement doing the work. And Belmont Shore doing the most. That kick is going to sail across the post. Good work. 39 to nil. Belmont in the lead here. It's going to have another kickoff. Belmont hangs that one high. Oregon pushes it forward. It's a knock on. We're under a minute to go here in the game. We're going to come back for the scrum. John, I'm going to go ahead and tag Belmont as one of my teams to watch for the duration of the tournament to go far. I love the pressure that they're putting on with these restarts high in the air. They're challenging for every ball. Anytime they lose possession, they are challenging at the ruck to regain it. They're confident in each other. 39 to nothing to shut out a team in the game of sevens, especially an unknown rebuilding Oregon Sharks program is impressive. They have a couple teams to take out of the Austin Hugs and Old Blue in their pool, but they are looking very strong, very instinctive players. Not phased by any kind of miscues in play. And look at that footwork right there. It's going to result in another try. Here comes Belmont Shore. Peter Co. Jr. touches down. Try awarded. Belmont Shore extends their sizable lead. He was in and out, just weaving his way downfield. An impressive run here by Co. Jr. Look at this step. He is trying to catch. Oregon unaware in any way he can and it's just so smooth cutting in and cutting out he's not losing pace buttery smooth out of CEO Jr. and the kick is good looks like that is the end of our matchup here Belmont Shore is going to run away with that one we're going to come back. Craig is going to come back on again. We're going to have the Chicago Lions versus the Tennessee Elites. St. Louis Bombers versus Mystic River. Then Liz will come back as a women's game to start again. Liz, thank you very much. We'll see you in just a little bit. And welcome back. We are just about ready to go here. There's going to be Chicago Lions versus the Tennessee Elite. You see the Tennessee Elite right there in the powder blue. This is going to be a great matchup. John Broker, I have the contact coach, Craig Wilson, back for this one. Craig, great matchup here as you see the Chicago Lions on the right-hand side of your field in the black. Absolutely, this is going to be a great one to, to get going, and it's all about starting strong. Tennessee have the kickoff, Chicago Lions might get the possession. Let's see how this one pans out. Tennessee Elite running from left to right on your screen, getting ready to go. That one hangs high in this Madison day. Beautiful day for it here at the Madison United Rugby Club, USA Rugby Club Sevens Championship. Good pressure coming in from the Tennessee Elite right away. Chicago Lions, the story team, able to come down with that one. They're going to move it into the middle of the field. They're right in front of the post of the five-meter line. A bit of work to do. Back to the right-hand side from their own try zone. Confidence brimming right there. 
Working it towards the line. Was that a high tackle? Referee says no. Ball spilled out. Referee's going to whistle. Looking back here for a scrum. Knock on it by Tennessee. It is going to be a scrum here for the Lions. Yeah, I really like Tennessee there. Their defensive shape was really strong. But you can see the intent from the Lions. They were looking to move the ball into the space. So two very evenly matched teams here. Alex Dorier to put this one in for the Chicago Lions. Dorier from South Bend, Indiana, went to Indiana University. High school and collegiate sevens All-American. Certainly knows his way around the sevens field. We're going to hold this scrum up just a second. Now the Lions put this one in at their own 22. Quickly through the feet. Looking at the space, looks like it's just going to set this one up. Peyton Wall, the University product, gets that one moved up. Right on the outside here, good tackle coming in. Chicago able to hang on to that one. Tennessee elite player, just a little top there. All's good, says the referee. Defense on the outside is going to force him to keep the ball on the left here. A nice break. Here comes Indi uh, Sorry, here comes Chicago. What about an Indiana player there? Ball was knocked back by Tennessee. So it rolls into touch. It should be a scrum here. It's going to be for Tennessee, actually. You can see the Lions, they went into the midfield and then it was a return play quickly. You can see how they came back to where the ball originally started from. So I'm going to keep an eye out for that one. It's a great attack. Chicago going to the middle of the line out here, back into the hands of Dorier. Dorier moves it in the middle of the field. They've got a runner out wide, looking to straighten it up. Is that space going to open up there for Carso? Carso gets about three meters up the line. Ball picked up by Chevalier. Chevalier, Dorier coming across field. Ball to Lockie McDonald. Lockie McDonald gets it back to this right-hand side. Nice little show. Ball's going to go in. That's Will Chevalier. Touch it down for a try. And Chevalier played for the USA 7s, playing for the Chicago Lions. Five points for another Indiana University product. So it was initially good defense from Tennessee, but you can see those two defenders getting up from the ruck. They were a little bit slower than their midfield pressure, and that allowed that space back on the right-hand side. So that's twice now that you've seen the Lions do return plays. So that might be a little tactic for them, trying to pick out lazy defenders. Kick is no good, so we're going to stay at 5-0. Three minutes of action gone here. Lions in the lead. Tennessee has not had much ball so far, Craig. We'll see what they can do with it here. Yeah, they've been defending a lot, so this is their opportunity to put a statement into the game with their attack and try and get themselves back into the game. But 5-0, this game is very finely poised. Chicago set to kick this one off. Nice high kick from the Lions. Well fielded by Tennessee. Tennessee offloads that ball. Looking for a big run, but not quite finding it. Are this Tennessee elite team? They move that one quickly off to the left-hand side. Nice show of the ball. Can he get rid of it eventually? Is it flying forward? It does not, says the referee. They've got the ball to the other wing. Good run here across the 22. It looks like Tennessee is going to tie this one up. Tennessee gliding towards the line. Great try, Tennessee Elite. Yeah, we look very potent there. Just very comfortable moving the ball, but also comfortable on the ball. You can just see how calm they were. I mean, it was all about getting that ball just out to the edges and the big man racing away. There's not many people going to stop him from there. What a fine specimen. Kick to come here from the Tennessee Elite. And the lead is taken there. Seven points it is. 7-5. Tennessee over the Lions here. A couple of minutes left in this first half. Battle raging here was all Chicago to begin this game, but just one touch of the ball. Tennessee shows you what they can do. Yeah, both teams look very, very efficient on there. They're both obviously well coached, well drilled, so it's going to be just capitalizing on any mistakes from the opposition. Well taken there by Chevalier. He's quick. It's taken down by one of the Tennessee defenders. Looking to use the short side. Here comes Chicago. Chicago through Dorier takes it in, but they're going to get a penalty here. Player didn't come for the last foot there, certainly, for Tennessee. 
for all the players 10, referee's happy. Chevalier has a hold of it. Chevalier sliding through a couple of holes, gets the Dorier. A little bit isolated, gonna wanna get some teammates there. Players not rolling away, not releasing as a player went down. So Chevalier moves it across field again. Gets in the hand of Peyton Wall. Peyton Wall working his way around to the 22. The grass eventually takes him down here in Madison. McDonald moves it back across the field to Chevalier. Dorier again. These players are consistently touching the ball. You see the high volume of passes from Chicago. Certainly working the ball around the field. We have a three on two here. Let's see if they can make out of it. Peyton Wall has to take that one in. Peyton Wall disrobed, but still playing here and good to go. Referee has whistled. We'll see what the call is here. Yeah, it's not often you see someone's shirt be off their back, but Tennessee have got to be careful. That's three breakdown penalties. That could have been a yellow card if there was a stoppage in play, but they did, the play did go on and they did get the penalty, but that's just something to keep an eye out right now. Just being a bit cleaner at the ruck there, Tennessee. So we look back, look at this, straight off him, <laughs> straight off his back. That would be one for his highlight reel. Certainly will. Didn't quite see the call here for the penalty. I think he's calling him for not releasing right there. Yeah, I was just trying to figure out what that call was there. Yeah, I think it was not releasing. Maybe he couldn't see the ball because it was inside of his uh, jersey. A little messy. The line out here winds up in Tennessee's hands, but it's knocked forward. We're at seven minutes in the game clock. See if the referee's time. That's halftime. And we're going to throw it down to Lance on the sidelines. And we'll be back with second half action after a minute. Lance, take it away. All right, I'm going to step up camera for a couple of seconds. At West Wisconsin Rugby Sports shot. Complex at the Club Nationals 7th Championship. It has already started. The competition is already heating up. At halftime right now, we have Tennessee Elite in their first ever Club National Champion versus the Chicago Lions. Believe it or not, two years ago were the national champions. Crazy turn of events, how a new team can find himself on the same playing field as a successful team, historically as the Chicago Lions. But this tournament is going to be great. Not only today, Friday, for pool play, but tomorrow, Saturday, for the knockout rounds. Brought to you by Next Level Rugby on production. And great work from everybody in the back end of USA Rugby to make sure this competition goes off. The grounds are beautiful. The stage is set. And... The rugby gods gave us the best weather you possibly could ask for. Next Level Rugby will be here all weekend taking care of business. And USA Rugby has put on a great event, Seventh National Championship. Welcome back. We are here in Madison, Wisconsin. It is Tennessee Elite taking on the Chicago Lions in black here. We're looking at some tries for the first half. John Broker with the contact coach. Catch him on Instagram. Craig Wilson for this one. Craig, a little work to do here for Tennessee, or for the Lions, excuse me. Yeah, so two points in this game. This could go any way. Two evenly, evenly matched teams. Dorier, ball in hand again. Featured in the first half, did a lot of the connection work there for his team. Rocky McDonald takes that one in the contact. Rocky McDonald from Brisbane, Australia, went to Notre Dame College. Penalty here for the Lions. Dorier moves that one off to the left hand side. Big run there from Tom Kikor. Kikor takes it across the 22. A lot of experience on this Chicago Lions team. Some players have played for the USA. They know what it takes. The ball comes around there from Hidalgo, but it's put back into the Tennessee hand. Tennessee gets the ball knocked out by a Chicago Lions player. Referees would bring that one back. 
Yeah, once again from Tennessee, it was a penalty at the breakdown. They're just going off their feet as they look to compete defensively, and that's really stunted their momentum. But you've got to give credit to Tennessee's defense. They're really scrambling well. Lions are not getting any opportunity uh, to make big, big line breaks so far in this game. Uh, and that's why I think for both teams, it's so easy, evenly matched right now, John. Very evenly matched. Some changes coming in. About a minute gone in the second half. After this one, we're going to have it St. Louis the Bombers versus Mystic River from the Northeast Greater right Boston area, Mystic River. Tom Clark and his boys in town. Yeah, these tournaments certainly bring the best around, and we've seen it already in these first eight games or so on field one. Some fantastic rugby from the men and the women, and it's only going to get better as the weekend goes along. Tennessee in the powder blue. It's Moro Petanari to put that one in. We apologize the numbers. Just a little bit tough to see on those Tennessee jerseys. We'll do the best we can for you here. They're back in the line. That one bounced. Wasting no time as a defense. Chicago line trying to hold the player up. He's able to get to the ground. So the referee is going to tell the players to release. And they have the ball again, but stuck at their five-meter line. Chicago Lions trying to force a penalty here. Player rolled off of there, but legally, according to the referee, Another player in, having to commit a lot of people to these breakdowns. People are off their feet there. And here comes Tennessee, the lone runner with two defenders on him on the outside. And not sure he's going to be able to make the distance on this one. Holding the ball in one hand, looking for a friend and finds it. Little spin there and on the move they are. Wide across the field. We've got some runners here. Good defense from Chicago. Seem to have everybody marked up at the moment. Well worked, Tennessee just waiting for players to get there. Not well worked enough. Chicago forces a penalty, and they're going to go quick. We'll talk about that breakdown in a minute. This is going to be a could be a big difference maker in the game. If they can make something out of this, the ball comes down into Chicago Lions' hands. Up into the middle field they come. Oh, Kim McDonald was calling for it, but the pass wasn't there. Still have a hold of it. Ball comes out to Goodrum. Goodrum gets to Lockie McDonald. He gets a pass away. Did it go forward? Referee says, yes, it did. They're not going to be able to make anything out of that, but what a turnover to start it. Yeah, this game's really on the knife edge. I think right now the Lions are just winning that breakdown battle, and that's why they've got that little bit more possession. But Tennessee's tenacity in defense has been wonderful. It's been absolutely great. So it's just so evenly balanced right now. So it's all about keeping on the right side of a referee, keeping momentum. And you can see with hands on heads right now, players are starting to get a little bit more tired. So you've got to be excellent in your skill execution. We saw Peyton Wall getting tended to there, an Indiana University player, one of the key members of this team here. Hope he is okay. There's a little Tennessee player down. He's in a little bit more pain there. Well, hope he's okay. Great medical staff here at the Madison United at Rugby Club. You can see in his first game, he doesn't want to come off. Tough play, great season, get an injury like that. We'll hope the best for him, but it's going to be Tennessee ball with four minutes to go. They are up by two points. <laughs> Stuck at their own line. They're inside their own try zone. Gonna have to try to play this one. They are really stuck at their try zone right now. Gonna have to battle their way out. Big tackle coming in from the Lions. Let's see which way they go. They're gonna play this one. They're gonna look to the width. We'll be able to get it outside of the try zone, but not much further this time. Great work by Chicago forcing this team pin. They're gonna fit across field, not getting that go forward. Tennessee, about six phases, nowhere over the five meter line, really. See if they can actually eventually break this defense. A little more room now. Nice steps around the inside. Big break here coming from Tennessee. This player makes it all the way. This will be a terrific run of play. And he's gonna, it looked like Blue was doing for Tennessee to me, but they're all the way downfield. Great try coming here, and that's like Sean Richardson touching that one down. Very impressive. Just keeping that ball on their own try line. So the risk 
is massive at that stage of a game, but they really had confidence in their skills. I mean, just look at this balance. He finds the holes. You can see the hips of the defenders weren't quite there. And what a balanced runner. And it wasn't even the initial line break to speed. It's a sustained speed. And despite the best efforts of the Lions, he got himself away for a wonderful try. And just look at his footage at the top. A wonderful camera angle uh, to complement a wonderful try. And the kick is good. That takes him to 14. The possession of the territory has really been Chicago, but just touches the ball they need and finding that space has been Tennessee elite. That's been the difference in the game, Craig. What a game by them. Absolutely. They've been camped out in, the whole, in, the, in their half the whole game, but they were really confident, really, really calm under pressure. And it was just good skill level. They were moving the ball. They find the uh, shoulders where the hips and the shoulders were facing the sideline and bang, he was gone. Ball is not going to go 10. Going to come back to a free kick in the middle. Be a little concerning there for this Tennessee team. Just a minute to go. Blocking McDonald, looking to break it, but doesn't get there. Little pop up in the middle of the field from the Lions. Big tackle, but high. Referee is going to bring it back. Going to go quick because they need to in Chicago. Referee says they're not going to take it from the mark. There's a player down for the Lions. So playing one short at the moment. McDonald moves it across field. Gets it to a waiting teammate there. Good pressure coming on from Tennessee this time. The player not rolling away. We're going to have another penalty here. Ball up in the hands of Carso. Carso gets to McDonald. They're going to move across field quickly. Looking for the width. They've got the ball to the wing with a player streaming onto it with a Tennessee defense. Little break there coming around from Goodrum. Goodrum looking at the line. Goodrum stopped before the line. Excellent work. Penalty against Goodrum for holding it in. We're right at 14 minutes here. They want to check time with the referee. And a yellow card comes in. Player off the field. We're at 14 minutes of the game clock. Very impressed with Tennessee's defense. The from the minute one, their scramble defense has been excellent. And that's a big, big reason why they've got themselves the victory in this game. Fair play to Tennessee, but Lions gave it a great job. Great work right there. It is Tennessee Elite takes his first one against the Chicago Lions. We're going to throw it down to the Lance. Just a minute, talking to one of the players. We'll be back. We are down on the sidelines at Wisconsin Rugby Sports Complex. I'm here with Tennessee Elite's founder, creator, facilitator, the man himself, Dustin Lavender. First time at Nationals, you get a win on day one, first game. How does it feel for the guy? Uh, it feels amazing. Uh, we came out here to ball. Uh, we were ranked 11 C, but that don't mean nothing. Uh, we came out here with a group of ballers, and they, they've been working all summer. So that's off to my boys. Tennessee Elite now moves on with a win. One more win, almost but guaranteed your spot in the quarterfinals. What's you telling this young team to get through to the next next stage tomorrow? Uh, same goal, same mission. We're going to keep balling, and that's all we can do. That's all we got. Justin, I appreciate you talking to me. Good luck later in this tournament. Thank Take care, all right? Thank you. Tennessee Elite getting the job done against a powerhouse such as Chicago Lions. Congratulations to those guys. But it's not over for Chicago. More games are coming, more opportunities. Back to you guys. Up to you.
Welcome back. It is Pool H action. It's going to be the STL St. Louis Bombers versus Mystic River from the Boston area. Big matchup. John Broker with the contact coach, Craig Wilson, for this one. Great game we have coming. A lot of Lindenwood players on this Bombers team. And Mystic, always a Northeast powerhouse, can be a great game. Yeah, two powerhouse of club rugby, really. But as you said, a lot coming from uh, Lindenwood, which is obviously a, a very fantastic rugby college out of St. Louis. And then Mystic, who can make up a lot of the uh, New England's finest. So I'm really excited for this matchup. Great game headed your way here. See, Mystic is going to be running right to left on your screen in the stripes. Bombers to kick off, just waiting for the referee to find his happy place and get us underway. After this, we'll take a little bit of a break, about a 15 minute break, but we're going to go back to women's action on field one after this with Washington Athletic Club and surfers. But we'll talk about that in just a minute as a huge bomb comes up from STL and right down into their hands they go. Michael Basca moves that one across field. Michael Basca, very experienced player. Big break down that right hand side to get going right away. That's Wesley White. Wesley White looking for a team if it can't quite find him. Ball comes up to Shane Dempsey. Shane Dempsey, a ball in hand. Shane Dempsey from Easton, Connecticut. Ball gets knocked on eventually. It's going to be a scrum here for the Bombers. Yeah, wonderful start from the Bombers. The, set, the third set piece of sevens is all about the kickoff, and they went for the contestable kick. They got real height on it, and they got the athletes up in the air to knock it back, moved it down to the edge, and it was just a slight miss, uh, miscue on the offload, a real statement of intent from the Bombers, and they've got themselves in big field position. STL to put this one in. Strong scrum to get us started. Ball coming across in the hands of Nick Beats. Beats. A lot of MLR history and Sevens history. They're going to try to break up the middle. A little pop back up. Driving towards the five meter line. Shane Dempsey making the tackle eventually. Referee comes up. Penalty against Mystic River for not rolling away. They're looking to go quick and looking at the line. Over the line they go. Michael Bosca touches that first one down. Michael Bosco from Overland Park, Kansas, capped USA Eagle, five points to the good for the Bombers. Yeah, big statement of intent. Really big statement of intent from there, how they were running just hard. It was hard rugby. They took it to the line. They're testing out Mystic's frontline defense. It was all about the leg drive. They conceded the penalty, tap and go, bit of footwork, burrows down towards the post. Really difficult to defend around there. Well-deserved try and the conversion to boot. Baska scores that one, touches down the five points, seven nothing. Mystic, little work to do. This kickoff will come with that first one from the Bombers, nice and high, challenging for them. Yeah, such a fundamental part of elite rugby uh, in sevens is the kickoff. Again, the third set piece uh, behind the, the scrum and line out. In fact, you probably have more kickoffs than, than those other two. So, such a fundamental part of the game. Let's see if they go for a bit of height in a contest once again. That left boot, Feeks not going to find it this time. So it's going to be a free kick here for Mystic. Opportunity for them as they get the ball right to the middle of the field. And the shell starts a set move here. They're going to run a couple of ways and come back to the right. Take them in. Penalty quickly by the Bombers. They are certainly looking strong here as Feeks gets us going once again to Basca. Ball up to one of the big boys there. Nice pop up to Al Jabouri. Al Jabouri winds his way around a couple of players. He's at the 22. Players right on hand there consistently from this Bombers team, but that one just spilled forward in the contacts. We scrum here for Mystic. Just seen a few good signs from Mystic, particularly the defensive breakdown. They are putting a lot of pressure on, which we've seen from this Bombers team. There's some big men, there's some power athletes in there. So you've really got to try and attack them at the breakdown. And that's exactly what happened there. They're getting back up on their feet, the tackler, the second player is having a go, and they managed to force a knock on there. So if Mystic are going to get themselves really into this game, they've got to keep up that great work defensively, particularly at the breakdown. Mystic ball in and into the middle of the field they go, looking for some room. They're going to cut it back in, try to straighten up that line. And I have to get some players here to set it up. Have done. Shell gets it off to that right hand side to Patterson. Couple players on this right hand side. A lot of pressure coming in there from the Bombers, but able to regather. 
Looks like Joe Ham taking that one in. This one comes out cleanly. Rowan Sierra, son of Sean Big Daddy Sierra. Big rugby player in the Northeast takes that one around the corner. Come Mystic River. That's the break they might be looking for. The speed is on. Does he have it? He's got to pass that first runner. He's going to keep going. And that's Devin Rivette. Rivette headed towards the line. Rivette touches it down. Try awarded. Mystic River on the board of five. Wonderful. So Mystic team, they're probably not going to go through this big Bombers team, but my word, they can go around there. An absolutely brilliant play there just to get on the edge. So when we take a look back, it's all about that speed to get on an edge and then that sustained speed as the line break comes because he was under a bit of pressure here as he was going through. But look how he just works here, there, uh, Devon Rivette. And he puts that ball down. As soon as he gets to the line, he wants to bank those five points. Kick to come here. This would tie it up. Just pushed off to the left-hand side there. So we're going to be two points down. Five minutes just about gone in this first half. It'll be a kickoff this time from Mystic. We'll see what the Bombers can do with this one. They've looked strong as they go through the phases. Absolutely. You can even just see between the two teams, like the Bombers that are bigger. They're bigger humans than Mystic. But that doesn't matter. You know, that's why rugby is a great game. There's speed, there's skill. You can go through, over, around. Uh, so it's a wonderful opportunity here to, as we look back on that side step, just look at the speed. He's could have stepped him in a phone box there, and he's absolutely away, and he sustains it all the way through. Excellent work from Deven Rivet there. Not many people that step Nick Beeks in a seventh game like that. Very impressive work there. Beeks a very talented player. Schumann takes that one down. Inside their own 22, ball spills forward. Good fortune here for Mystic. About a minute and a quarter to go. We'll see what they decide to do with this. They're going to try the little break right up the middle there. The space is on. Good work by Joe Ham. He's got players with him. Not releasing. Sierra, the sound product, has a hold of that one. He's looking at the line. Former West Hartford Blackheart. From Connecticut, now playing down in Kutztown. And off to the corner they go. And a little trickiness there from Rivette. He's going to score another one. It all came from a great kickoff. If you notice, when we when you go all the way back to the kickoff, it was long, and that allowed Mystic to put a lot of pressure on. And you could just see good turnover, good well, good pressure at the ruck, and just moving the ball. And Rivet, as we saw earlier, he can step anyone. And there he goes airborne to get himself over for a try. But great tactics there. Too. Wonderful skill, John. Just a little bit of flair at the end. Absolutely. Probably didn't need to do that, but uh, let him be, you know, let him enjoy his time. Uh, after those two tries, he should be smiling. That's one, you, you have to score that one. If somehow you knock that one on, you're in a bit of trouble there. As that one shades off the post, we're going to go to halftime. Lead here for Mystic 10, the Bombers 7. Second half coming up in just a minute. Stay with us, it's getting exciting. If we're in our 22, no fucking off those boys. Let's just take the rough, recycle and get it out. We're looking good on attack. They can't handle our pace and they can't handle our strength. If we get it out wide, we need our support lines running on the inside for that easy pass. If they had to go into Fixie, this is a whole different ball game. We're 14-0 up against them with momentum going. Control what we can control, right? Hold on to the fucking ball. We're giving them free footy in our half. They're going to obviously score, okay? So fucking clean that shit up and we'll run away with this. We need to clean it up, right? Yeah, everyone knows what we got to do. Here we go, boys. Come on, come on. Switch on. Let's go. 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 Let's this is the last of this set of men's games. Go back to women's game after this. Have one break. John Broker here with 
Greg Wilson, very evenly matched all of a sudden. Yeah, absolutely so. It's a really, really tight match. And there's definitely a clash of styles. Mystic are more kind of smaller, athletic one and moving the ball. And then you've got the big power athletes from the Bombers. So really good clash of styles. Bombers quickly moving that one across field, looking for some space early. You heard Nick Speaks talked about just putting this thing together. Big, big break here coming from Wesley White. Wesley White throws up a fourth player. Ball eventually goes to the ground. The cross by Al Jabouri. Feeks moves it again. They've got runners out wide here. They're going to go straight to the whip. Player held up by Sierra. Sierra pushing. Uh -huh. the, sorry, pushing uh, Mandel Alberts towards touch. Cross again. They've got good width to the Bombers. They're going to test this Mystic defense. That pass isn't going to help right there. Wesley White was able to throw a few players off the four, not getting the ball going backwards this time. Defender a little slow to get up. We'll see if he's okay. He's going to have to get it back up and work quickly. Brian Patterson does just that. Referee whistles penalty this time against the Bombers. Referee having a chat here, going to throw up the yellow card. Uh, great defense, particularly from number two there, Brian Patterson of Mystic. It was just, he, he was the one who got fended off uh, the first time, but he made sure he shut down the space early for that bend and the handoff, and he got his turnover. Wonderful defense. Now they're one player up, our Mystic. Big part of this second half here. If they're going to get this done, they move it over there. Patterson again puts the ball down, doesn't quite get there. Feet tries to jump on it. Player's going to whistle this one up. We'll see what the call is. Yet another penalty. Yeah, it looked like there was no arms in that tackle, and I think that's why the referee's going to have a chat. Referee's going to word here. We'll listen in. Uh, 10. White. Okay. Got 10. White. Okay, White. Referee showing a yellow card to another player from the Bombers. That's two up the field. In 15s, that's tough. In sevens, it's deadly, Craig. Good opportunity here for this Mystic River team. Yes, two yellow cards at exactly the same time. 7v5. Let's see if Mystic can capitalize. This player wants to waste no time. Rivette's been in twice. Pops that one up. A ball winds up in the Bombers' hands. They're going to have to slow this one down, grind this one out. They only have five players here. Much time as they can take off of these yellow cards will work for them. This time, penalty against Mystic for an intentional knock forward. Mistake there. It's interesting. He called an offside, but I think there was a slight offside earlier from the Bombers when he took over that pass. Because when there's a tackle, uh, an offside line is often drawn. But uh, he called it there, and this is a great opportunity for the Bombers to kick it out and take a lot of time off the clock. Long kick from Basca, capped Eagle. Taking some time off this clock. As you said, we're up four minutes to go. Mystic still in the lead. If they can squeeze something out of this yellow card period, they'll be very happy. Likewise, the Bombers. Anything can happen as this is their line out. Absolutely. This is still a one score game. And the Bombers with five players, some teams won't like that, but they're big men, so they'll be quite comfortable looking after the ball. Currently with a one-man back line out there. Ball comes down, lines up in Mystic's hands. Mystic's going to run this one away. That's Sierra. He's been active in this game so far. A little pick. Player going around. They have an offsides penalty advantage right here. We'll see how quickly they can go. Sierra a little slow to get up. Ball coming across the field. They're going to Shane it back the other way. Shane Dempsey played his high school rugby at Fairfield Prep. Played sevens all over the country. Now with Mystic River. That one rolls in a touch this time period, working out for the Bombers pretty well. Yeah, Mystic are going to kick themselves a little bit. They keep attacking back to where the ruck is, and that's where the big amount of defenders for the Bombers are going to be. They just need to keep their base and then just move that ball into space because there's going to be holes somewhere. There's only five defenders out on the field, so constantly going back to that ruck is probably not the wisest choice right now. Line out up to Ham. Bombers players want to say it's not straight, but referee says it's fine. Now they're going to go a little wide. Somehow listening to the contact coach they are. Rivette not looking to give that one up, but he's got to the floor there, so they should have some room. Back at full strength are the Bombers, so they've taken this 
two minute period and worked it to their advantage. Blair getting tripped up there. Mystic now have to be a little more careful. They're going to have a penalty here. Three points outside their 22. We'll see what they decide to do. Yeah, I think they're going to start taking time off the clock, but you've got to be a little bit careful with only a one score game. As we know in sevens, one mistake, one error, and then it it's, could, be, could be costly with the try line. So I think we're going to just take the time off the clock. Can't imagine they're going to be running quickly here uh, to this line out, but they're going to have to use it within the last 30 seconds. Yeah, so you've got to give credit to the Bombers. Two yellow cards down, and they didn't concede at all with uh, those two yellow cards. And that's probably testament to the, the way the Bombers were defending, but also how Mystic attacked. They kept it a little bit tight, when maybe just spreading it a bit wider would have been efficient there. Line out for Mystic here. You sit the 50-meter line. Now you see the beautiful clubhouse here at Madison United in the background. Ball tipped away initially by the Bombers, but it's come back for Mystic. Mystic. Cross field, little wraparound play going here. That might want to give that one up because now it's going to be a penalty. The Bombers are going to get this ball. They get a little bit slowly here. Referee's going to say, come on back. You got to play from here. And here goes Feats. Feats moves it across field. Looking at the wing, they get left to big Emmanuel Alberts. Emmanuel Alberts, a powerful, powerful player. Cross field they come. Mystic defense going to have to be strong here. That's Terrell Johnson. Spins through a couple. Terrell Johnson eventually gets taken down. Ball comes squirting out there. Tim Pong Kobe Millar. Turned over there by Mystic River. Player coming in from the Bombers. We'll see where the penalty goes to or the ball. Not sure who's going to wind up with this. Referee content to just let play go at the moment here. Turned into a wrestling match all of a sudden. Will show looking to come around the outside here. Put the power on. That's big for Schumann. Feats again. They've moved backwards just a little bit, may give him more room to run. Looks like they have some runners to the outside here. They've pinned it to the end. Albert's looking at the line. Albert's over the line. Albert touches down. Five points. It's a two point game here. No time left for the Bombers. And you've got to give big credit to the Bombers there. They were just keeping themselves in that fight, particularly with only five men for two minutes. And then eventually, one, they ground down Mystic particularly at the breakdown, as you can see, it was really slow. And then they just moved the ball into those wider channels. I really like the draw and pass there. One more, draw and pass, and that gives the big man plenty of time to get over the line and get the try. And with it so deep in the game, who knows if there's going to be another kickoff after this. Oh, it's a peak off that left boot, but it's not going to make it there. We'll see if the referee whistles here. Looks like we still have time. Time for one kickoff here, it seems. Some changes coming in. So a last gasp here for Mystic. They're down by two points. See a Feeks decides to go a little longer with this one, and he does. Ball bounces towards the touchline oh, and rolls out. Smart kick. play from Feeks. And that's the end of our matchup there. The last second, the Bombers are going to take that one away from Mystic, 12 to 10. Great work there by the St. Louis team. We're going to come back with more action, but right now we're going to throw it down to Lance. We are down on the field with the victors, the St. Louis Bombers, who took care of business. I'm here with Coach Brandon. First game of pool play. One of the more difficult pools. Snuck away with a win. Well earned, though. Tell me about this team and tell me about this game and what's next. Uh, so we definitely have a lot of skill in the team. Uh, we put ourselves under a lot of pressure here with some mistakes that we're not normally doing. Giving away the pe uh, ball on our own 22, that's really rough for us. We can't be doing that. Uh, but, you know, it, it, we uh, handed it out and we got out there, and the next game will come back even stronger and harder. What's some things you got to correct to make it a smoother game for you, no fighting to the very end? Uh, just passing. Uh, we, a couple of our passes were behind the ball, and we're given offloads when we haven't earned the right to give the offload. you got to make that go-forward ball before you start looking for the offload. Absolutely. Coach Brandon, good luck in the rest of the tournament. Good Thanks, job sir. today. Ten-minute break. We'll be back to you right here at the Wisconsin Rugby Sports Complex. See you in 10.
Good afternoon and welcome back to Field One. We are here for round two of pool play in the women's division of the 2023 Club Sevens National Championships. We are in for a show. We've got Washington Athletic, Washington Athletic Club, WAC, taking on the surfers, two of last year's semifinalists. WAC victorious in their first game, 38 to five over Little Rock. Surfers fell to North Shore 12. To 26. I am with Craig Wilson here on the mic. It is whack in action here, wearing the white and the black, going from right to left across your screen. We saw Erica Legaspi take the ball into contact, whack moving the ball across the field. Surfers in the light blue. We see Julia Bisher in the middle of the field landing. Something has happened. We'll keep an eye on that. But right now, it is whack with eyes towards the goal line. Look at the support ball coming down this near sideline. An excellent strike run by Emily Barber, supported number 18. Lauren Barber with space. We see the chase from the surfers. Can she close the gap? She cannot. It is Lauren Barber, number 18, going over the line for Washington Athletic Club. Wonderful try there from the Washington Athletic Club. And as you said, Lauren Barber finishing off, but it was a lot of work what led to that point. It all came from the initial kickoff. So they maintained possession really well, 15. moved the ball from right to left, really finding those edges. Um, and it was just a wonderful, wonderful try there to, to get going. Um, what a start. We see Ann Peterson in the number 17 jersey lining up the conversion attempt. The kick is good. Seven to nothing. Whack is coming out firing. This is a contentious pool B. We also see the likes of Chicago North Shore, who took on the servers in an earlier victory. And of course, Little Rock, one of three women's teams that filled in the last yeah. minute to round out our brackets. Yeah, Some vestiges of the 2015 centered. ARPTC yep, championship team of old. Both of these teams here, no strangers to the finals. Look at this fend as well, creating that bit of a separation, enough space, takes out the two defenders. Wow, Craig. Yeah, wonderful. As you said there, it was all about that support line, uh, keeping engaged, allow them to finish off that try. Action back on the field. The ball just barely knocked on by Wack. Scrum to San Diego. Ball in hand. Number six, Tegan McDonald. She is a threat always whenever she's got that ball in hand. She's got the pace. We saw some beautiful tries in that earlier game Ouch. against North Shore. Fine. Whack flat in Set. defense. We see them all shaded within about 20 meters of each other. San Diego presumably tight with their offensive setup. But look at this looping play. The dummy run from the inside back to McDonald. Moving the ball towards the outside. The surfers on the go. Taking it down is Sheree Collins. Finds Kelly Dean in support. Collins. Looking for her first receiver. Corralled by Kathy Kai. Kai, ball in hand. And look at this space just up the middle and a good scramble on defense by Emily Barber from Whack. The chip and the chase downfield. Whack diving over the ball is number eight, Jennifer Johnson. And a penalty to Washington. Yeah, just slightly creeping okay. offside there. You could see the, the ruck there and you could see the intention was good. Chip trying to get that ball and put a little bit of pressure on, uh, but giving that penalty away. Scrum called. So a yellow card against San Diego for rolling the ball away. You have to present the ball. So a little bit of foul play in the game of sevens with only seven minutes to play. That's going to be a Take yellow seven. every time. This is the second yellow card to San Diego in the tournament so far. Crouch. So let's keep an eye on that tally. Whack going to have the one Five. woman advantage. We are three minutes into the first half of play. Set. And it's Ann Peterson with the put-in. Whack going towards the weak side of the field, looping around towards the outside. The offload Barber to Peterson again. And look at this, four or five San Diego defenders all on our screen. There's going to be space for Whack if they can move the ball, but San Diego making it difficult in contact. A quick launch by the service. What a strike line! Out of nowhere comes Emily Prentice. Emily Prentice front foot forward. Player out of Harvard taking the ball in, taken down by Sheree Collins. San Diego so quick on their defense and their realignment. Penalty to Washington. Colin taking it in and just over the line. Let's see what we can get on a replay there, Craig. Yeah, it all comes from that line. As you mentioned from Emily Pretense, what a burst through the middle, working hard. It was just a beautiful line. And then the surfers gave away a penalty because of the pressure and it was all about just working hard to the line. She had one last roll in her. She was managed just to get over the line there. It was tight, but well worth a try. Beautiful rugby. 
well struck, but off the post, 12 to nothing, Wack is leading. All right, thanks. We look back get here. another look see here at that line. creation. Yeah, absolutely beautiful. It was just uh, a no, strong, right strong running line Two minutes off left. the left shoulder. Beautiful timing from out to in, and then the extra fend to get away. Wonderful rugby. An opportunity here this weekend for several young players to Back put their work. hands up. We note the stalwarts like Megan Sanders not making an appearance for Washington this weekend. We do have USA Sevens camp taking place. So some of the Eagles and Eagles contenders looking ahead toward a Pacific tour. Something that would decimate the surfer side for sure. Taken down by the ankles, Erica Legaspi makes the tackle. Surfers, Kathy Kai keeping her feet, getting that extra Kathy go forward. And the surfers looking to realign towards the far side of the field, the ball to ground. Penalty awarded. 18, 18 white. 18 white. So Lauren Barber getting the look from the referee. Surfers, Collins. Towards the outside, Collins with the fend, keeping her feet going forward. San Diego, plenty of time off the base of the ruck. Another attempt at a chip downfield, blocked by Washington Athletic Club. Washington with a turnover. Line up, Blue. And we see the nudge to touch from Gabrielle for now the pull. Yeah, that was an interesting decision there because they had the certainly had the advantage and the opportunity to attack and, and they had the time on the clock with the yellow card. Uh, but yeah, kicking away possession there. So giving possession to the server as the ball is up and quickly down okay, from the line out. Kai with a strike line. She's got Colin towards the outside. Kai splitting defenders up the middle. Erica Legaspi doing all she can to take her down. Gets her around the waist. A tackle from behind. Now it will slow down the surfer's attack. Wack looked to strip, but another penalty. That's going to be another penalty against Barber. If I'm in that number 18 jersey, I want to be careful because this referee is taking notice. Surfers weave their way towards the middle of the field. Ball in hand of their number 16, McDonald. A try scorer earlier in the tournament. That was excellent. Yep. Just working on those penalties. That's two penalties for offside now in a row. And that takes away that defensive momentum. And it was the, it was a tap and go. And it was very direct play here. Just with the fend. Just keeping the feet alive. Leg drive. Gets the try. The conversion kick is good. We are going to go into the half. Whack. Holding on to the lead. 12 to 7. And get one more view of that quick tap and touch to space. Back with the second half momentarily. Over this, she said that she loves you. Okay. She does, yeah. <laughs> you do have the five, correct? Yeah. 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 Okay. Yes, I'm here. I'm okay, Kel. Kick ass. Yeah. I got my fault, correct? Halftime winding down, some adjustments being made by our coaches. I am Liz Entwistle alongside Craig Wilson, the contact coach. Greg, thoughts on this first half of action? We've got a tight match here. Yeah, absolutely. It was excellent from a San Diego point of view to get that final try in, uh, just to bring that score a little bit tighter. It's really finely balanced here. I think the breakdown is going to have a big part to play in this game. Who can be the most accurate? And from a Washington Athletic point of view, they've got to start giving or stop giving away those penalties. That's offside penalties that could get in the referee's head, potential yellow card. We've seen referee Albia Sonia making her appearances across PR7s, the high school girls national championships, a skilled referee, a skilled player of her own out of University of Illinois. 
looking at Washington Athletic Club, ball in hand, there is Nikki Kangan, a capped eagle when it comes to the game of seven. She's made appearances at very high levels across this WPL and USA landscape. And of course, internationally, Washington playing matches against their neighbors in British Columbia. We see the nudge downfield. It just barely goes 10, trickles over the line. San Diego with the recovery. We see Kai in support. Kelly Dean, ball in hand. Dean looking towards the outside. A quick distribution. Here's Collins. Look at that cut back towards the middle of the field. Away, the correct away. cut, that was Kayla Walker. Ball was still in, ball was still in. There's another penalty for you, Craig. Those tally hash marks are creeping up there against Washington, giving San Diego another opportunity. Look at the steepness. They've got the depth towards the outside. Amy Verdonek with the blue hair and the number nine jersey. Supported by Kai. You see the shoot forward by Wack. A good read to nudge that ball, chipping the ball downfield by the servers. The chase is on. Legaspi ball in hand. An international with the Philippines. Corralled, not quite taken down, keeping the ball alive. Whack, dancing her way downfield is Hallie Dieters, one of four pros on this Whack team. So we see the tackle to touch and some scrappy play on field there. Yeah, absolutely. It was, as you said, it was a little bit scrappy. Each team feeling each other out, trying to figure out how they can maintain possession. The surfers opted for the kick and they nearly got away with it. But they're going to get themselves some field position. They're going to give themselves a scrum. And this is a wonderful opportunity to launch the attack, particularly because of the left hand scrum. The defensive scrum half has to stay this side of the ball. Therefore, there should be an overlap somewhere. So we'll keep an eye on the scrum Just indeed. The we see Verdonic there for the surfers in that number nine Thank jersey, you. a player that's played a fair right. bit of scrum half herself and will always look to go weak. However, they've got strength towards the far Coach. side of the field. The speed of the surfers has yet to be Five. truly unleashed in this match. Erica Legaspi, Six. the opposing scrum half here, will see her actions as Craig pointed out. So trailing behind the surfers, the ball quick in and out, but hits the deck. So an unforced error by the surfers. And now they're back inside of their half of the field. So all that work from the kick negated Kai. Finds the fingertips of Kayla Walker. Kayla Walker with the speed on the outside. Talked about getting that unleashed. And Kayla Walker showing you how it's done. She thought that she was in the end goal. Looks like she dotted it down, not realizing she was just across a five. But boom, there's Verdonek with a dive over. So the surfer is able to convert a little unconventional, but they get it done. <laughs> Kayla Walker, that's first look at the good. Absolutely beautiful work down the wing, down that right-hand side, pace to burn. And I think she just got her lines wrong. She put it down just Ten over seconds. a five meter line, uh, but her teammates were there in support. But that's a look at the positive rugby here. That is an athlete in action here, working down the wing, really going for the try line. And unfortunately, she just pulled up just a little you bit early time. there. Um, and she, so she got away with it. Um, but yeah, that's definitely one to look back on. Love seeing that stride. She had such pace around the outside. And also that outside one-handed grab. Some athleticism for sure will look for her the rest of the tournament. Can we get a stop for her? Surfers lining up the for the restart. Ball in hand of number two, Kaylee Westmoreland. Get action all across here at the know, Wisconsin Athletic down. Complex. Home of Madison United. Teams going from the touch and flag and age grade levels up to a robust high school competition senior levels, affiliations with the University of Wisconsin-Madison. And let's not forget that just one week ago, we saw dreams and heartbreak with the CrossFit Games their last year here in Madison. Rugby taking on with the next round of championships. What an athletic city for the summertime. Surfers with a kick, deep kick downfield. Whack on the fly inside of their 22. Legaspi, we see the switch line well read, taken down. And the surfer is now with a spark behind them, currently tied 12 to 12. Washington keeping their feet, getting to midfield, strength and strength again. Emily Prentice, we saw her with that beauty of a strike line before, this time stuck a little bit in traffic. Whack trying to break through, Whack nearly doing it. Slowed down by the jersey, Whack with the offloads, offloads again. Haley Dieters. Play on, advantage. See the strong counter ruck attempt here by the surfers. Advantage penalty being shown to Whack. Prentice steals the ruck. Advantage over, says our referee Jennifer Johnson, looking for the break. And it's Whack adding another comprehensive team play. Haley Dieters going over the line. 
One of the big principles of rugby is continuity. Go forward and continuity. And Wack certainly showed that there. Oh, Just with that offload. But even when it is a ruck, it's a quick ruck. That doesn't allow the defence to get set at all. And then the offloads are there into space. Beautiful support. Great continuity. And that was a really well-worked try. Two teams that made the semifinals last year. Two teams with some unconventional seedings this year. WAC coming in as a presumed favorite as the highest seeded team in the tournament, showing the depth, the security, and the confidence to get the ball downfield. And like you said, Craig, using those offloads and a bit of contact, still getting five points. Subs. Yeah, it's just all about keeping that momentum, Liz, and that's exactly what they did there. So it was, like, it was like a series of power plays. There was offloading, when there was a ruck, it was quick, and it just kept that momentum going. So that was really great highlights, and for, for anyone watching, a good way to see how to keep the ball alive. Nikki Kenyon again for the restart, ball in hand. We saw her nudge it downfield just earlier, trying to perhaps put some pressure on, not wanting to give the surfers the opportunity to get to pace. We saw Kayla Walker do it once, but beyond that, we haven't seen much open field play from the surfers. This gives them a chance though. Craig, we saw this in earlier matches. The missed kickoff attempts, giving other teams a free kick at midfield can prove costly. Yeah, it's such an important part of the game. It's a third set piece. You've got to get your kickoff right just to maintain possession or to win back it back. Up, back, up, back up. Surfers maintaining control around the base of the ruck. A bit of a challenge here now. The ball is there. The ball is recovered by Washington Athletic Club. Fernando Poul. And moving it towards the outside in the hands of Seneca Friend, another one of the professional players. Look at this, a little bit of gas. She's got a fresh tank. Taken down by San Diego. Surfers prevent the try and they draw the penalty. Turnovers galore. We've got one minute and 10 seconds left to play. The pressure is on. This is the pool of depth. Three of the semifinalists from last year's affair. Only two can advance. The kick downfield. This is going to be a key line out. And we've seen them go about 50-50 so far in today's games. Here. Yeah, it's Talking a line-out. Third line set piece, here's the second. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It's a finely contested battle, the line-out, particularly at seven. There's not a lot of room for error. San Diego executes under pressure. Verdonek taking it off the top. Ball in hand, San Diego down field. Plenty of green grass, white jerseys surrounding the ruck, not, one, not wanting to give away that space over. Verdonek nudges downfield. The ball still bouncing, sitting so lovely here in this Madison grass. Penalty awarded to San Diego. 11 oh, seconds left to play. Maybe the contact coach. What's your strategy, scrum? coach? Scrum uh, yeah, I think take the scrum here is a very good idea. The scrum's been very stable, but critically, Liz, it just it, winds it. down that clock. And potentially, if surfers had their time back, they might have not kicked away that possession. It was essentially a one possession game going in into the final. 30 seconds or so, but now the clock's dead. Uh, what they're going to do is probably try and wind down this scrum. But as we know, the scrums are contestable, and the surfers might get it back. Is there a replacement for? Or playing down? We'll listen in on some of the direction from the field. How many substitutes, how many interchanges have been made? Nikki Kenyon, ball in hand. I do not see an Coach. opposition scrum half for Donut. Looked like she went off the field. Surfers Five. may have used their roster or they may be strategically playing on Six. defense. Kenyon gets the ball in, cuts back inside. Again, 1420 showing on our game clock. See a bit of a push pass towards the outside from Washington. A whistle blown. Scrum to the surfers. Oh my goodness. It looks like there's still time on the clock here, Liz, and what an attacking opportunity. Midfield scrum, 15 meters out. Seconds, if you're going to get an opportunity to win the game, this is it. So we hear five seconds on the clock. Tegan McDonald with the ball in hand. She split her backs, one to the right, one to the left. Something's a cooking. McDonald makes the pass towards the far side of the field. McDonald gets it back again. She is tackled. Is it to touch? Advantage being shown to Washington Athletic Club. Fast and Furious here at the end, and that is the game. Washington advances to 2-0 in their pool.
the surfers amongst the favorites coming into the tournament fall to 0 and 2. Craig, final thoughts here from that final minute? Big defense gets the win. Excellent play from both teams. Well done to WAC for getting the win. And now we're going to go down to land who's big side. We're here down at the Wisconsin Rugby Sports Complex. I am here with Coach Davies handling business with WAC. They just got the win. A very, very right. tough match down to the last bitter moment. How's it feel getting the first win of the tournament today? Se second second win, yeah. Se no, it was good. The girls really had to work hard for that one. Um, our, our first game was a, was a little bit easier, but, um, yeah, the girls dug, dug deep today. Two wins, opportunity going to the quarterfinals. What does this next game mean to you? How do you how do you prepare to perform to get ready for the quarterfinals? Yeah, we're just next game focused, so we'll we'll just keep working uh, this 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 third uh, pool game. So we'll we'll treat it like any other game. Um, we'll we'll go hard. Yeah. Historically, WAC has always found themselves in semifinals, quarterfinals. Is this year any different? Do you guys feel like you're going to go to the very end and take it all? Again, we've, we've got confidence in our in our uh, group of girls, but um, yeah, we we take every game as it is. Um, we don't think too 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 far past the the game that that's in hand. So. Absolutely. Coach, thank you. Congratulations on the two wins. Good job. Good luck in the quarterfinals. We got H-E-B versus Kent Pendleton going on now. Thank you, Lance. We are back. It is John Broker. I am here with Liz Ann Ripple. It's going to be moving to uh, color analyst for the next couple. We have H-E-B taking on the Lady Hurricanes, taking on Kent Pendleton. Big kick off here. H-E-B kicks it off. Lady Hurricanes put it just 10 to Camp Pendleton there in very quite colorful uniforms. Move off to that right-hand side, looking for some runners. Pendleton on the move here. Get it out to the wing quickly. Nice move. Pendleton, a little break there. Tackle coming in from H-E-B. Nice work up the side. Power work coming from Camp Pendleton right now. A little bit tight here. There's pressure coming on from HEB at the moment, Liz, and looking at pretty strong. It's going. As Hampton. Keep a little bit tight here. Pendleton is working through the phases, looking for this power game, spin that ball back, and eventually we get a knock on, but it was all power there, Liz, for. Uh, for Pendleton at first. So this HEB team is a team we expect to see some power from. They were 10 to 10 tie in their first opening round matchup against Slaughterhouse. When we look across Camp Pendleton, this is a team that is also supported by Rhino. We talked about those colorful uniforms, the black and the green, out of that Rhino outfit that is out of Southern California. They brought a few of their pro players. This is a team we'd expect to see finesse from. But this is a difficult HEB side. The on the move right here in the middle of the field they go. A little corner here and they're gonna try to take it, but the good work from Pendleton to keep it off. Uh, it's a little offload. Eventually hauled over the line there. That's just 15 meter line. We're coming back for a penalty for a player and not releasing from Pendleton. And off they go through Watape, Watape. Tremendous player to Lessie Watape for HEB. Ball to the they uh, uh, they have a ton of room on that left hand side if they can move it. Tuafe continues to work it to the left there. Ball goes forward according to the referee. So we're going to come back here with a scrum to Pendleton. So we saw them both moving across the field again. This Camp Pendleton team trying to attack, reload, and keep out of contact from this very strong HEB side. Both teams, debutantes here in the club sevens, and we saw Pendleton actually take the top spot out of the Southern California West region. So they've taken over the surfer seed from last year, similarly like HEB making their debut, brand new on the field, but plenty of experience. HEB keep an eye out on Etta Milo in the number seven jersey, Angelina Lomu in number 11, and Talese Uhutafe in the number nine. Break here from Pendleton, a little footwork. Taking him towards the right-hand side of the field. Swarming defense from HEB. Ball eventually rolls into touch. It's going to be HEB ball. What tough thing looking to go quick there. But going to slow it down. Take the traditional line out. Is HEB inside their own half, but plenty of room on the width there if they can get it there. Oh. 
Right, my team's mixed up, excuse me. This is uh, Kim Pendleton in the black and green. I apologize. Working their way forward. Camp Pendleton. Who's make Mambe, who's making all the good work at number nine. But we have a yellow card here against the H-E-B Lady Hurricanes. And it's going to be Camp Pendleton ball. Again, apologies for that little first half mix up there. Just jump back in the seat and got the wrong one. Thank God for Liz and Twistle letting me know what's going on here. But opportunity here for Camp Pendleton to push this one downfield or take the scrum as they will. Nice attacking position. So we have two minutes on the yellow card, and this is worth noting. HEB came into the tournament with only nine players rostered. They're going to have to work extra hard, extra scrappy here with six on the field against this Pendleton side. It'll be a difficult two minutes ahead. Bronwyn Dormar. That one in with the scrum comes up. Referee's going to say, let's take it again. Dormar from Alberta in Canada. So put this one in. Ball comes back quickly. Again, they have that player advantage. The space is going to open up there. No invitation needed. Headed straight down the field. Great work here from Pendleton. Dormar gets it into the scrum. Touches down for the try. Excellent work. Another five points. Good work, Pendleton. You can beat him with speed, you can beat him with angles, you can beat him with ball work, passes and kicks, and she is able to get the job done. Coming from midfield, we look around the back, she's able to take an angle, just a little bit of that over the shoulder look and splits the defense. There is nothing HEB can do to recover once Dormar gets on the front foot. Beautiful rugby and heads up play from the scrum half. Nice work. Kick was good, it's gonna be seven points there for them. To kick off will be Pendleton, HEB. Just leaving that space in the midfield with a player off the field for a yellow card. Pendleton gets us underway again. Down outside the 22. Taking it in, Meg Mumbe in there, powerfully working at that one, but didn't release. So it's going to be a penalty here for the HEB Lady Hurricanes. Lady Hurricanes coming across that right-hand side. Just two powerful runners on this team. Player puts it down and gets back up. Referee says that's fine. They weren't held the whole time. Little offload ball off to that right wing. A little bit of a bobble there. So penalty defenders able to get in there just a bit quicker. Looking to cut off these passing lanes. Come back here for a shrill blast from the referee. Penalty this time against HEB, so here they come, and that is Meg Mambe. Mambe splits two, Mambe gets the offload away. Waiting player, no problem, headed towards the post. Pendleton gonna touch this one down right under the sticks. And it is another five for Camp Pendleton. So Katie Lowhouse, an experienced player out of the Midwest, and look at this. It all started with a quick tap taken by Mambe. Mambe in the middle of the field, again, like John mentioned, splitting the defenders, gets the offload, the excellent support line there from Lowhouse. A seasoned veteran out of Central, excuse me, Central Michigan University. She's played for the All-American Sevens at the Development Academy Sevens hosted at Little Rock. She's seen time with Rhino. She's seen time with the Chicago Lions. And she's showing her veteran experience on the field. Also eating off the clock. We're going into halftime with a Pendleton lead. And that is a lead there for Camp Pendleton. Lady Hurricanes, a bit of work to do in the second half. We'll be right back with that after this. Ready, in, and out. Last one, hold at the top. Ready, in, and out. Okay, ladies, do we want to play 15th rugby against them? That's what you're going to get. Okay, move the ball into space. We are too flat. 
get deeper, get wider, let the ball do the work. Is that good? Yes. Yeah, Start cutting in. I know they want to cut the outside, but if we deepen and we wider, the space is on the outside. Okay, if you need to make a tackle, especially on them, they're looking for the offloads. Just go for the double tackle. It's always on. Okay, yeah. One on the legs, one on the ball. First one needs to get low. Okay, the second one will get there. Is that good? Yes, get good. off the line. Get off the line, be in their face, and then make the mistakes. Okay? Yes, good. We're bunching a little bit on defense. 100%. Um, we just need to think about getting wider. They don't have the speed on the They're always speed on the edges. We have fast edges. They're going to try and attack the middle every time because like, they're again trying to play forwards balls. So we need to, like, you know, just come, like, shift, not just stay on the edges. 100%. So call them out, yeah. heads up, get off the line. Can you do that? Yes, Let's finish. Let's, Let's go. go. Come on. Let's go. Hey, work on me. Work on three. One, two, three. Work. Woo. See? Yeah. See? Lower. Welcome back to Madison United Rugby Club here in beautiful Madison, Wisconsin. The USA Rugby Club 7th Camp Pendleton leading the ATB Lady Hurricanes. John Broker here with Liz and Twistle. It has been, as they said, in that huddle right there. Speed versus power all game, Liz. Interesting second half coming. Yes, we saw earlier where Pendleton was really able to open it up over Oregon, winning 38 to 5 in that match. HEB dug deep, came away with the tie 10 to 10 against Slaughterhouse. So all to play for here in Pool C to see which teams advance further into the quarterfinals. Right now, if you're HEB, you're thinking about that possession game, you're thinking about putting pressure on this restart, a quick turnover, and wanting to control the pace. And so look to Iyongi gets us underway again. That bounces back the way of the Lady Hurricanes. Lady Hurricanes, pure power team, trying to kick the ball a little tight here. Player rolled too many times, couldn't release it. Let's make it back to Pendleton. Pendleton, and we're going to have a yellow card oh, again. Come on, I don't like this. That one away. The player tried to give the ball back. She realized that she was walking away ball in hand, and that's one of the unfortunate things about this game of sevens. Without much time, that's a pretty tough yellow to take. The second yellow of the game against HEB, so they're going to be down to six again. Just unfortunate. Referee pulling player back to the mark here. Another two minutes with one less player on the field for ATP. Ball rolls down. Is he going to find touch? Rolling along the line. Finally does. It's going to be touch and a line out for Camp Pendleton in the ATP half. Should be a good attacking position for them. If you're Pendleton, you're looking to capitalize off this platform. You've got one woman up. You know you've got the speed. The space is going to be there for them to be able to really stretch the legs. A gorgeous view of the field here. 70 meters of width, 100 meters of depth. Let's see what Pendleton can do to extend their lead. But time ticking away with this line out. Camp Pendleton. Look in the middle there. They get the ball up to Mambe, the Parisian. She plays for Perpignan. Space to move here for Camp Pendleton. The space opens up. Right through they go. That's Catherine Lowhouse. She's been in the try zone already. Lowhouse touches down. Another try for this Camp Pendleton team. The Ann Arbor, Michigan. Nate's five on the board. Great vision here and great execution off the line out. Up and out again. We'll go back to the replay. Look at this movement. Lowhouse is able to stretch the field a bit. She's drawing defenders with their hips turned towards the line. She's able to cut through. So she beats the one, then she slips through two. There's no shoulder lowered. The footwork isn't quite there. So HEB not in a position to make the tackle and Lowhouse is able to do it all on her own. Kick is good. It's gonna be a kick off for Camp Pendleton. After this, we're going to bring you Chicago Lions versus Nova. The second. The women's bracket sections today. After that, we'll bring some men's games and back to the women's division later on today here in beautiful Madison, Wisconsin. There's every battles for this national championship trophy. Low House gets us started here with the kickoff deep inside their own half. Not too deep, but outside the 22 there. Are the Lady Hurricanes. That was Angelina Lomu taking that down. It's going to be a penalty against Camp Pendleton. Players not releasing, and quickly they go, looking across the field. Ball hits the deck. Who's going to come up with it? It's going to come up into Lady Hurricane's hands. Now there's some open room to run. Now there's a little space here for them. Big tackle coming in there for Dormar. Player trying to release the ball right there. They are right over it. Is Camp Pendleton penalized for not releasing early enough before they did that? HEB Lady Hurricanes, an opportunity here at the 40-meter line of Camp Pendleton. 
we look at this again. So it's an excellent tackle that was made by Dormar. But what I like about the heads up play by HEB on that run was she was running back towards support. If that had been made on the outside as a one-on-one -on -one tackle, that would have been lost possession for sure. So while she ate a huge tackle, she kept her team in position on the field. And that comes to a knock on there from Lady Hurricane. So it'll be Pendleton ball here just outside their own 40 meter line. Ten and a half minutes gone. Referee brings together Dormar again, puts that one straight back. They've got a couple of runners out wide here. This hole opens up, flying through again is Lowhouse. She has been on some long gallops so far this game, and she's got another one. Lowhouse, Lowhouse, same place under the post. Five more points for Camp Pendleton. Speed kills, and in this case, Field vision kills as well. Lowhouse, again, receives a beauty of a pass deep and wide. She's got options, steps back inside. There's nothing that Lomu can do. She's frozen in place. A good chase by HEB, but the pace of Lowhouse, again, with that front foot forward, she is just toying with defenses. A trio of tries for Lowhouse. Wait, two minutes. Good work from her as that kick is good. Referee says about two minutes to go. And Pendleton to kick off, ready up 26 nil. Pendleton again, debutantes here in this tournament, but heaps of experience with several players in the Rhinos Academy setup. We also saw several of these players in the PR7s. They were the top seed coming out of the West, taking over that number three that had been occupied by San Diego last year. Putting themselves in the Low position house. to get something done. Low house gets us going again. HB Lady Hurricanes just outside their own 40 meter line. They need a distributor and they find one right there. Moving the ball off, but it nearly picked off. Referee whistles for the knockdown. It's being strum here for the Lady Hurricanes. Any time wasted is in the favor of Pendleton right now. If you're HEB, you're looking for some positive momentum going into their third match with a tie and a loss. They must win that third one to keep hopes alive. They've got the tools, they've got some pieces there, but they need to be able to break through this run, well, this Pendleton defense rather, and see if they can do something with that positive possession that they had in the first half. Lady Hurricanes. The races here looking for a corner. It's not going to open up for them. Pendleton trying to come in over that one, but able to get it back. Our HEB ball goes to the ground. Good pressure and coordination from the defense from Camp Pendleton. See what the whistle is. It looks like a penalty against this Camp Pendleton team. HEB. Big, powerful hit there. Come running, they do. That's at my Lau. Takes that one in, a little offload game going on. Ball comes back towards Camp Pendleton, and they have some broken field here. A number of players in similar positions. We're going to come back to the original knock-on. It'll be a scrum here for Camp Pendleton. So back and forth action, but what gave them that extra little bit of oomph, that extra bit of space here is Etta Mailau. Look at that, sit down one, keeping that leg drop two, gets the offload three. This is why she's a capped international at the 15s game. I initially thought this was going to be Pendleton ball, but one of the HEB players has hold of it. An HEB scrum, low mood to put this one in. Coming from the tight head side, looking to get the ball around to the left there. Off they go. They've got two runners trying to clog up the space between those two defenders, and they have done. Big run coming to the outside there. That's Christiana Sama, and she's over the line for the first five points for HEB. Five points to the good for the HEB Hurricanes. Excellent work to touch that one down. So steady work coming off of what was a bit of an unstable scrum. We saw this right side prop with her foot in the air, and here it is fleet feet by HEB. Sama able to take the corner, just gets outside of Annie Berg. Gets those points, so positive momentum to close out the match for HEB. Kick is no good. 
And that seems as though it is time for this one. Game is over. Looked in. Has taken this one. And we're going to go down to land before our next matchup. Wisconsin's Rugby Sports Complex. I'm here with Coach Alexis. This team took care of business first game and second game. Seems like they're even getting better. What was changes between the first and the second game? We definitely worked on working together. Um, as you can see, our defensive line got more solid, got more uh, quicker off the ball. Um, we are, of course, a relatively new team, not just in terms of uh, being a team in general, but some new players as well. So our elder players have definitely taken them under their wing, making sure they're communicating with them and encouraging them to stay together as a team. That's what we're here to do, work together as a team. Two wins. Seems to almost lock your spot in the quarterfinals. What can you bring into this third game to make sure you're properly prepared for the knockout rounds tomorrow? Well, we know what we can do without the ball. We've been playing a lot of defense. I want to know what we can do with the ball. Um, we're going to have to be creative. We're going to have to be fast coming into the quarterfinals and go hopefully going into the finals. And so we can't be looking at each other once we get the turnover. We can't be wondering if we're trying to scrum or play fast. Uh, all of that is just going to be discussed. We're going to play to our strengths. Um, if we know that someone like Meg Mambe has the ball in her hands, we're going to let her go. If we know that um, they are prepared and already back 10, we're going to make them do the extra work to come in for the scrum. That's all it is. Coach Alexis, congratulations. Two wins. Good luck on your third game. Back up to you guys in the booth. Thank you very much, Lance. We are almost ready to go here. Just waiting on a referee for this next matchup. This is the Chicago Lions versus Nova. Two teams that are no stranger to the Club 7's championships. Great game coming up, Liz. Absolutely. This is a Lions team that really found their strengths this summer. They won the Midwest 7 series. They came out one point ahead of Chicago North Shore. North Shore won the championship day, but the Lions had it in points total. We had a bit of a different structure this year, again, with four regional qualification systems. We saw the Red River and Midwest looped together. There were meant to be some crossover games. Come a difficult to. summer of travel, but a Lions unit full of young talent. Right. They'll be kicking off in that black jersey going from left to right across the screen. Yeah, left to right on your screen is going to be Chicago Lions. From right to left is going to be Nova. Josh Musonera from the Boston area to take this one. Musonera gets us underway. High one up. It's in Nova's hands. Nova inside their 22. Going to reset that one. First attack of the game to them. They're going to go off to the right-hand side. See if they can get Kenzie Ennis isolated out there. Have to bring this one back. Chicago Lions, a little pressure on there. Just a little pick and go. Gets a player isolated, so we're going to come for a penalty here for not releasing. May not have been exactly what we wanted to do. They could have used some of the whip. The referee Musanera is going to allow the Lions to take a scrum here. Liz just leaves them that whole open side of the field. Great attacking spot for them. Absolutely, and this is a team that is so well, so well drilled. A team that I actually played some sevens for, made my appearance back in the 2013 national championships for sevens. So a team that I'd like to see do well, but also a team that certainly respects the strengths of Nova. Here come the Lions, ball out to their backs. A little wrap around move here, looking to put someone into open space. They're going to the width, little step inside, little step outside for Hovenek. She gets the ball back into Torres Brown. Torres Brown finds some space, hands on the player. Ashley Torres Brown, five points for the Lions off a set piece move. So you talk about good sevens, you talk about being drilled. It's a team that had the scrum quick in, quick out, moving the ball around to the outside, an excellent support play here. So cutting towards the outside there was Hovenek. You see her running line, her angled way, her hips are turned, and she drags three Nova defenders off her line, opens up enough space there for Torres Brown to go through. There's jerseys all around, but not a tackle to be made. Kick is good. Torres Brown from Greenwich, Connecticut, played for Sacred Heart University. One of the many Naira teams out there. Touches down here for the Chicago Lions. It'll be a Lions kickoff. Two minutes in to this first half. Nova knocks that one on off the kickoffs. That's an advantage here for Chicago, but Pat Pass goes forward to come back for a scrum for the Lions right at the 40 meter line of Nova. 
again on that width of the field. They scored at a similar position, a little closer than before. We'll see what they decide to do with this one. It is a young Nova team out on the field this weekend, a team that draws heavily from this mid-Atlantic college region. So it'll be interesting to see how they progress and the lessons that they take away from playing. Good pressure coming on from Nova, but penalty Something according to referee Musonera for not driving straight. Chicago Lions have the penalty. They're going to waste no time, bring it into the midfield. Little wrap around again. Let's see if they can put this player isolated out one more time. Hovanek this time slides through, gets the ball back to Betty Bien. Betty. Sorry, spin back in. That time Hovanek moves it across field. They've got runners across the width here if they can get them. Looked at the little wrap around, but it was a dummy, and Meg Loomis is going to hang on to that one. Meg Loomis from Hamburg, New York, went to the University of Michigan, touches down five points off a nice little show of the ball there to draw on some defenders. What an individual play. So we see the movement, we see the realignment, we see the nice long passes as well. Beautiful rugby, a little bit of that dummy run, the cut back inside. So we look at loops, we look at switches, we look at fundamentals of play, and the Lions have so many tools. They're victorious earlier in the day, 47 to nothing over Dallas, and they're maintaining their try-scoring form. If we're Nova, you have to think about the ways to stop them. They got those lessons in that game against Phoenix. We saw what Nova can do when they play connected defense and set that defensive wall when they can play patiently. But when they are caught off of that line, they're opening up the holes that the Lions are able to take advantage of. Lions to kick this one off, they're up. 14 nil, four minutes in, three minutes to go in the first half. Nice high kick there from Kelly Hurt. Taken down this time by Nova. Nova looking to get in their stride. That's Anna Ray Clark. Will come wide, rushing defense coming up from Chicago. Holds that one down. Tackle on Gina Reestrup. Ball's taken up quickly by the Lions. Lions, little break up the middle there. That's Betty Nguyen. She's looking at the line, but she's not quite going to make it. Ball squirts down there. It's good to go, referee says. We're down a little tussle here. We got an offside advantage against Nova. See what they have on the width here. They certainly look like they have players. Wide it goes. Another try coming and another try for Meg Loomis. That's two in a row. Great work here, Chicago Lions. Just putting it through those hands. So hands is one of their plays and hands are getting the job done, but what also is crushing Nova right now is that it's been all Lions ball in hand. All of this action has taken place within the Nova half of the field. We see Wynn split the middle of the field. We see the options there. It was a good tackle there by that number seven from Nova, but Lions too quick in support, conditioning drills paying off, able to scramble options, realigning, reloading. We look towards the outside and there Loomis is ball in hand, cuts back inside and over the line. Good work by Loomis. Play started there by Nguyen, coach of Loyola University, Chicago. Playing here for the Chicago Lions, 19-0 Lions lead Nova. With a win in this game, the Lions would be moving on. We've got a couple of updates from around the tournament so far for the women. WAC and Chicago North Shore both advancing to the quarterfinals at two and one. Boston and Cincinnati will advance out of pool A. Back to the action here. Ball comes across for Nova. They're inside their 22. Haven't had much opportunity in this first half as we're under a minute to play in it. A little broken tackle there. Some continuity from this Nova team. Nova. Again, just stuck here. Haley Robinson. Outside the 22, there's going to go for another little pick and go here. It's Aguilar. Takes it up a few meters, but one of the Chicago players right up and over it, and they've stolen it away. Off they go, looking for another one here. Muldoon gets it, gets it to Loomis. Loomis moves it back across to Kelly Hurt. Kelly Hurt hanging on to it. Got a couple of runners out. Side here, but they're going to go back in. Grecky takes it in. It's eventually moved across the field. Good hands are going to keep it out to his left-hand side. Ball in the hands of Meg Loomis. Across the right-hand side they go. There's a space opening up there. Decide not to take it. They're looking for the width. Ball down to Hovanek. Down the ground ball up to Kelly Hurt. 
Now they come across through Davis. Davis, they have scored an earlier try. Want to mix up the two of the six there in the numbers, but he speeds in now. Torres Brown has been across the line. She's across the 22. She's got one defender that is not going to catch her. And right there is going to be Torres Brown. Ashley Torres Brown touches down. Another five points in just a second. Referee Moose and Hera having a word here. Took away the excitement of my commentary, but touchdown eventually. Five points again as we're over the seven-minute mark here. So look at this again, looking to go sideline to sideline. No, with fast and furious tackles, Samantha Aguilar was everywhere, and it was just one pass, one play too many. And look at how quick Torres Brown is off of the line as soon as she had the ball in hand. She was going forward. There was no acceleration. It was all gas, no breaks, and the Lions continuing fine form from that earlier game going into halftime with a commanding lead, have conceded no tries yet in the tournament. And that is halftime here. Chicago Lions with a strong lead. We'll be back with second half action in just a minute. covering one another's cutbacks, all right? That means next job, threat's cleared, my player doesn't have the ball I was matched up on, I have the cutback of the person next to me. That's gonna shut down those switches, that's gonna shut down those individual line breaks. If you're not sure, take the hit, yeah. all right? We're, uh, we're looking indecisive, we're looking flat-footed out there. All right, we're gonna inject some energy from the sideline, I need my finishers to come on hard, fast, but I need everybody that comes off to stay ready. All right, we're gonna have Gina come on for A Ray. Uh -huh. We're gonna have Boz come on for Emily. Fuck yeah, let's go, guys. Here we go. All right, let's, let's go. get our heads right. Let's maintain possession. We're losing possession because we're losing races to yep. the breakdown. All right. There's nothing we can do except get ourselves there. Yep. It is worth the effort you put in. If you're gassed at the end of getting there in support and us scoring a try, then you can come off. <laughs> yeah? All right, you gotta get there. Okay. Nova on three, support. Little sport. One, two, three. Nova! Sports. All right, my two subs, come here. You have to check in. Oh, I have to There you go. Give it to the guy in the red shirt. We are back here in Madison, Wisconsin. The USA Club Sevens Championship. Chicago Lion out to a pretty commanding lead over Nova. Scott Broker with Liz and Crystal for this one. Liz, Nova, bit of work to do. What's the message from the coaching staff? Well, that was a good, clear, concise halftime message there. They have make, got to make sure that they're continuing their work rate on defense. Once their tackle is done, making sure that they're continuing to cover those cutbacks, like she said, and those individual line breaks. The Lions have found those spaces and be able to open up a bit in the middle of the field. If they cover that and they make the hit, they make decisive calls on defense, then we'll see a little bit of a shift in that energy on the field. Aguilar kicks that one off. They'll take it Lions. They're going to get to work right away. Big run there from Ramsey. McKenzie takes a cup with her. Defense back. Peyton Muldoon moves it out. They're up to the wing. Davis. Great oh, yeah. off the Andy Craig coming here. Nice work from Ashley Cowdery. Cowdery at 22. She's got runners chasing her everywhere. But they're not her. She's heading to the post. Fox. Ashley Cowdery. Great work from the Davenport University player. An excellent job there, checking over her shoulder and knowing where her support is or where their defense is coming from. So we look at this break, we look at the way that she's carrying the ball. Ball in the right hand, stiff arm with the left, checking one, two, three, checking over the shoulder again, making sure that she is not going to get tackled unaware from behind. We see these Nova jerseys behind the chase by Asimang, but just that little bit of extra gets Cowdery over the line and gets another try for the Chicago Lions. Lions hit the kick there. Referee Musnera happy with it. So we're going to have a kickoff from the Lions. They're rolling in some substitutes now up 33 to nil over this Nova team here in Pool D action. Um, it gets 10, comes down to Nova. Nova player takes it to ground. Just outside their 22, Aguilar moves it across. Gets the ball back, a little report for right 
Mackenzie Davis pulls it back for the Lions. Mackenzie Davis has been excellent. They call her Mack from Indiana University. Gets the ball up to the try scorer, Cowdery. Cowdery tries to hand off one. Cowdery gets taken down eventually. Across the field we come with the Lions. Lions loops just a touch here. McKenna Ramsey sees the space, but Kenna Ramsey can't quite get through it as Gloria Reyes gets in there to make the tackle. The referee has spotted something and not releasing. We're in a penalty against the Chicago Lions team. Opportunity here for Nova. Love that pursuit by Reyes there. She's able to get the tackle from behind, grabs a jersey, no. pulls a player into her, no. draws a penalty for her team. So let's we talk about those decisive defensive sparks. There's one yeah, of them. Now let's see if Nova can convert. Yeah, Aguilar gets us started. Nova not going too far with that one. Reyes picks it up and shows it. She's surrounded by black jerseys at the moment. She's going to need some support you. players, and they arrive. Aguilar in the distrib distributor roll again. She takes it off the side. Again, not looking to go wide, this Nova okay. team, but a penalty for not rolling away against Chicago. Cut. Another penalty Stop. here for Stop. Nova. The referee just stopping for some substitutes here. So four minutes left to play. The Lions with a commanding lead. Their current point differential at 80 points. They've got a game ahead against the Phoenix, but it is looking like in Pool D. We should see the Lions and Phoenix punch their tickets through the quarterfinals. The women's tournament so far has held its seeds in most cases, the exception being that Slaughterhouse HEB tie and Atlanta that failed to advance from Pool A. But otherwise, the seeding has worked. The structure has borne out. A little move there from this Nova team. Aguilar gets it started, gets the ball back. Looking for some runners out to the right-hand side. Defense is going to slow that down. Yep. Switch turn over. Good turn over there by the Chicago Lions. Lions at the breakdown and all across the field have been very structured. Player picking that ball up off sides. Can't do that, Amalia Allen. It's going to be a penalty here for the Lions. Yeah, stop. Time is off. We see wise clock management. We think about wise game management. Still four games and these final three minutes left to play for the Lions. A two day tournament is a long tournament. So not a bad option here to opt for the scrum either. Right, let's go. Aubrey Christ to put this Five. one in. Chris Davenport University player from Six. Cypress, Texas. Blue. It's the Woodlands Youth Rugby Club. Club in the Houston area there. Woodlands just north. She's going to make a break. She's got a runner coming with her, but she can't get that ball away. Having to come back and set it up, but picked up quickly. Hobanek is headed towards the line, and this is going to be a problem for Hobanek. She's going to get across. No defenders there. Touches it down. Another five points of the good for Chicago. So opting for the scrum, opting to control the pace. The Lions are basically in control this entire game. Everything they can do, they are doing well. Moving the ball, hitting at pace, and look at this. We see a great pursuit from behind by the Nova's number seven, Haley Robinson, but able to recover. It's a constant flood of these black jerseys going downfield, streaking down the sideline, and then cutting her way back inside, making it a little bit more difficult for that defender to pursue. It's easy to tackle on a straight line, harder on the angle. Another five points for the Lions. Look at Chris there, got that one started. Just under two so minutes coming. left in this contest. Down the middle, just a little short hop. Nova would love to get some points on the board, a minute and a half to do so. Elar has been important all game, takes this one forward from Fort Wayne, Indiana. Nova working that ball across field. Josephine Ann Asamang gets a hold of this. Tackled immediately, as is her counterpart, Hillary Hoffman. They've moved it across the field, see if they can get this one back. Picked up there by Chicago. Good work, excellent from Aubrey Christ again. Gets the ball up in the hands of Annie Feldkamp. 
Yeah, advantage. Ball's on the ground. They're going to pick this one up and go. Just try to keep it a little tight here. They're right at the line. Nova trying to pile their way over. Chris is out to the left. Chris has some space. And Aubrey Christ is going to get over the line and head towards the post to score in the middle. Another five points. We keep saying that for the Chicago Lions team. So Chris truly making our mark here coming in as an impact sub. You mentioned this Davenport University program. They've been a scholarship program out of Michigan for quite some time. Success on the field. The line break here after she got that offload over the shoulder to Annie Feldkamp. She's there immediately again in support. Scrappy at the ruck. And then she's going to come and realign again. Chris everywhere on the field. The Lions playing a little bit more contact and still able to get it done. Freezes the defense and Chris goes through again. And that is going to be the end of our contest. We are going to go right to break. We're going to switch back to men's action after this. First game coming up will be. All right, we'll be back in just a second. We'll be back in just a moment here at the National Sevens.
Welcome back. We are in Madison, Wisconsin. It's a USA National Rugby Club Sevens Championship 2023. We're moving back to the men's divisions pool E. This is going to be NAV Sevens versus the Dallas Reds here on this beautiful field one. You see Dallas Reds going to be white running from right to left on your screen. Left to right will be the nuns. NAV Sevens. John Broker with the contact coach. Greg Wilson bringing you this one. Justin Hale to referee it. Good matchup coming up, Craig. Yeah, brilliant matchup coming up. We've got number one seeds now who are going to be looking to make a big statement here on field one so they can continue their strong momentum they've already got today. <laughs> Hale gets us underway. Red kicked this one off. Hanging a high one just outside the 22. Taken down by Odendahl for Nav. Big breaking up here. It's Ligalu for the Nav Sevens. Looking for Tim Stanfield. See the pass out yeah, to Stanfield here. here. Line out coming to Dallas. Yeah, okay. yeah, it's white ball. White ball. White ball. Yeah. No. no, hey, time's off. Time's off. Time's off. We'll let everybody get set. Y'all got three or two? Yeah. Time's back on. Don't carry on. Looking to go to the front Backwards. there for Dallas. Ball gets whipped back. They're going to hang on to it. Looking in the middle of the field. Go the Dallas Reds. Out there to Seema Hadar. He's looking for some space. Shakes off one. Puts a little offload in there. Looking to bring it back to him. Can't get it there. Penalty on the ground. Not rolling away. Trying to play it too much defensively there. Are the Nav Sevens. Nice break up the side. Good work there. Jalen Tatum looking at the line. Jalen Tatum across the line. Dallas Reds. First blood. Five points. Yeah, they've really been moving the ball well in these first 90 seconds from side to side, and that was a great example here. Just really crisp passing, moving the ball, I and mean, it gives the fast men an opportunity to do what they do best, finds a gap, and then Jalen Tatum is under the post. Wonderful start there from the Dallas Reds. Kick is good, and it's seven points to the good for the Dallas Reds here. Look at the try score there, Tatum. Jalen Tatum from Kennesaw State University. Marietta, Georgia native. Ball comes back there to this NAV 7 team. Odendahl takes that. Corey Jones in there picking that one up. Corey Jones looking around, surveys his options, comes to the right hand side. Nice work there as they get the ball into the hands of Dalton Musselman. Musselman takes it into contact. Across they go to Jones. He's going to go across the field. It's going to be Stanfield. On the outside, they're looking for Stanfield. Big run Off there the from the big number one. Simi Moala, a nice break there for Stanfield. He's going to get across the line. Going to take a look at carry on. Going to touch it down. Five points, kick to come. That's tasty. Yeah, that was classic sevens there, just moving the ball from side to side. Really efficient movement, particularly at the ruck time, really quick ball. That doesn't allow the defense to get set. Move the ball back to the width, and then it was an offload here, but the referee deemed that it came off the foot, so we play on, and he managed to sneak through with a bit of footwork to get the try. Potentially a tough call there, John. A little bit, but a little anyway. Kick to come. Let's see the one we'll find out. But nonetheless, try there for this NAV 7s team. And they will kick this one off. Nice high kick. Down to the 22, bounces out, bounces back, winds up in the hands of a NAV player, but knocked on. Adrian Robb couldn't hang on to that one. We'll come back for a scrum to the Dallas Reds. 
So it's a good opportunity for Dallas, although they're going to be deep in their own half. We've seen the efficiency of their ball movement straight off the bat. So they're going to be excited. First of all, you've got to win the scrum. That's where the big battle is going to come in now. You're playing against an experienced NAV team who's got a residential program going on. So these guys are training full time. But Dallas so far are more than a, a decent match for this NAV team. And it all starts hey, with this scrum. Here, we're not binding yet. Thank you. Referee Hale. Quote. Bind. Making sure everything's set there. It's going to come set. in from carry on. Carry on, ball in hand, able to get that one away. Into the middle of the field they go. Looking at that width, trying to get the ball to Hadar. Hadar is trying to take that corner on Moala. Puts the ball to the boot, keeps it in field, bounces up. Did it get knocked on there? It's into the hands of one of the NAV 7 players. We're going to come back here for the initial knock on. Hello. Scrum for NAV. Yeah, really enjoying the ambition from Dallas and how they just, again, they move that ball really efficiently. It's good covering tackle, but just look how he gives himself an opportunity. And when he realizes he's running out of space, instead of he could have potentially offloaded over the top, if we're going to be really strict on him, I like that little chip. It just changes it up a bit, Out. testing that backfield defense. And it was an unfortunate knock-on. Set. Scrum here for Nav 7. Nav. Pressure coming on, but players going in the wrong angle. She's going to come back quickly. Chase Suznovich takes that one. Gets the ball back there. Tackle comes on. Did it get knocked on in the tackle? It has. Carry on. Good work. Scrum here for the Dallas Reds at their own 22. Yeah, it was a big initial scrum, but referee deemed it was slightly illegal. So they're going to have another chance to do a wonderful scrum and defense because now it looked like they were in and behind there. But Dallas did not give up at all, and they got the scrambling tackle. They forced the knock on. Let's see if they can drive straight this scrum. Bind. Set. Carry on. That one in, all the way. He's very handy around the scrums and the breakdowns. Carry on, smart player. It's a contact. Off to the short side. We have to reset our Dallas. Stay on the short side, trying to work some defense there. Ball chip forward. Looked like Corey Jones with rolls in a touch. So we'll come back here. It's going to be a Dallas ball. They're going to go quick. Is it going to work out for him? Ball down to carry on. Carry on has four red jerseys around him. Where can they get it? Looked like it was knocked forward there. Going to be a scrum here for Nav 7. It's just a little too ambitious that time for the Dallas Reds. Yeah, it moved it a little bit too quick. With sometimes the quick throw is an excellent opportunity, but not if you haven't got your attack set ready to go. And Nav just swarmed them in defense, and they managed to force that forward pass knock on in those tight angles. So Dallas needs to work in the biggest spaces. They don't want to be keeping it too tight. across here for Nav. Get the ball into Odendahl's hands. He's going to step a couple. Odendahl is going to find the try zone. Great work there. Odendahl touching down five points. Yeah, very simple stuff. Just straight from the scrum. And he was like someone, like a remote control car there. He was just kind of weaving in and out of traffic. Uh, just a beautiful bit of balance of movement. Two hands on the ball. So it could be a passing threat as well. So that's textbook for all the young players watching or any players watching goes under the post. Very, very skillful play there. Woodendahl has played in the PR7s. Follow up his own kick here. We see the next team, the Old Blue Oregon, are going to come up after this. That's going to be halftime. It's going to be 12-7 NAV as we go into the break. We'll be back with an exciting second half right after this. One more thing, on the edges, when we're man on, I still want a third man coming underneath, right? The mini straight, right? Just like our three on seven, all day. It's your game, take it. Yeah. Let's go, boys. This is why we play, man. Oh, oh, this is why we do this shit. Yeah, heat. Heat, heat, heat on three, heat on three. One, two, three, heat. Yeah. 
Yeah, it looks pretty funny. Welcome back. You heard the halftime talk there from the Dallas Reds. John Broker with Greg Wilson here, the contact coach, bringing you second half action. A tight game, 12 7, and nav up. They're going to be running from right to left on um, the screen. Time. Dallas certainly oh. still in this one, Craig. Oh, absolutely. They've just got to keep testing. You don't want to get too much into an arm wrestle, they don't want to get too tight in their play. Do what Dallas are good at, moving the ball, and they found an egg, and there's no reason to find they can't find that egg again. Referee Hale getting ready for the second half. Odendal try score to kick off here. Odendal went to Life University. Gets our second half underway with the left boots. Hanging high for the NAV players to run on to, but it comes back down the way initially of Dallas. It's going to stay with Dallas. Dallas, cross field, carry on, puts in a long one. Trying to get it away, but that hole closes down. Big run for Aaron Gray. Aaron Gray spills the ball back to half seven. Tab through Corey Jones, moving to Odendahl. Odendahl gets it across the field, gets it out to Musselman, Musselman gets it a little wider. The danger man, Tim Stanfield, a very experienced player right there. Gets that ball back inside to Musselman again. They're at the five meter line. Odendahl comes in, so does Stanfield. Stanfield sees the line. Stanfield doesn't need an invitation. Stanfield has a second. Yeah, right now it's just a well-oiled machine for now. They're just doing the basics really well. They're moving the ball, they're winning the collisions at the ruck, and it's just really basic but highly effective sevens rugby, and that's why they put themselves into deep positions every tournament that they play in. Just the basics of the world. You can see their support play, the footwork, they're just making sure the point of attack is always changing. Good skills there on the clear out, I mean, good vision, gets the dot down, highly effective rugby. Kick is no good, but the lead extended a bit for this NAV 7s team. They will kick off some changes coming in for Dallas. Nav gets us underway, high kick to the 22. Fielded there by Dallas, that's Ollie. Still inside their 22. Come back the other direction, looking for a little offload, but it's not gonna appear there for Aguirre. Up to the wing, try scorer here for Dallas, gonna take this one in, can he make a little more? Cannot. Jones tries to push that one off, but it's going to come across a carry on again. Good defense up in their faces from Nav. So they go to the boot. Hadar chasing onto that one. It's across the 50. What kind of bounce will it get? Odendahl going back on him. He's got a streaming Simo Hadar. Can't quite trip him up there. Got a few defenders on him. Going to have to be quick to get back here. Will this Nav team have done? Jones gets back, looks one way, goes the other. They have an extra man on the outside. Sweeper coming, it's Moala. Moala spins around another. Moala right at the line there. They're gonna come back across to the left-hand side. Good move. Corey Jones shows it, puts a fake ball up, goes to the right-hand side. Break coming here for Deontay McMurray. Deontay McMurray gets across the 22, gets an offload in there. Oh, sorry, another wrong team there. Yeah. It was actually NAV players there, so good try for them. Yeah, wonderful. It's just what I liked about NAV. They're just very well oiled and they're very calm on the ball. And what I liked how they went back to where the ball has been playing. If you just watch here, Corey Jones changes the direction of plays. Now you're starting to pick on tired defenders who have just been in that ruck. And then watch this little drop of a shoulder, the Fijian handoff. Wow. That took two players out there. And then the support play and the offload. That's just really excellent rugby. But also, it's that good variation between strength, power, pace, and all. 
ultimately skill execution. It was Missile Galu made that big break and got the ball to Simi Moala. We had some different jersey numbers for the NAV team originally this morning, so we're just catching up with that. We do apologize. I want to make sure we're giving credit to the right players where it is due. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. NAV7 set to kick this one off. So Miss Legalu again. Well, two players knocked off with one shoulder barge. He's going to enjoy that one for a long time. I'm sure he's going to be talking about it all weekend, but then the presence of mind to get the offload in contact. So not just all power, a lot of skill in there too. Backwards. Awala, the try score from Southern Virginia University. That was unfortunate for Nav. That kickoff was on the money, allowed Corey Jones to get up and tap back. And unfortunately, it was just a small knock on, but I really liked how they went to compete and contested that kickoff. 24 7 with just over two minutes to go in this matchup. I'm going weak, I'm going weak. I'm going weak. Five, two, weak. Right after this, we have Old Blue from New York and Oregon. Time back on. See Stan Phil getting a rest. Referee Hale bring it up, just wants a little safety. Crouch. Fine. Set. Carry on. Gets that one back there. Still inside the 22. Really need some work here. Aguirre moves that one wide. Do they have the ability to go? Hadar. Hadar tries to push that one back. Just spills on the floor. Carry on gets it. Referee says it's okay. Big pressure coming on from Jones. Ball gets out to that right hand side there to Tatum. Tatum's been in the tri zone. From the side. Player comes in on the angle there and leaves his feet. Corey Jones feels the brunt of that one. But it's going to be a penalty here. Nav's going to take the scrum. Yeah, Tatum just got himself isolated. Actually, I don't, I don't think it was his problem too much because he was the one who carried really well. It was more of a support play. It just wasn't there to clear out. He got his angles wrong. Crunch. There it is. It was an easy decision to give for the referee. Bind! I got to need you to bind. Hey, both you. All coming in from Camerata, the number five jersey. Quote! Bind! Set! Nav on the move again. A little show comes back in. Big ball to Chelsea Nye. Yeah, white 12. Jones again with the dummy to one side, coming back in the other direction. Little handoff there from Withheld. Ball rolls in the touch. We're about 30 seconds left in this match. 24 7 to Nav. The support here, Dallas, give themselves a good look. Okay? Nine, They've got themselves a line out. Let's get some good reps in if they're looking ahead to the weekend. Nav a quality team. So if we can pull something off here, it's all about building that momentum as the weekend develops. Carry on to put this one in. Jones takes that one away. Nav, one more attacking opportunity with 12 seconds on the clock. Look at it one way, going to push it the other way through Musselman. Musselman and State grad gets it to the man himself. Sligalu has knocked a couple people over already. Gets a ball up into the hands of awaiting Siosi Nye. And he's going to cross the try line. One last try for this NAV 7s team. Yeah, great play. Once again, they went back down to the blind side. So an area where the ball came from, they went back down there. And they're just targeting those weak defenders as we look back at the replay. And just turns on the power, just keeping that ball alive. And I really like this running line here. All at pace, doesn't break stride. And he's bursting through to get the try. Look, he still had a lot of work to do here. Look, this defender's chasing him. But he had an absolute pace and power really poised and one thing you'd say about this nav team is they've got a lot of depth nav certainly does and nav's gonna pull that one out that's the end of this contest next up is going to be oregon versus old blue we'll be back with that matchup in just a minute yeah, 29 7 is what i have yeah. we're down with the head coach of nav 
JK, yet again, these guys are handling business. Tell me about this team, man. It's two two games taken care of going into the quarterfinals. Tell me about this group. Yeah, no, it's a special group, you know, from all over, different walks of life, different ages. we got 34 to 18 in the squad, so that's pretty exciting. I think right now we dodged a bullet. Uh, we've got to be a little bit more clinical. The basics are going to can hurt us if we can't, uh, can't execute, and I think we dodged a bullet there. But we can just get, you know, a little bit better each game. We're going we're gonna to peak when we need to, so watch out for day two. What does it say for a multiple try win? that you dodged the bullet. Is that how you hold it? That's the standard yeah, you hold for yeah. these guys? You know, the standards, we, we've got to abide by those standards, but we as a group have set. Um, so, you know, we got the result, but the performance wasn't necessarily what our standards are aligned to. So we'll regroup in the tent and we'll come back firing for game three against a strong group Coach, I know I'm going to talk to you soon. Good luck rest of the day. Thanks, guys. I'm going back up top to you guys. Right here, cards here? Yeah, cards. Welcome back. We are here at Madison, Wisconsin, Madison United Rugby Club. We're in Pool F action in the men's division. This is going to be Old Blue taking over, taking on the Oregon Sharks. Oregon and Blue taking the ball. The next kick here is Old Blue. In their white jerseys. Old Blue New York comes across quick. Ball in the hands of Michael St. Clair. St. Clair. Veteran of this old blue team takes it into contact. Players come in quickly. They're going to go from the right hand side through Braithwaite. Back to the left through Fury. Jake Fury gets the 50 meter line. Taking out there is Fujimura. St. Clair once again off to this right hand side. Looking to work that ball around through Lucas Fleming. Ball. Knocked away by good defense from Oregon. It's going to be a line out for the Sharks. Uh, despite all the possession there from Old Blue, they weren't really testing Oregon at all. So Oregon were just going from side to side and they were just waiting for their opportunities. And when they saw it, well, we want a tackle there to get themselves uh, the ball back at the line out. Alani Fuimano to get that one in. Oregon Sharks take that one down. Move it across field quick. Nice break up the middle of the field. Nice offload. Looking to get it again. It hits the ground, so it slows down just a little bit for Old Blue to get back there. Old Blue players trying to dig right over there. That's Aki Raymond. All across again for Oregon. Sharks, nice step there. Just steps right out of the tackle across the 22. Players can't hang on to him. Lucas Fleming trying to make the tackle, but Tony Fua is going to score for the Oregon Sharks. What a try. Yeah, we just had a lot of punch in their play there. You can see their intent to keep the ball alive. But when they had that opportunity, they just saw a gap. Look how calm he is right now. And then he turns on the footwork and he's through. And he's still had a lot of work to do. Two defenders around him. Blue, he's powering through. Now. Look how he switched now. arm there so he can get defending. And then it's that final leg drive and he makes sure that ball goes down. Wonderful play. 
Fleming, the University of Nebraska product, trying to knock that ball loose, but not getting it. Tough angle here for Oregon. It is not going to go, but 5-0, a good first state from the first two minutes by this team from the West Coast. Absolutely. It was direct. It was that pace. They moved the ball when it was time to move the ball. Slightly different to Old Blue's first possession, where it was a bit side to side. So it'd be interesting to see how both teams continue as this game develops. Sitama to kick us off with Bud Bay Barberi to the high school, went to American International College. He's from Olympia, Washington. AIC coached by T. Fletcher these days. Great programs going on there. Old Blue has the ball outside their 22. Into contact they go. Raymond played for any number of clubs. Very experienced sevens player in him. They get the ball to Michael St. Clair, but they haven't made much ground here. St. Clair looking for somebody to offload to, hanging on the ball. He is a great runner of the ball, good with ball in hand there in those close quarters. Here comes Raymond. Raymond looking for the space. Aki Raymond coming across. Aki Nola Raymond across the 22. Aki Nola. Raymond from Washington, D.C. It touches it down. Five points. Old Blue in a kickable position. Yeah, much better from Old Blue, and it all started with St. Clair, the veteran. Just look at the footwork here. He's just keeping himself alive. He doesn't surrender the tackle at all. He just keeps the ball moving by any way he possibly can. Wonderful stuff from the veteran. And then when he decides to pass, look at that. He moves it into space, two passes, and then this is where the hole opens up for the speedster, and he just lets the gas do the talking here. So that was much better from Old Blue. Aki, uh, as a young player, was really known for just flat out and out speed. And, uh, you know, over the years, his game has just continued to develop in every facet. Great defender, great around the breakdown, good all around player, Aki Raymond. Yes. Showing what he's known for right there is just pure gas. Absolutely. It's really important that you've got to be a well rounded player now at seven. It's gone over days where you can just be quick. You have to have other parts of your game, as you said. And we call it that rugby IQ, and he has it in abundance now. Mura to get us going again. What a kick, right at the 10 and the 15 there, right on the touchline. Tough one to take, but Satama's gonna wind up with that one. Satama to ball back to a retreating teammates. I just wanna clean this one up just a touch here. Lee Moana comes in to take that one. Oregon inside their own 22, looking to gain some ground. There's some space. Gets taken up eventually. Raymond didn't lower that one at the end. Nice break here. Penalty against good work for Old Blue. St. Clair, there's a veteran again. Fujimura one more time gets it going. Raymond gets that ball away to Braithwaite. Braithwaite moves it out to the wing. Can they get across with Fury? Fury does. Jake Fury from the famous Fury family, sister at Cat US Eagle, touches down a try. St. Clair was heavily involved then. Again, it'd be interesting to see that ruck again. It didn't look like there was a clear release, but the veteran, he knows what he's doing. He got on that ball instantly, got the turnover, and then Raymond put it through the hands. Maybe. So let's just watch here as he goes into the tackle. Number 16, the tackle assist, tackles here. Does he release? Oh, it's pretty tight. It's pretty tight, but he got away with it. He knew what he was doing, uh, but the rest is history. The points are on the board. Fair play. Thank you, no good, but Old Blue in the lead here. Just saw Aki Raymond hold that one Braithwaite as well, just giving Jake Fury a one-on-one -on -one opportunity to score that. Fujimura. Well, it looked to me like it was going backwards off his foot and it made it right down to that same spot again. A great restart merchant. This could be a line out to Old Blue off of it being knocked in touch by Oregon. Two great kicks there from Fujimura, the restarts. Look at the height. They landed essentially in exactly the same place, but threw Oregon off a little bit. They couldn't find it. All bounces out um, off an Oregon hand. And for Old Blue, get the throw in. Tokyo Native went to Rutgers University. Ball up to Old Blue, but it goes over the top. Well taken. Quick reaction there from Oregon. They're making a lot of ground across the 40 meter line. And this is a great opportunity for Tony Kapoa. And Kapoa is going to touch it down. Great work 
great individual awareness to just grab that ball and go. Absolutely wonderful. So miscue at the old blue line out. Just watch here and just the balance. He's a big man, but just look at that footwork there. And just once again, the in and out, the shimmy. He's got the fend going and he's got the pace to show it off. That is an athlete right there. But also, as we mentioned earlier, he's clearly got the rugby IQ around them as well. So that was just well worked and uh, took his opportunity really well. We can, we can talk later. Right. Thank you. Kick didn't let go. We're going to work our way into halftime here. We're going to step aside for a second. We'll be right back with second half action in a moment. I'm okay. Thank you, though. In. Out. In. Left one. Hold it. Out. Okay, let me say something first. When we started with the defense in the first, we were really connected for the first minute. Okay? They attacked, we played away from structure. Let's play as a unit, play as a team, stay connected. We got a game, boys, but this one we can win. Yeah. Let's yeah. take it to them. Yeah. Hey, we're going to kick left. What's the situation? Receiving. Okay. Receiving. We're receiving. We're receiving. We're receiving. No, no, hey. I already made the transaction. Oh, Just get a breath. Oh, get a breath. No, no, no. Push. I'm in. No, no, he's already put him off. Already hey, I'm in, push. All right? Hey, we're in this pocket, right? No more of that. Show us this is This is our fucking game. Yes, right? yeah? We need this yeah. one. Fucking 10. 12 10. 12 we 10, deep. boys. Yeah. Yeah. Fucking three tries. We keep that ball. Keep that ball. It's our game. Yeah. Yeah. It's that simple. Working. All right? Let's go. Let's go. All right, boys. Go. On, boys. Sharks on me. Sharks on three. One, two, three. Sharks. Sharks. Tony, heavy calm. Patrick, oh, Patrick, oh, Patrick, Patrick, just dog it, just dog it now. If you got like a, a minute or two, and we'll get that transaction back in. Welcome back. It is the USA Club Seven Championship here in Madison, Wisconsin. You see the Oregon Sharks take the field again, 12 to 10. Old Blue leads that Oregon team here in Pool F action. John Broker with the contact coach, Craig Wilson. And we really have a back and forth match here. Yeah, absolutely. Two teams very evenly matched. You feel that like Oregon's probably got a bit more power than Old Blue, but Old Blue's got a bit of pace on the edges. So it's really, it's really finely poised here. I'm looking forward to seeing how this uh, starts, but these seven minutes are going to fly by. Old Blue. Blue, ready? Set to kick off. Braithwaite set to get us underway. Braithwaite from Queens. Started to play Rugby USA flag, rugby programs, and a big take and a big break. It's a big speed. He's going to be hard to catch. They're just cutting off the angle here. There's a try coming. The Oregon Sharks. Bendy Carlton starts the second half in great flair. The Elon North Carolina native. And that's the high risk, high reward for those restarts will go high. Because if you don't compete and you don't get them, you've got all your front line from a defensive point of view up. So that means if it's a clean catch, exactly what happens here, a nice clean catch, you can see that they get footed, wrong footed the defense. And then it's all just about open field, which he races away. And that's two tries either side of half time off the um, set piece of Old Blue. So they're gonna be kicking themselves a bit. Mendy Carlton in his notes where he asked him about anything interesting from him said, when I was a child, I liked throwing rocks in the air and letting them hit me. So my parents bought me a hard bat. <laughs> there we are. Just thought I'd point that out, Craig. That's yeah. uh, one of the more interesting notes I saw throughout the weekend. <laughs> talk about a lot of people's pets, but people don't talk about, you know, hitting themselves in the head with rocks at all. Ball bounces back and forth off the Oregon kick. 15 to 12, Oregon is leading and we're gonna go in both directions here. Timothy Mamase is headed towards the line and he's gonna touch it down in the corner. Another lead change here at the USA Club Sevens. So it's exactly the same play what Oregon just scored from. This is time it's for Old Blue. You can see these contestable kicks. If they work, it's excellent, but it takes defenders out of the game. And as soon as that ball bounces in his hands, he just passes that first defender and he's try. So those two tries were identical, and that keeps this game very evenly matched. Masse with a good try there. Tough angle for the kick. We'll see if they can hit this one. And that one, no good. So Braithwaite will kick us off here again. 
It will be interesting to see if they change tactics on the kickoff. Do they go for the contestable kick, high risk, high reward, or do they go long? Although they'll give up possession, they'll get territory. So there's going to be some tactics coming into this game now. Short kick just goes 10, but it's taken by Oregon by Hui Moana. So they're going to keep it live and play at a try score right there. Moves it across. Does Mendy Carlton. Old blue players trying to fight this one to keep it up, but it's going to get to the ground. Ball back for Gabriel Smith. He moves it across field to Carlton. Nice break up the middle of the field. Gonna have to get some players in here, and they do, but ball spilled forward in there. Gonna be a scrum here just at the 10 minute mark for Old Blue with a two point lead. Yeah, good defensive pressure there. They're just really managing that sideline touch, the passive touch, and they did great there. And it was all about the competition at the breakdown. Lots of pressure on, forces a knock on, and a midfield scrum. Old blue, a little pressure coming on there, but scrum went straight up according to the referee. We're gonna go back here. We'll reset it. Old Blue gets it in again. Big battle coming on here. Ball looked like it's coming back. Looked like it was coming to Oregon, but it comes back to Old Blue. Have to do a little work here. That's DeMonte Noble. DeMonte Noble, a very experienced USA Sevens player, but that one's knocked on after the pass. They come back here, scrum for the Sharks. Just a couple minutes left to go. Good attacking opportunity for them to make another change in this game. Yeah, you've got to give credit to the Oregon scrum. They put a lot of pressure on Old Blue. So when they did get possession, they were running from deep. And DeMonte Noble did really well. But remember, it was after all that running, they were still behind the gain line. So the defense was just waiting for them. That forced the error. Well, to put this one in. From Luffy, Luffy, Samoa. Plays a bit of cricket as well. We're playing here at the National Sevens. Sitama puts his considerable power in there. Nick Taylor takes the ground. Sitama moves it across. A little wrap back around into the hands of Juwan Johnson. They get it out to the wing. Break here. Going to have to come back in. Did that go forward? That one did. So we're going to go back here. Aki Raymond's going to have hold of this ball. Aki Raymond had a knock-on advantage. Aki Raymond just weaving his way through, looking for a teammate. Could be a bit of trouble here. Have to release is all blue and have done. Work to come back around and get him out of trouble is Franklin. Franklin moves that one across. Little pop back up, ball rolls towards the touchline. And we're gonna come back, it's going to be a knock on a scrum here for Oregon. Just had to see what happened. Yeah, it's just in the tackle, old, old Blue are just losing that ball. Their skill execution right now when they need it most is just letting them down. Now that's going to frustrate head coach Sam Windsor and assistant coach Steve Lewis. Just those skill execution is really bringing Old Blue down right now. But credit to Oregon to put themselves in a position to really pressure the skills. And so this is just a wonderful battle with two, two points in it, with two minutes to go. This could go either way. Yeah, there is just a minute to go here. And after this, we have Schuylkill River versus Tennessee Elite. Denver Barbos versus Mystic River. And we're going to switch back to some women's games there. The women's brackets here at the USA Club Sevens. Highly entertaining, as have these men's. into the hands of the waiting back line of this Oregon Sharks. They decided to go long with that one. Very little time left. We've got Aki Raymond chasing back onto it in the try zone. Just not sure that Aki Raymond hands off long, comes out of the line. Yeah, and Aki Raymond might have just wanted to hoof that one away, but Old Blue have a hold of this ball. Some runners, even in the try zone. Chimura is going to go for the kick this time. 
I would be putting that one in touch, mm. but there's a big whistle from the referee back there. Not heard though. Well, now it's heard. I was hearing things for a second there, Craig, but we are going to come back. We'll see what the original call was. This is a penalty against Old Blue. This would be tremendous for the Sharks. But it looks like it is a penalty against Oregon. Going to come back to Old Blue with a two-point lead. And it was interesting decision-making here with the game in the balance to kick the ball away with no chases, but maybe he knew he had the advantage and he was trying his luck. Um, but it's a penalty now, they've got a chance to reset and maybe kill this game off. Now with just 10 seconds left, so let's see what they decide to do. They're gonna run this one backwards. Keep this ball in play. Player in a little bit on angle there from Oregon. We'll see if this comes to a penalty, and it does. This should be the end of it right here. They should be able to just... Tap this one and get rid of it. Jimura does just that. And it finds touch. That's the end of this one. Old Blue over the Oregon Sharks in this matchup. That's it for me for a little bit. We're going to switch over. It is going to be Liz Entwistle working with Craig for Scuba River Tennessee Elite. There are a few games coming up. Denver Barbo's Mystic River. A little break and we'll have a whack for North Shore. I will see you back for the remainder of the day. After that, we're going to go down to the Lance on the sidelines. We are down on the field. I am here with Coach Slam of Old Blue of New York. You guys just handle business. Squeak by an Oregon team who's been fighting all day. Tell me about this win and what you look forward to going into the quarterfinals. Uh, Steve uh, Lewis, the assistant coach, obviously very experienced sevens coach. And we get through today, that gets us into tomorrow. So that was the first job. So hopefully that job's done now. Uh, shift our focus to Belmont, third up in this match. We're probably the heavyweights so far, what we're seeing today. Uh, but proud of the boys, you know, we're fighting hard. Uh, we're not putting together the cleanest performances. We're not the complete package just yet. Um, we've been together for a good eight, nine weeks this summer. So it's going to start to click this afternoon. And then uh, we'll go into tomorrow, hopefully fresh and, and ready to do business. You've had a lot of good work from Mike St. Clair, Jamaican international cap player. Did a lot of good things, turnovers, creating tries. Tell me about the leader of this team, one of the captains and things he's been doing for this team today. Yeah, Mikey's, Mikey's service to Old Blue and rugby in the U.S. is, just, is, is probably unmatched, definitely up in the Northeast. So. Uh, he leads not just by uh, by his words and his actions, but, but how he performs on the field. It was class acting that first half today. Absolutely, Coach Sam. Good luck the rest of the day. Handle business. We're going back up to, up top to you guys. Welcome back to Field One. I am Liz Entwistle alongside Craig Wilson, and we continue on with the men's second round of pool play action. Coming up next, our perennial sevens darling, Schoolkill River. They're coming in as the number three team, taking on Tennessee Elite. Tennessee Elite, their debut in the tournament, wearing the blue, going from right to left across your screen, won 14 to five, upsetting multiple time national champion Chicago Lions in their opening round matchup, while Schoolkill narrowly fell 14 to 12 to whack. Will kill in action, securing the ruck. Looking to go full bore in their second game of tournament action. The offload, the quick behind the pack pass. Apologies if some of their roster numbers do not match what we have. We will try to get updates as best possible. We see the knock on call ball in the hands of number six, Peter Mulville, and we're going to see our first scrum of the game. So Tennessee started off like they did in the first game, excellent defense. They were putting on a lot of pressure. They were just not biting onto tackles they didn't need to. But when they decided to make the tackle, they were all in. Great pressure. They got the ball back for a midfield scrum. You see school kill on the attack. The carry going forward by Mitch Benoit in the number eight. Gets the offload going outside. Kyle Hegarty and he gets it to the corner. School kill strike first. Five to all nothing came coming off of the set piece. Yeah, it all came from the defensive pressure in the scrum. So kudos to the big guys up front. Putting on a lot of pressure there. Oh, and also great work from number four. Wonderful. And then it was just efficient movement just look how they're keeping that ball alive once it's going into space draw and pass and then one more just lets the uh, the ball do the work and all coaching adage and it gets over in the corner it's 
see the long conversion attempt. No whistle blown. We've seen this in the past. Keep an eye on number 12, Danny Giannascoli. He's the one that slotted the kick that put school kill through into the 2019 seven semifinals down in Kansas City. That one earned him a spot straight on to USA 7's camp. He's the one with the ball in hand, attempting the restart. Looks like he's barely getting it 11 meters downfield. School kill gets the slap down a little bit of old school sevens. Recover the ball in the hands of Brian Keown. Switching fields and coming back to the middle of the field is Peter Mulville. Peter Mulville ball in hand. Offense looks to be attacking through him. And look at that so quick to secure the ruck. School kill pushing the pace behind the back from Vinoy into the hands of Keown. They are flooding all of their support channels and don't stop. See the yellow card shown to Tennessee. Once we get a break in the action, we'll go back to what that was called for. School kill diving down the try lines, breaking out their dancing shoes. School kill again, Vinoy looking for Keown. We see the shooting defense from Tennessee and a break in the action, fast and furious. Absolutely, School Kill are keeping the ball alive very well. Also, speed of play. It looks like the yellow card, Liz. It was a knockdown in the tackle. Wasn't intentional, but you know in sevens, you're going to get that yellow card there. And that puts Tennessee under a bit of pressure. But they're doing the right thing now at this scrum. Just taking Coach. a bit of time off to give themselves a chance to get that yellow card. Fine. Sin being down as quickly as possible. Set. It is one of my favorite things. Referees cannot be the judge of intent. They can only be the judge of the outcome. Right now, the outcome is that Tennessee has secured the scrum. They're going to walk it back. Again, playing short one man, six on seven, looking for a hole. Nearly breaks through the middle of the field. Benoit was there to get just enough of a stop. Eases up the pace, but now Tennessee reloading towards the outside. Tennessee... Seems to have secured the ruck, but look at this counter out of school kill. The go board by Benoit, and now referee giving the instruction, leaving the ball. Tennessee able to secure, looking to redistribute, moving towards the middle of the field. Sometimes you go backwards to go forwards. You see a little bit of a walk, the skip, the hop, and the step. And Tennessee with some space towards this near sideline. Tennessee down one man, able to let the ball do the work. Excellent sevens played, and it is Shane on, Waldrick going over the line for Tennessee Elite. How about that? How about that? Calm and composed. Just watch here in the midfield, just assessing the options, having a chat, and then turns on the little goose step, and then watch this transfer of a ball, then the offload, and then it's beautiful support play, and then the speed does the rest but that was very calm and composed as you said with a, a man in the bin as well they managed that time excellently well normally you're pretty happy if you don't give up a try while you have a player in the same bin to score one is even better we should be evens back seven on seven might be some seconds left to go here on that tennessee yellow card so we'll see how much time they can eat up with the restart This Tennessee team making a strong debut in the tournament. As we mentioned, Spook Hill River, a team that always finds itself into the semifinals. Hard workers, scrappy as can be. But Tennessee already knocked down multiple time national champions, the Lions, and they're looking to do the same. School kill deep inside of their own territory, ball in hand, looking for that skip to the outside. A gorgeous pass, left it in space, and look at this pace. School kill, quick to answer. Peter Mulville going to go the distance. Letting the ball float out there. What a distribution. Gorgeous sevens. As you said, absolutely beautiful sevens. Just how they're moving the ball. And what's striking me right now between Schuylkill and uh, Tennessee is just the efficiency in their movements. Just look how they're calm and composed on the ball. That is beautiful passing. And it's just given their players, like Mulville, who can do danger on the wing, chances to do that. And that pass was excellent. And then he breaks away. Once he's in behind, there's no one going to stop him there. But that was four passes across the length of uh, the width of the field. Opens up that opportunity. Seven's at its best. One thing that I really like about that play and that pass too is that Mulder was able to take on Shane Waldrick, who just scored the try and burned out Thank his you. legs. When we look at tactical matchups on the field, we can look at size mismatches, speed mismatches there. So we just had Waldrick gas himself, scoring that try for Tennessee. You have all that adrenaline, all the emotion, all the hype. And it was the man that he was able to beat for school to get that try on the board. Absolutely right. Brilliant insight there, Liz. 
Janice Foley with a gorgeous kickoff, well taken by Tennessee. Tennessee now moving the ball inside of their 22. Patience and execution again. Solid chase from behind Jabari Johnson making the tackle by school kill. Tennessee looking up, looking left, loving their footwork and their field awareness. Again, here with a little bit of the changes in directions, a little stop, start, stutter, step, something I never had. Tennessee. Moving again the near sideline. Here's a try score. Waldrick. This time taken down. Jabari Johnson again, a defensive machine. Number one getting the job done. Tennessee. Looking to go right. Nothing is there. Switching fields. Coming to the left. Near sideline again. Cutting back inside. Good edge play. Love the switch. Tennessee through multiple phases of sevens. And look at this, Tennessee. He's the man that started the try earlier. Now that's tomorrow. Petinari going over the line for Tennessee. Patience paying off. Oh, Efficiency at play there, Craig. Absolutely. It's just that what I'm enjoying about this, if I'm going to use a tennis analogy, yeah. Skuko like Federer and Tennessee are like Nadal, you know, different styles, but they both get the work done. Very physical, moving the ball around here for Tennessee, just winning the ruck, doing the basics well. And then how we're moving that ball away, offload, and then just a wonderful try to finish it off. Back and forth action, here we go into the half. We've got a game on our hands. Tennessee and School Kill, back for more in a moment. Hey Liz, can you hear me? Yes, so you did you say, I've, I've been worried about saying Tennessee's team names. Are the numbers right or are they off? Welcome back to the second half of action here on Field One, School Hill River, kicking off at Tennessee Elite. Janice Scully trying to thread that 10 meter kick went 10. off. All right, went 10. Blue line out. Black, take a step. Are we having a line out? Yes, black. It's dead. It's dead. Did go 10. Line out to come. 12 to 12. Back and forth action. Tennessee on the throw, school kill looking to disrupt, and Tennessee taking advantage of the defensive lift by school kill just to take the ball straight up the guts and into them. Tennessee, they've been such a threat sideline to sideline, and here they try to go again. School kill making the tackle, the sideline making the stop. Well, Tennessee yes, certainly asks questions oh, as they're going quick here, Liz. So back onto the field, school kill ball in hand. Good heads up play. He's on the way. Two teams skilled in the game of sevens. Quick penalty and a quick reaction here by Tennessee. Come on. Looking for that offload back inside. And look at this school kill. So quick to counter. School kill. Taking advantage of a bit of a miscue, flooding that passing channel. And school kill river going over the line. Number two, Daniel Deal seals the deal with another five points for school kill. 
It'd be interesting to see from this penalty if they were back 10 or not, because it looked like there was a bit of a turnover there, but whether they played them within the 10, but it's the referee's decision. is deemed if we're just going to watch back here, penalty's given. It's a quick play from Tennessee. Does he play him within 10? I think he might do there, but the referee deems play on, races away. Doesn't matter now, Scoot will get the important score. Absolutely, always playing to the whistle and looking at smart fouls. That high risk, high reward doesn't always come just from the attempt at the intercept. School kill gets the points and they strike first in the second half. It has been back and forth action. Plenty of time here left to play on field one. One try, let's go! School kill lining up again for the restart. We see a new kicker with the ball in hand, Brian Keown. Five school kill players to the right. Kicker staying back to sweep. Tennessee looking to make something happen. There could be a hole open with the shoot from the school kill defense, but instead Tennessee just barely slowed down. Looking to re reload and restart. Tennessee <laughs> using some footwork. When we go forward, not releasing on the tackle. It's fine. Or sorry, not releasing the ball classic. in the tackle. School kill ball. Yeah, classic sweeper play there. Just waited for that opportunity when that half break was right. made and there was a tackle. Yeah, Another sweeper there. Brian Keown was just waiting for him. Got the turnover. School kill into a wave of blue jerseys. Numbers to the right, space out to the left, and they're still threading it on the far side of the field. Getting some movement in action through the hands of Ben Jasson and Tennessee with the intercept. Tennessee, the race is on. The sweeper coming across the field. We'll see if we get another classic sweeper moment. Tennessee getting that clock to cry down. And now it's Tennessee equaling the scoreline. 17-17, converting to come. Tell you what, what a game here. Just great defensive awareness. It starts from an onside position. Just open play here, so it's okay. We're just moving that ball around. It looks like for all money, school kill, we're in a great position. Seconds, Doesn't take a look to where he's passing. No off sideline, and then he races away. Puts himself in a brilliant position. My word, that was a good try. What a battle. We saw school kill trying to force that ball into a lot of blue jerseys and a lot of space, and that was good heads up play there. I like that by Tennessee. Would love to maybe see school kill pull out and redistribute the ball because we had about 55 meters of space towards this near sideline. Something to think on as we advance in this game. Now it's Tennessee gone ahead, 19 to 17, with about three and a half minutes left to play. That was a big kick there from the sideline. Huge moment in this game. The restart by Tennessee, ensuring it goes 10 and then some. School kill up in the air, able to recover. School kill securing the ruck. And again, moving towards this far sideline. School kill splitting the defense. School kill weaving in and out, trying to beat the sweeper. Sweeper buys just enough time for defense to catch up, making the tackle from behind or making the contact from behind. And now a line out to come. Good scrambled defense there. Man, Greg. Man. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, there's a lot going on here. But what I love from the sweeper. Blue. Okay, your sweeper wants to be making 18 tackles, blue. But even if 18. they don't, they want to be slowing down that runner. And that's exactly what happened there. Sweeper didn't make the there. tackle, but that allowed the scrambled defense to get sorry, back that's number and 12 really that's get a positive outcome off. for the defensive play. It just looks like Skookil now under a bit of pressure. You can see him. No, sweeper didn't off. get him, but a lot I mean, of pressure. Right. Skookil just kind of throwing the ball okay, away a little thank bit you. now. Uh, possession is absolutely vital in sevens. Time on. Absolutely right there, Craig, on that one with the ball of the sweep. But we Play often talk advantage. about being broken in defense and the job of the defender who was broken to make the tackle and chase them down. School kill does Backward. enough, though, to recover ball in play. Backward. We hear an advantage being awarded. Advantage no more. A couple passes away from the contact area and from the situation. School kill now dancing towards the middle of the field, looking for a break. Can't quite get there. Tennessee scrappy on defense. School kill. No. Taken down five meters from the goal line. What a crucial moment here. 90 Let's seconds go. to play. Five meter first. penalty. The tap is taken. The space is over. Can he get it down? And the try awarded. School kill River answering when it matters most. A minute 10. So It'll be 40 seconds after big the kick. Decisions. I felt that Tennessee might have had the opportunity and probably had to the steal there. The if we look back at that replay to get the ball back. 
and maybe there was a knock-on in the build-up to that play as well. So a few decisions potentially going their way. Just as we look back on this, looks like he was on the ball there. In sevens, seconds. you probably think that's turnover quite quickly. And then he deems a few seconds later that he went off his feet. Not sure I agree with that goal, but it doesn't matter. The referee's the judge. Quick tap penalty, sees the space, gets the try. So much work yeah, have, being done on the field to, to try to stop that first seconds, try right. and then just being caught barely unawares. School kill, good heads up. I'm seeing where the space is. We've got about 25 seconds left to play. This should be our final restart again. We, the people, the people of rugby there on the back of the school kill jerseys. Tennessee up 24 to 19. 10 seconds on the game clock. The try score with a hitch step towards this near sideline. Tennessee in a battle at the rough. School kill. Playing the nine. Looking to counter, the referee gave the clear instruction then to no. leave, leave a penalty right for Go sure. Ahead. Tennessee moving the ball away from the contact area. Fighting, getting to ground, establishing that offside line with the ruck. Tennessee again, redistributing sideline to sideline. They must maintain possession. Back here, back here. Back here. must lower those back tackles. Tackle. Tennessee again, numbers matched evenly on that far sideline. Love that switch back to the middle of the field, keeping the ball alive, looking towards support. Schoolkill patient in defense. Tennessee again, look at that bit of a dummy play there on the edge, anticipating the switch. He goes for the keep, but well read there. Schoolkill number 10. Jesse Calcarati getting the tackle to touch, and now we have extra heated moments here in a tight, tight match. And there it will end, 24 to 19, School Kill River victorious over Tennessee. This means that this pool is all up for grabs. We'll see who comes out of Pool G. Back for more action here on Field One in just a moment. I'm Liz Entwistle alongside Craig Wilson. the action here on field one Liz and alongside Craig Wilson we are rolling into pool H where the Denver Barbarians are taking on Mystic River we saw Mystic in action earlier in the day a team highly composed of New England talent the only non New England college student there Shane Dempsey in the number six jersey at a University of Arizona Denver Barbarians loaded with heaps of talent veterans on the seventh stage Denver, the number four seed coming into the tournament. Mystic River, the number 12. Just waiting on kickoff here in a moment. All right, Matt, can you hear me? Sybil, can you hear me? Matt, can you test your radio? I got you. Can you hear me? I'm just taking over for one. 
Perfect. Can you put this over my back? Denver Barbarians are victorious in their opening round a matchup, currently sitting at 1 0 yeah. in Pool H. Meanwhile, it was Mystic River earlier in the day. Ready, boys? Falling in their matchup to the St. Louis Bombers. <laughs> Mickey Bateman lining up with the restart or the start for Denver. Kinging it deep downfield, taken just outside of the 22. Mr. River back, in, in, back inside. Mystic taken down, quick off the ruck, and quickly spinning the ball wide. Mystic into contact. Denver looking. Right there. Seeking the penalty call, and instead the penalty to Mystic, we heard not releasing on the Denver tackler. Mystic going to maintain possession. Looking towards its near side, the numbers are there, as are all of the Denver defenders. Off the base of the ruck, looking left, now realigning towards the far side of the field. We see Denver in this defensive shift, giving up a little bit of a soft sub line. And this time able to make the tackle rather than forcing the ball and opening up a gap. Mystic, scrappy with the retention. Mystic driving forward and now finally opening up with a bit of space downfield. Another penalty against Denver. Mystic River looking to capitalize a few quick penalties against the Barbarians to start the game. One minute and a half in. And now Mystic River able to break midfield. Patient play through possession, ball being held, the player being held up, able to get to the ground. Ruck is formed, and Mystic River again redistributing. And look at this depth. Each pass going on a five meter trajectory back and across, trying to buy themselves space downfield. Denver again, so patient, so experienced. And finally, Denver, ball in hand, going to be their first offensive possession of the game. We're going to have another second penalty called. I believe Mystic not back 10. Denver with a quick tap. Looking to weave their way across the field, switching direct. Mystic is not buying that. So patient on their defensive set. Denver. Denver again. Denver finds the hole. And Denver is going to finish. So one for one efficiency with the ball in hand. We'll wait just a moment here for David Hightower to dot that ball down. An experienced player came out of the Beltway Regional originally and now doing it for the Barbarians. You can just see how they're moving the ball away, just waiting for the opportunities. It didn't look like it was too much on, but look at that step of that rush defender. That's all it takes. One defender to come out of the line. That means a gap opens somewhere. Now, if you've got the footwork and pace to get through it, that's the hole you take straight under the post. Should be an easy seven points. And seven out of here, we heard the whistle blown as the conversion kick is good. So a bit of a slower start than we might expect in this sevens tournament. Both teams being patient again, teams trying each other in these pools. This men's division has seen quite a few upsets in the tournament so far. Teams wanting to ensure that they book their spot through into tomorrow's cup quarterfinals. This is the second round of action, Mickey Bateman. Picture perfect there on the restart. Down into Mystic's hands, then to Denver, given up again. Back and forth action, bit of a contest there around the breakdown. Mystic, able to reset. And again, passing back deep inside of their 22, looking to go back to go forward, strategizing with their exit. Confident and secure playing so deep in their own territory. Mystic. Again, this redistribution now starting from back at their own five meter hash. Denver coming away with another key turnover. Denver now inside of the Mystic 22. Able to poach that ball from the ruck, supported in defense. Mickey Bateman, looking for support options, finds Hightower. Hightower walking it back, gets the restart. Hightower then, stiff arm right, stiff arm again. Deep Hightower 
Looking to go back over the line. He gives it up and the player is there. Liam wins for the Denver Barbarians. Now two for two, ball in hand. Efficiency, Craig. Really are, and what Denver are doing slightly differently to Mystic is they're playing much more on the gain line. When they decide to have a go, they're really starting to play right on the gain line and return on the power, exactly what happens here. It's like he couldn't be touched. He's moving the ball around, he's, he's just making sure he's just difficult, great balance in his running and making sure, that as all good players do, Liam Wynn is in their support off of a great offload and good try, but the thing is for Mystic, they're playing so deep, Liz, that it's really difficult if you're not making the gain line that you're just going to lose territory and the defense can swallow you up. We will have to see if they adjust their tactics or if they stick to their structure. Teams that can be innovative and teams that can be reactive to what is being shown on the field often have success. But if you've played one set pattern or what works in the Northeast, it may not work for the West. Bateman again. Split numbers, both to the left and to the right. Turned towards this near sideline. We see the lift, and this time Denver able to recover again. Is this going to be three for three? Denver cannot be stopped with the ball in hand. Liam Wynn going in again. What an Beautiful interesting first place. half of rugby. <laughs> Absolutely, and you can't be a score straight from kickoff. It just takes great skill execution. All starts from the kicker. Look at the height on the ball, but it's not so far. It's only like 11 meters. And then the jumpers get it all wrong, and he just straight into the uh, arms, and he's just through. Just a wonderful sight to see scoring straight from a restart. A little bit of deja vu from that Oregon game earlier. We saw them trading tries off the kickoff based on the challenges in the air. If you're going to deploy that aerial game, you want to be sure that you're also covering in the case of an aerial miss. In that case, there was no other option for Mystic once they committed two players to securing that ball. And Denver with a three-try lead on three touches. Some Fijian-style statistics there. Nikki Bateman again. He's picking his spot. He is teasing the ball where he wants it to go. This time, Mystic able to recover. Three at the ruck. Ball is secured. Mystic, again, playing it deep. Inside of the 22, 10 seconds left to play here in this first half of action. And it's Mystic with a line break. Mystic streaking down that far sideline. Backwards, backwards. Looking to reset. Ball is backwards. Play on, says our referee. So it's Mystic on the go, this time with a bit of pace. Conceding the penalty, Denver 17 to nothing. Time up on our video clock. Bateman with the tap, the tip to touch, and it is Denver going in 17 to nothing ahead at the half. to recent attack right they want to have a crack at that ball so whoever's going in fight to keep your feet until you hear that guy right there fight 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 then we get ourselves down there yeah. right we can claw our fucking way back into this we can claw our way back into yeah, this all right we just gotta fucking believe here's that backside on the that they've had two tries just cutting back against the grain yeah. bring it up from the rock that first pillar that strong side pillar should be just inside the first man as soon as the ball's away from rock yeah air goes up as well that's where that try came okay Yep. You gotta break that first tackle. Hey, hey, fuck it, boys, we got this. We got three tries. Three, three tries and a half. Let's go. Hey, dogs on three. One, two, three, go! Let's go, boys. We'll bring some. Yo, yo, yo. Drink some water. Drink some water. Give it an effort. Take some water. Coming back here for the second half of action on field one. Denver currently leading Mystic 17 to nothing. We heard our coaches' remarks here at halftime talking about the speed of threes. Craig. Thoughts on that and thoughts on that adjustment and reinforcement? 
Yeah, I think adjustment for me for Mystic is just been a bit more on the gain line, just trying to ask a few more questions right now. Because for Denver, defensively, they're doing a great job, but they're just filling that space. So if Mystic are going to play deep, they need to find one on one, so a little bit quicker to try and get through. But as you heard in the huddle, they absolutely believe if you're from Mystic. As you can see from Denver, three touches, three tries, nothing saying that can't happen for Mystic as well, but they need to get into early because Denver are looking pretty calm right now. I think you're absolutely right, Craig. We see very calm play out of Denver. They're not really pushing too much. A few early penalties, but making the most of their chances. If you're Mystic, we can't play too calm. We know that they're safe and secure, holding that ball inside their half of the field. But we've got to see that line break like we saw them end the half with if they're going to get back into this match. Denver with their kick receipt deep inside of their own 22. Mystic, they've got their three there around the ball. Denver able to redistribute. Denver. Numbers here towards this near sideline, and there's a third kind of hiding on the sideline as well. I believe that's Liam Wynn, who's been our two-time try scorer for the Barbarians thus far. Denver fighting to get to ground. The tackle is made, and it is Denver once again on the go. It's Campbell Johnstone. And Denver now with a little bit of a cheeky chip downfield, and look at this, a gorgeous bounce of speed is there. Denver, oh, he goes over the ball! Looking to kick it forward, so this gives Mystic a chance to recover and a chance to perhaps counter. But Denver does enough to slow down the play. Heads up by Denver, and Denver quick again with the ball in hand. Look at this, they've got number C outside. There's one Mystic defender. They see if they can pin him in. Mystic able to scramble and recover, realign the defense, but just a bit too much here as Denver weaves its way. There is Campbell Johnston in the number four jersey, getting across the line. Denver looking very sharp, both sides of the ball. This try all comes from great defensive pressure. Yes, it was a kick through, but they put pressure on at the ruck to get that ball back, and then it was just moving it into space. And they're just drawing pass really well, just giving the right men who have got the tools to finish these tries. Look at that step from the big man, really pushes it through, but it all came from that defensive pressure to get the turnover at the ruck. That led to the try. So Denver getting it done, turnovers being key, heads up play, but so composed with the ball in hand. Now four offensive touches, four offensive sequences, and they've come away with four tries. This is going to serve them well in the tournament, and this is a team that's made it to many national championship matches, not only in Club 7s, Rugby Town 7s, in the whole USA 7s series setup as well. And look at that, a beautiful overfed view. And now Mystic taking the ball at pace. Mystic with some burners, Mystic looking to get their first points on the board. They're inside of the Denver 22, and it is Mystic River finally dotting down the try on the fly, so fluid with that kick receipt. Something has happened. Looks like a knock on as he was putting the ball down there, Liz. Just as we look back at this, so for all money he's through, and just when he's about to put the ball down, there's the knock on. And that kind of sums up the game for Mystic, unfortunately. Did everything right, just the final touch. Uh, yeah, he's not going to want to see that one again. Very unfortunate. Heartbreaking after such a display of athleticism and pace on the ball. If you're Mystic, you're itching for a turnover here at the scrum. Denver again, though. This will be their, their fifth offensive possession. Bateman puts the ball in, gets the quick scoop up. Denver again, look at this little shimmy of a step taking it around the corner. You see the offload back inside that, oh no, pass, it pays off. Oh yes, Denver still have the ball. Denver with the skip pass towards the outside. A little bit of toying with his defender there, cuts in, cuts out, cuts right back up the middle. Denver now on the break. Denver looking to go 80 meters downfield. Look at this. Now I know for a fact that's not Lucatani because Lucatani is a second row that came out of Golden Gate originally. So credit number 10 for Denver. Our numbers don't match, so we'll just refer to the team as it is. Well, look at this. Look at how this play originated, Craig. Yeah, it all came from the offload. He was running down a blind alley, but those little soft hands there. And what I like about this is the vision and then the mispass and the execution. And then it's the step and then it's the sustained pace to keep carrying him away. And what I like about Denver, they look a very balanced team. When it's time to mix it, physically they can. They've got the skill execution to move the ball around and they've got the pace to finish off tries. They look a very, very well balanced team. Uh, and that's kudos to their coaching and the players who are putting in a lot of effort to put their best foot forward. 
love the effort on that break and the smallest thing, his support line player cut back towards the other side when he saw how the ball was being carried and drew defense with him. That opened up even more of a gap with that line break up the middle. The littlest things, Denver is doing everything right. They're going to be hard to stop. The kick goes just 11 meters downfield. Mystic River on the recovery. See the ball in hand. We see a bit of a shoulder duck. Denver looking to contest the ruck. It is off. Mystic realigning. Denver coming up in defense. A shallow bit of a line. Fighting for rights for the ball. They don't have the rights to that one. Mystic River with the quick tap. Looking to go again. Just a steep depth on this far side of the field. Mystic looking to launch forward. Mystic. Takes the bump and keeps going. Mystic River, look at that offload, the timing, perfection. Now can they capitalize Mystic River on the go, takes the angle towards the inside. This time the try is dotted down and Mystic River, after all this effort, all this work, gets the ball down via Patrick Brennan. Yeah, great character from the team. I love the bump, good strength there. And we mentioned earlier about the support. It was a good line break and it was in, and you can see he put two hands down to make sure they scored this time, but great character for Mystic. And look, obviously the game is lost, but the weekend's not. So they finished on a high there, and fair play. And I think we're still gonna have more opportunity in this game to get the ball back and just leave this game with a bit of momentum. That's gonna be key for Mystic now. The Barbarians just wanna see the timeout, secure the win and move on. We hear the double whistle, time's off. An errant ball on the field. When play resumes, 51 seconds will have left to play. Denver leading 31 to seven here in this men's pool H match. Again, Denver 1-0 on the tournament so far. will advance to 2-0 and almost assuredly through to the cup quarterfinals. Mystic River dropped their earlier matchup, but all to play for when it comes to momentum. We talk about the cup quarterfinals tomorrow. We have the bowl quarterfinals as well. And the scrum to come. I don't think Denver are going to be in a rush here, Liz. Just taking out the time. Mystic as well. They, they kind of feel a little bit deflated, but there's so much more to go in this tournament. It's just really important that momentum is a really funny thing. When you've got it, it's excellent. And when you haven't, you've got to do everything you can to wrestle it back. And that try there for Mystic will give them a something to, to hang their hat on. But I think we've got to credit them that they've looked a very balanced team today. I see a contest at the scrum. A strong whistle blown. So similar to the end of the first half, we have Mickey Bateman again. Ball in hand. He's going to set the ball down, get the tap, kick to touch, and that'll do it all she wrote. Denver has written their way into the cup quarterfinals. 31-7 over Mystic. 2-0 on the day in fine form. Craig Wilson will be back for more in just a moment. I am here with the captain of the Denver Bar Barbarians who handle business yet again, 2-0. Alex, tell me, these guys are playing at a at a wave we expected. Look like they're handling business. Tell me about this group and what you expect going into the third. I, I'm super happy with how we performed so far. We're really excited. We put a lot in this summer, a lot of work, so we're just trying to back our fitness, back our systems, and we're looking forward to the third match of the game. This Denver, t no, no. This Denver team has had great success in recent memories. It seems like you're keeping that going. What, what, what about this team keeps you so successful in these tournaments? Uh, we've been super fortunate. We've had a, a core group of guys that have been around for the last few years, so we keep getting the opportunity to build together. And then we've got the, the best co coaching staff in the nation, hands down, for sure. So uh, it's just a super good opportunity for us and pleasure to play with all these guys. 
Good luck in your third game and the quarterfinals. You guys are handling business. Thank you. Appreciate it. We're down on the field, Next Level Rugby, USA Sevens Championships. Back up to you guys up top.
Welcome back. We are here on field one for the final round of the women's club sevens matchups. We have Chicago North Shore in the game going from right to left across your screen, taking on WAC. Both teams undefeated on the day. This is a rematch of last year's Cup semifinals. North Shore in action. Ball recovered on the field. Just Jombrowski going over the ball. Apologies here. We started just a tad early, getting our feet again. The ball restarted. We see Wack back in action. Rook secured, Emily Barber looking outside, finds Emily Prentice, and then we get the little loop around by Kendra Young. The ball is passed forward, North Shore with the scrum. Even in those open uh, yeah. few minutes there, Liz, you can see we've got really strong teams here, both going at it, so this is gonna be, <laughs> You could even see this game being potentially in the final. This is how exciting this one is and how evenly matched they are. Fine. Indeed, Set. Craig. This was the pool of depth. Three of the four semifinalists from last year's ended up here in pool B. Both teams undefeated. North Shore on the attack. Victorious in the scrum. The strong carry from Emma Farnan. Taken down by Ann Peterson. Number 17 jersey for WAC. North Shore reset. Pretty shallow in terms of their passing lanes and their depth. And we see a bit of a bobble with the ball in hand, knocked on, scrum to whack. North Shore looking to be a little bit more direct in their play there. You can see they're really taking it up to the whack defensive line, uh, which is good. But unfortunately, just uh, in the tackle, just trying to get that offload in, too much pressure, it went down. And this gives a wonderful like, opportunity for whack to launch their attack and really get a foothold in this game. It's really interesting. These two teams do match up so well. WAC is a team that is very fleet on their feet, and maybe not the biggest team in the tournament in times, terms of size and strength, but they are a team that is so quick and has knowledge. Nikki Kenyon putting the ball into the scrum, quickly recovers, pressure by Dombrowski, but still gets the pass off Peterson. We see the loop coming, the one, two, one, moving around the outside. Kendra Young, ball in hand, North Shore. Emma Farnan looking to keep the ball alive and on the field, the ball either taken into touch or passed forward in the attempt at the offload. Either way, Rack's gonna come yeah. away with possession, scrambling on defense, getting the job done. Yeah, defense from both teams is winning so far. No real clear opportunities for either attack. That's testament to the defensive work that's going on. Uh, so watch that maybe deteriorate as fatigue starts to kick in. But again, a scrum's a good opportunity to launch. It's going to be a free kick for sure. We have the early drive from North Shore. Nikki Kangan puts the ball down, takes a quick tap. Prentice working the ball outside again. That's Kangan with another touch. Finds Holly Dieters. Out to Kendra Young. Kendra Young cuts back towards the inside. She evades one tackle, evades another, keeping her feet and goes over the line. So Wack is going to strike first. Again, the winner of this match will top pool B. Both teams already booked their spots in tomorrow's cup quarterfinals. And Wack making the most, moving the ball far and going over for the try. Yeah, good pressure at the scrum. They won the free kick and it was about then speed of play because the attack had to then instantly go into defense. That means they weren't really necessarily set to close down the space. And then they moved the ball out wide to Kendra Young, bit of a step, got over and got the wonderful try. Conversion kick is good. Whack leading seven to nothing. We are about three minutes into this opening half of play. A player down on the field going to get some medical attention. A long two day tournament here yep, in the heat of summer in the Midwest. Not the easiest of conditions to play in. Time's off. North Shore Time's off. earlier in the day, victorious over San Diego 26 to 12. They were victorious over Little Rock 27 to 5. Similarly, Whack over San Diego, a tighter match 17 to 12, and then open it up against Little Rock with a 38 to 5 win in their first game of the day. In last year's semifinal, it was a victory for Whack, who moved on to the cup final. They defeated North Shore by a mark that we don't have recorded. Trying to get some uh, reporting from last year's event was a little bit difficult to find all the details, but all the same, these are both programs with the legacy of Sevens. North Shore has been in and out of the Sevens scene, produced many of the original contracted Eagles, like Tina Mastrangelo, okay, Pam Kasinki, who no, made her way several We're times on. onto the national stage, okay, Lynn Wismuller, and more. When we think yeah, of WAC, fine. you think of some stalwarts. Megan Sanders, who's not in the tournament this year, but did play with okay. PR7s on team. Erica Legaspi was one of her teammates on that team during the PR7s campaign. 
strong ties with Adivis. They've gone through some name changes over the year, but heaps of success when it comes to the Sevens game, of course, playing their 15s up in the BC Premiership. So opting out of the USA Rugby Club 15 structure, but again, seeking closer and more manageable games at a higher level of competition. And that has been a draw for many of their players. They also draw with the strengths of Central Washington University. We've seen University of Washington advance pretty far into the women's division one club college or college club playoffs, making appearances at Stanford University in those spring quarterfinals. While North Shore reaches deep, Emma Farnan, for example, a player at a University of Michigan, we saw Lauren Trout, who is now coaching the team, come out of Purdue, ties to, or sorry, Emma Farnan from Notre Dame. Other players from Michigan, Jess Dombrowski playing her college rugby at Illinois State. And I can talk about this team all day because I am an alumna of North Shore and very familiar with many of these WAC players as well. So we're just one minute in. Craig, what are you looking to see for the rest of the match? I think it's important for both teams just to secure possession. Absolutely vital in seven. That can control and dictate the momentum of the game. And it all starts from this kickoff. So we see the kickoff bounce its way into touch. That is number 17, Caitlin Kelly, another local Midwest product out of Arlington Heights, Illinois. So one step, here's your chance. Player that's represented with Army Sevens as well, and another player that works for the Chicago Hounds Major League Rugby organization, Jess Dombrowski there, the scrum half number four with ball in hand. We see the set for the line out, and this is going to be the first time we've seen a single lift out of one of the women's programs. Ball bounces its way into whack hands, Nikki Kangan distributing the ball towards that far sideline. We see the in and outs, and Peterson, Kangan, she's got Young outside, Peterson on the inside, taken down by Kelly. Young to Dieters, finds Emily Barber, and it is Wack adding to their lead, 12 to conversion to come. Very similar try from the original one. This time it was from set piece and a turnover at set piece. So again, wow. that means the North Shore attack had to transition to defense. And it was just exhausting the numbers from Wack, just moving the ball to the edges. And eventually the defense are going to run out of numbers and they get over for try. So although they originated from different parts of the game, first one was from a scrum, second one was from a line out, very similar facets to how they scored. Just moving that ball consistently wide. Just as we look back at the replay here, good continuity, moving that ball into space. You just see they ran out of numbers. Nice little offload to finish it and a well-worked try. So Kenyon again on the restart, this time a low chip drive. It makes its way, bouncing just shy of the 22. Fielded by Dombrowski and Dombrowski finds the ball. Dombrowski is on the trot, Dombrowski. He's being chased down by two back players. Look at this. Nikki Kenyon and Sarput and Pursuit. Look at the speed from Wack taken down by Seneca Friend. North Shore there in support. Numbers towards the outside. Katie Sanford. She's the Michigan product out of this North Shore team. Cool. Nicole advantage Fish. Offside. And here advantage being awarded to North Shore. We'll see if they can come away with a try. Sienna Jordan, she is a threat. We saw her with a brace of tries in the earlier matchup. Jordan oh, fighting her way toward the try line. Offside. Stop short. We're going to come back to penalty advantage. It's giving North Shore the ball about five meters from the goal line. Do you have a number? The number nine coming off sides. Time's off for one sec. Number nine coming off sides. So go White back nine. to the replay again. This is Whack again You're with their try scoring form coming around to the outside. We'll see if we can get coverage of that break downfield by Justin Dombrowski as our referees confer. Time off on the field. It looks like there's a little bit of a conference to be had. Play resumes. Dombrowski with the tap. Find Stanford. Dombrowski. Space on the outside for North Shore, well covered on defense by Wack. Kendra Young making the tackle. Into the side. Back. Bit too early there on the attempt to play the ball. We see the quick tap taken. Emily Cran goes over the line, a product out of Winona State, a storied college D2 program out of the Midwest. And North Shore gets some points on the board. They sure do. They keep good composure. Yeah. Although that big line break initially didn't lead to a try, it did lead to a penalty. And they just exhausted the numbers here. They're just moving that ball yeah. into space. And then it was all about just putting the foot down. I love that fend. Look how strong she was there. That took two players into that tackle. There's an offside penalty. And it's about a quick tap penalty here. 
and they get some of a try and it sounds like they've got the conversion as well so North Shore are right back in this game. Twelve to seven, the mark at the moment, and that will take us into halftime. I am Liz Entwistle alongside Craig Wilson. We'll be back with the second half here in just a moment. Out. One more in. Out. Look, just one thing, defensively, let them have the outside. Let's stay inside, inside. Be patient. Now they're going to have a go because their go-to person is, is gone. Yeah. So be wary of the inside. Stay on the inside, stay connected. And well done on the chase back. Yes, yes. 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 nice Nikki. Yes. 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 get back, that's what we need exactly. Yes. Especially when we're in there, we'll put pressure on. But when we have the ball, keep the ball. Position. Okay. Possession, work mm -hmm. those double jacks, it traps them. Yeah. Okay? And then early comms from the outside. Yeah. Okay. Good job. Who's, who's kick -off, uh, kick -off next? Theirs. Theirs. So when we get, get the ball, keep the ball. Yes. Keep it, keep it. Second person, arrive early, blast that ruck. And when we uh, in, in the front for defense, just let them have it. Okay. Let them have it on the six. Tackle, get back in the line. Yep. On attack, be really patient because we only have six right now. I'm coming in after another minute in five seconds. Yep. Just maintain possession. Let's go. Let's go. Finish on three. One, two, three. Finish! Here we go, Wack! Let's go, Wack! Here for the second half of action. Some highlights from the first. There's that Jess Dombrowski break for Chicago North Shore. They ended the half with a try and a conversion. Currently trailing Wack 12 to 7. We do have one player from Wack that has been off with a yellow card. That was Nikki Kangan mentioning there at halftime that she'll be back on in a moment, but they are short. So when we had that referee conference earlier talking about number nine being off sides, it seems that it did result in a card. So North Shore still with a one player advantage. Dombrowski with the kickoff. We see Nicole Fish immediately to her left. Listening it downfield, the ball bouncing through the hands of number 23, Emily Prentice. North Shore coming over the ball. Sienna Jordan coming over, securing the ruck. We heard during halftime, Wack talking about stepping back in defense, letting them have the ball, not trying to contest and draw those penalties. Right now, though, Mackenzie Wood is trying to do it without the penalty. Gets the break downfield. Woody gets the offload as well, straight into the hands. North Shore is flowing on the attack. Ball is out. Play on, says our ref. The ball is still in play. Some confusion from the players, perhaps knocked on by Wack, scrum to Chicago North Shore. Well, just interesting in the conversation, the huddle, just listening to Wack there. They were offering the outside to North Shore. Maybe they might have to rethink that after that break because North Shore took that space, particularly with Wack, with the player down and got themselves into a very, very good attacking position. And it's important from a North Shore point of view now that they utilize that Simbin, as I say that, you can see her coming on, so it's back to full compliments. But uh, Chicago and North Shore certainly have the territory. Unique as well, they did talk about their go-to player being off. Chicago and North Shore prides itself on a team this year that's elevating from ordinary to extraordinary, so they wouldn't point to one single star. While she's not on the field right now, keep an eye on number seven, Sienna Jordan, for Justin Dombrowski, and this girl, 14, Mackenzie Wood, known as Woody. She has taken down scrappy play here by Dieters in the number 24 jersey by Wack. North Shore looking towards the far sideline. Numbers are there, but again, whack, patient in defense, listening to that coach during their halftime. There's Jordan keeping her feet, the former track star. Jordan, a spark for North Shore, and she is a try score for North Shore. Very patient rugby there from North Shore. From the scrum, a nice set play. They got the ball to the midfield, then they attacked back the way they came. So we can see here, it was a just really fighting hard in the tackle and look how they return to where the ball had come from so they're just going to move it across the hands and they're finding that edge it was interesting Wax said give them the edge and certainly North Shore are taking it didn't make the tackle there but great persistent great footwork and gets a really well worked try absolute power there and keeping her feet able to shrug off of the defensive attempt by Seneca Friend if Wack are going to give them the edge, you would look at Friend being such a speedster, able to cover. So we'll keep an eye on that matchup because those are the two fastest players on the field that I'm aware of. More sure. Again with the restart. Floating it up and towards the near sideline. Fielded well by Peterson. This is going to be high contact made. So Wack with the penalty. Emily Barber. 
Brings Kenyon towards the outside. There's Kenyon on Jordan. A good offload covered well on the tackle by Caitlin Kelly. And just barely into touch goes Black, taken out by the toes. North Shore with the line out. What a fantastic hit there. If there's a highlight reel going to be created, that would be on it. It was textbook. It had power. It had the wrap. It was strong. And it was just really great play. And eventually they get the ball back. So reward for a wonderful tackle. So again, we see the single lift, this time executed to perfection. Dombrowski, numbers towards the outside. North Shore with a bit of a dummy on the switch. A bit of a mismatch when it comes to the offload there. Woody not able to handle the ball. And Peterson, right place, right time there in defense. Sometimes just being in the right position on defense is enough to go. Whack earns a scrum. Yeah, you're, you're absolutely right there, Liz. Sometimes defense is just about filling the space. And they just came up as a line. North Shore looks like they've got themselves a little bit. They weren't too sure where we're going to go wide or go flat. They got caught in between. And when you get caught in mixed minds, that's sometimes when mistakes happen. And this allows Wack to launch a midfield scrum. So Wack has made a change here at the scrum half position. That's Erica Legaski that came in. And North Shore with a monster drive, taking possession, ball in hand here. Number 15, Emily Cran, another veteran of Winona State. Jordan looks towards the weak side, pulls out, redistributes looking towards the near sideline. Here's Jordan in and out. Can she go again? Sienna Jordan striding out. We see Laura Kajowski in the number five jersey on the chase. And Jordan gets it done for Chicago North Shore, adding another five, 17 to 12. Ooh, look at this replay. Yeah, she just glides. What a runner, what an athlete. How she just, look at the length of those strides. It just eats up the ground. And that actually came from nothing, but she saw the opportunity and then her speed and just how it, she runs with such grace and manages to, to get a great try. Well worked from North Shore. They've really showed up the second half. You have to love the power in that scrum. A well-timed scrum earlier in the game, especially getting that free kick on the early drive. This time it pays off. So North Shore able to hold off enough, drive over, steal the scrum from WAC. Two minutes left to play, currently leading 17 to 12, but a dangerous WAC team. We saw on the field there, Erica Legowski in at number 12. Also, Laura Kujowski in number five, both very fleet of feet. Nicole Fish with the restart. Rainbow arcs it into the hands. WAC sure on the reception there with Haley Dieters. Seneca Friend. And this time, Wack looking to distribute across the field. They move Kenyon into the midfield as a key ball handler. Lauren Barber out to Laura Kujowski. Kujowski tackled the touch. Jordan, she just did an offense. She does it again in defense. Saves what could have been a break by Wack. Jordan is having herself again, both sides of the ball. I just love there how she tracked. She didn't commit too early. She just tracked the ball carrier, just waited till there was nowhere else to go because the touchline was looming and then struck with a really potent tackle. Jordan is really having a wonderful game. So time is off. We're going to have one minute of play here still on our game clock. Of course, our referee, the arbiter of final time on the field. Substitutes coming on. So a key matchup here coming on for WAC. It looks like number seven, Gabrielle Fernandepool. So Jennifer Johnson getting in on the action there in the number eight jersey at the back of the line out. And WAC is able to disrupt. Fish, though, has the ball in hands. The ball to North Shore, but corralled on the ground by WAC. So back and forth, scrappy play. Just a five-point game. 50 seconds left to go. Lauren Barber taking the contact. Tackle made by Nicole Fish. Redistributed. Fernanda Poole to Jenny Johnson. Finds Dieters towards the outside. Erica Legaspi, she is so quick. A capped Philippine Sevens International. She gets around the outside. Legaspi striding her way towards the goal line, and Legaspi goes over. Some key quick back of the napkin math here, Craig. I have a plus 38 point differential for WAC should this game end in a tie. I have a plus 36 for Chicago North Shore. So a key conversion to come if WAC can take the win. If the game ends in a tie, WAC would or should go through as number one. And just watch this, though, from the North Shore players. Look how, even though they knew the try was going to be given up, just watch there how they cut off that easier kick. That's a great bit of skill there. Just a bit of awareness, just to make that kick a little bit harder. You're absolutely right, Craig. We saw the challenge there by number eight, Sarah Esther Anderson. And it looks like we have a scoring update at 19 to 17. So we'll see if we can get that verified. 
Next Level Rugby has been on top of scoring all weekend long. Excellent with the camera work. The crew out of Chicago featuring several rugby players and students from Loyola University as well. So North Shore now with the free kick. Craig, I think this is the third time we've seen that last kick off Naco 10 and give teams a final opportunity. Absolutely. It looks like they're going to run it out. It's time to kick it. There we go. And I tell you what, big moment in that game there, Liz, was that was Sarah Anderson was cutting off that uh, try to make the conversion harder. Great way to finish. A proud North Shore alum, heartbroken for friends of ours on that Seattle team, out of whack to be so close. What a matchup. Wouldn't be surprised to see these teams match up again tomorrow. That is our first pool done for the day. North Shore advancing at 3-0. WAC advancing to the quarterfinals at 2-1. We'll see who awaits them. Pool B is done and dusted. We've got Pool C coming up next with Camp Pendleton taking on Slaughterhouse. We are down on the field with Chicago North Shore handling business against WAC. I'm here with the legend herself and Trout we trust, Coach Trout for Chicago North Shore. Big win, nice to meet you again. So tell me, how's it feel to get this win and what's the outlook on the future going into quarterfinals? Yeah, no, it was a big win for us. We've been playing well all day and we really wanted to see if we could take out and uh, win our group. Um, it was a heck of a battle. Wax a great program and we've been inspired by them. Actually, at the beginning of the season, we had a whole conversation about how often they're in this top four and that's what we aspire to be. Um, so it was just fantastic, the grit that we showed. Tomorrow, we're looking to bring the same energy. We're gonna go back, relax, and then come out ready to fire. Humble approach for sure. Tell me, what does it take for the Chicago North Shore team to win a national championship here this weekend? Honestly, our biggest limitation is ourselves. If we play our game and play the way we play at practice, we'll have no problem. And Trout, we trust. We appreciate you taking the time. We're down on the field, next level rugby, and we're going back up to you guys. This is Liz Entwistle alongside John Broker here on Field One. We're advancing into the final round of women's pool play matches. We are in Pool C with Camp Pendleton in the black and green, taking on Slaughterhouse in Pool C. This Pool C still has all to play for. Pendleton 2-0 and on the day. Slaughterhouse with an earlier tie. So we still do not know who will be advancing. So many scenarios. In for a treat here, John. Vision was right. Certainly will be a lot to play for. Yeah, Slaughterhouse not quite doing the job there. So a uh, little bit of knock on there. Just those early trying to push it from Slaughterhouse. They know what they need. We saw this Pendleton team earlier on field one do really well. Liz, so this should be an interesting matchup, but did not the way you want to start for Slaughterhouse. No, when you look at the game of sevens, we want to control the controllables. Is that a bit of an unforced error when you look at you can have errors in your execution, errors in your setup. And in that case, the player was set up in front of her teammate and therefore the pass going forward, but things that they can easily shift and adjust to. If there's any team you're gonna play sevens against though, it's going to be this Camp Pendleton team, with several sevens, vet sevens veterans on the field. We see there Bronwyn Damore out of Alberta, Canada, the number four jersey. This is a sevens outfit that knows how to play the game and plays the tactics well. Right there, you saw that scrum go down, a little bit of a bother for one of these Slaughterhouse players. But that's what they want. They want to put pressure on everywhere right now, it does Slaughterhouse. They really need to, you know, they're right at the set piece here at the breakdown. They need to try to take Pendleton out of their game if they're going to move out of their pool. So this is very important for them and a good first step. So we get an overhead view of this gorgeous scrum to come. The ball in by Dormar. And it is Pendleton looking wide to the far sideline. Pendleton able to rally and recover the ball off the ground, getting it off the bounds. And now it is Pendleton streaking their way upfield in the hands of Salome Lewis. Lewis dots it down and it is Pendleton that strikes first. 
Excellent work from Lewis there. Ball came across. You can see that Slaughterhouse essentially knew where they were going, knew where their danger players were. Had a lot of defenders out there, but she shakes off one. She sees the space, just pins her ears back, and she is gone. And across the try line, as you look at it here, Salome Lewis right there breaks off of that tackle. Then there was nobody going to stop her. She was away across that 22. Wonderful bit of work there from the young player. Fantastic try. Well-deserved. Looking at possible scenarios earlier in the day, Pendleton victorious 38 to 5 over Oregon. They won 26 to 5 over HEB out of Texas. Slaughterhouse we saw in that 10 10 tie with HEB. They fell to Oregon by a mark of 29 to 7. So results here on this field. We'll still need to wait on results on the other to see what is going on in Pool C and who books their spots to the quarters. The pressure from Pendleton a bit too much. The ball bobbled around. We're going to reset with a scrum. Yeah, another again, one another error right there. Bay. Again, another one of the errors right there. Just creeps right in, causes a bit of problem for the Slaughterhouse team. They can't just knock on those kick or those restarts. It's going to get them in a lot of trouble as they go along. They've just done it twice in a row. So the ball in, but the tunnel not closed. We're going to see the scrum reset. We're looking across the tournament here to the action on field two. This is Oregon in the blue taking on HEB. Looks like Oregon on a bit of a breakaway. Oregon with a win should advance out of this pool. Again, an earlier defeat of Slaughterhouse that lost to Pendleton. Back on field one though and in the hands of Lewis, the try scorer. Lewis taking the corner. Lewis looking to stretch her legs again. Pursued by Slaughterhouse, but contact not able to be made. Lewis makes her way under the post, setting up the easy conversion, and that's two for two. Lewis with just an age-old sevens move here. You see this ball, it's gonna come out, it's gonna come across field. They're looking to isolate Lewis against a defender. They know what she's got. She gets ball in hand, shows the inside, takes the outside, away she goes around the corner. No one's going to stop her there. Another try. Didn't see much of her earlier today, but keep an eye on Salome Lewis. You know, John, that is a key point. Was mentioning earlier, we saw at one point Meg Mombay, the number nine with the ball in hand. Earlier in the day, we see Katie Lowhouse with a hat trick in games. This is a Pendleton team with so many threats. So perhaps the threats earlier in the day opening up some space around the outside for Lewis as teams are protecting towards the middle. Dormar, that number four, again, such a threat at the scrum half position, too. When you have that many options, you're a tough team to play against. Pendleton making it a little bit trickier though. The restart does not go 10 meters. So Slaughterhouse, this is going to be their first real attempt with a ball in hand for an offensive setup. So we see the tap taken, the kind of traditional midfield switch option, dummy switch option. Slaughterhouse getting the go forward. A lot of young collegiate talent out of Eastern Pennsylvania. This entire pool, teams that are new to the club sevens tireless work put on by the senior club council and the committees to ensure that they had a robust and full women's bracket. Meg Bombay comes away with a ball in hand. It is Pendleton on the go again. There is Dorma. She's supported. That's Katie Lowhouse in that number 11 jersey and quite a try scorer before. Happy to support her teammates in the game thus far today. Pendleton shifting the ball or attempting to shift towards this near sideline slaughterhouse coming up on support a bit of a disjoint defense another opportunity here for lewis tries in transition are easier at times because the defense isn't quite set but slaughterhouse with that buddy tackle making it difficult they were set and ready for lewis on the attack that time and they draw the penalty certainly brave defense there from the slaughterhouse team working all the way back to the five meter line to stop lewis she couldn't get in for her third. That all came from more pressure on this Slaughterhouse team. Pendleton able to take it away and get themselves down to the five meter line. But Lewis just had you know, no support there. Two wee defenders around her. Good defensive uh, hustle there from that Slaughterhouse team. The kick to touch just barely misses the mark. We saw it bounce and curve back on side now into the hands of Bronwyn Dormar. She's got. Meg Mombay up to the outside. Meg Mombay cuts her way towards the inside. Meg Mombay again trying to do a little shimmy with the footwork, taken down by Slaughterhouse. These double tackles are working for the young team out of Eastern Pennsylvania. Pendleton retains possession of the ball. You see Okabe getting the offload from the ground. Emma Rimblinger is there. 
And now it's Emily Mack looking to get the finish for Pendleton dancing in front of the goal line. A dangerous dance, but it does pay off. Punches another one in for Pendleton. If you look at these Pendleton players, they're just really confident that somebody's going to be there. So it makes them confident in their actions. Right here, ball's going into contact. Little shove off there. She knows somebody's going to be around. Able to get that ball away. No problem. Going in for the try. Great work of a team that really trusts each other right here, this Pendleton team. And it certainly shows. As so we take a look, ball going down. And Okabe just pops that ball up. Ripplinger gets a hold of it. And then she just has to find Emily Mack. And Emily Mack. Interestingly, just said Liz is going to dance in front of the post, but certainly gets down underneath them. No problem. It reminds me of some of the games a bit earlier in the day. We were talking about having options flooding and support, looking at speed of threes. And if all this Pendleton support paying off, is they're going to go into halftime with a three try lead. I'm Liz Entosil with John Broker. We'll be back with the second half in a moment. Yeah. 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 Sorry about that one pass, guys. Kels. Okay. Same or All right, um, Maddie for Kels. Give me that card. Um, and uh, that'll be it for right now. Hey, right. okay, ladies, keep pressing up. Keep yeah. pushing them. Keep pushing them. Right. You, you got all the good stuff Let's you can do. So round three, one, two, three, go guys. Maddie, I'll Highlights of this first half action here. Pendleton in the black and the green, driving forward towards a three try lead here. I am Liz Entwistle alongside John Broker here in this women's pool C matchup. John, any key thoughts or takeaways from that first half of action? I just think we're looking at the depth of Camp Pendleton right now. We're seeing some players that we haven't seen as much earlier in the day, scoring tries, working as connection players in the middle of the field, really picking apart these defenses. 19-0 Slaughterhouse, young team, as you said, have a lot to learn from these type of competitions. They're thrilled to be here, I'm sure, at the national championship, but we're looking at the depth of Pendleton right now. So Pendleton looking to reload here, starting the second half with possession. Mambe. Able to find a deep first receiver taken down by the Jersey Slaughterhouse. Again, they've been doing so well when they've been committing two players on these tackles and defense and stifling the potential for Pendleton. When Pendleton get those offloads going, they are hard to stop. Slaughterhouse draws a penalty. Slaughterhouse with a kick tap, quick tap taken by Madeline Granger. And secure the ball from the back of the ruck, goes to ground. Slaughterhouse maintains possession. You see the dummy towards the inside, the step back towards the out. And the Slaughterhouse is still on the go, fighting to keep her feet. I believe that's number eight, Gabriella Wood. Slaughterhouse towards the far sideline. Corinne Gallagher, ball in hand. Corinne Gallagher taken down by the jersey, keeps the ball in touch. And now it's Casey Evans fighting to keep Slaughterhouse possession, but Pendleton steals okay. it away via the lineout. Great phrase, uh, phases of rugby there. There was Gabriella Wood doing a lot of work there for the Slaughterhouse team, moving it across, but very challenging and up to the task is this defense from Camp Pendleton. As you watch them through here, you watch this little break right here. Mambe gets caught in the back there, but Pendleton's showing their defensive skills right there, a little miscue. The 
hear the fans in the stands. Slaughterhouse able to disrupt the lineup, so this will be their option for a scrum at the 15 meter mark. We're going across here to field two. Oregon currently leading 14 to seven over HEV. If Oregon wins this game, they're the ones that will advance. If HEV can provide an upset, they will go through the pool. If there's a tie, that'll be a lot of math to do. And of course, keep up with all the actions with USA Club Rugby on social media, as well as USA Rugby Online, Rugby Explorer with all the scores for the day. Slaughterhouse, again on the go, we see a little bit of the dummy. We see the keep and it is Slaughterhouse. Meters away from the goal line. The play disrupted with that place may have just been nudged forward. Yeah, Walsh and Frederick with a good move there and good intention to get that ball across field. But when she went to the ground and got back up, she just pushed it forward, just a nudge. Referee in the right place. Saw that one. It's the absolute correct call, but very tough on Catherine Walsh and Frederick. So it seems Pendleton has settled into a bit of defense here. Happy to play it with their 19 to nothing lead. Just watching the clock wind down. About four minutes and 15 seconds left to go in the match. Pendleton up by three tries. Slaughterhouse looking to break through. And you kind of have the feeling if they are able to get one, they should be able to unlock another. It's just this Pendleton team is so tenacious and it has that depth you mentioned time and time again, John. Coach. The view of the scrum, the ball believed to be out by Slaughterhouse, but advantage being shown to Pendleton. Scrum has, has to stay on side, has to stay behind the ball, release a little bit early. So Pendleton with a quick tap and go. The pick and go again for Pendleton, paying off with meters downfield, Mambe. Add the offload to Dormar. See the excellent body position there on the placement of the ball, and it is Pendleton having a go here on this near sideline. Pendleton with one to beat. Can she outdance the sweeper? This time she cannot. Emily Mack taken down. Slaughterhouse sweeper does her job and gains the penalty. So Slaughterhouse with possession, three minutes left to go here in the second half. Good second half by the Slaughterhouse team. They're really working hard on defense, really working hard to get around. Saw right there, both getting back on defense quickly and getting in over that ball. Forcing the turnover there. Very impressive from Slaughterhouse. Love her patient sweeper. She didn't overcommit and instead was able to get the job, get the ball back. Slaughterhouse going to have a line out here just past midfield. Substitution. Time is off. Nine. So action back here across the way. HEB is taking the lead over Oregon. Final minutes across both of these fields going to be so meaningful in terms of who advances out of this debutante pool. See all brand new teams to Club Sevens. We're going to see two brand new teams in the Cup quarterfinals and the other two advancing to the Bowl quarterfinals tomorrow. Pendleton. The ball again, and here's Katie Lowhouse. We didn't see much of her from the first half. She's saving it here in the second, a support player for so many of the breakdowns. And now she shows us the space we saw in the games earlier in the day. Katie Lowhouse goes the distance, 60, 70 meters downfield, full stride, can't be stopped. Ball in a few other players' hands this game, but once it gets to Lowhouse, just look at that speed. Just takes a corner around Morgan Mataya there. Mataya, best she can do, but Lowhouse, just tremendous pace to get under the post. Extend this lead for this Pendleton team. We take a look at it. Just look at that speed as she crosses right in front of the player. No problem. Long strides downfield. Lowhouse, excellent work from her. Her development has been a joy to watch. Again, a player that was at the 2019 Academy Sevens down in Little Rock, then playing with the Women's College All-Americans. And from then, she has just been ascending, taking and saying yes to every opportunity, relocating to California in order to play more high-level Sevens, a product of the Rhino program there after her Midwest ties, and now leading a young Pendleton team. 
A little bit of a miscue there on there. the final kick. Go ahead, John. Just about there, trying to grab him across the 10 meter line, but didn't happen. But ball back in the hands of Slaughterhouse. Advantage over. This is Dormar with a break down the middle of the field, streaking down, trying to replicate what Low House just did. And Bronwyn Dormar adding to this Pendleton lead. We just got an update from across the way on field two, Oregon with a try. So we get this view, next level rugby providing all of the action, 19 to 19 with no time left. Oregon there kicking off to HEB. That's Lena Lomu that's going to field the ball. Double commentary on two games, John. Who'd have thought? <laughs> impressive, impressive it is. Last Back in this field, you saw Dormar as well, score this that try. Just tremendous, good speed here from Dormar. 19 years old, a Canadian player just streaking down the field, no problem. Player from Slaughterhouse just has to pull up there. Real is not going to get there and try awarded excellent work. Bronwyn Dormar. Pendleton leading 33 to nothing. And we've seen this all tournament long where they have started with a solid first half and really turned it up in the second. So now in the second half of play, they were patient with their defense, weren't forcing anything. And now it's just been high efficiency. When they've got the ball in hand, they're able to make those breaks downfield. Slaughterhouse came inches away from some potential try scoring opportunities. But now Pendleton has pushed the pace and has been pushing Slaughterhouse deep into their own half of the field again. Slaughterhouse. Getting past midfield, a bit of a line break here. Slaughterhouse on the go. We see the kick downfield. Well weighted. And just not quite enough pace to chase it down, but it was a good heads up play by Kareem Gallagher. That's the game here on field one. So Pendleton topping Cool C, winning their game by a mark of 33 to nothing. High point differential in forward matches. Slaughterhouse doing well in their debut here at Club Sevens, a tough team to play against. But look at these try scoring action. We'll be back with the final round of women's pool play in just a moment. Get a score. I am here on the sideline with Lome. Ladies handle business 3 and on the day. You're headed to the quarterfinals. How's it feeling? Feels good. So my teams are practicing for it. On to the next, next one. You got opportunity for a national championship. What do you think? What do you what are your team's chances of taking it this year? I think I have a good chance. Um my team's been practicing for this and they really want it. So uh I think the chemistry's been building over the week and the practice that, that we've had together. So I think we're all just playing for each other and that's gonna show how we play. You've been balling today. Congratulations. Good luck in the quarterfinals. Hey, this team is undefeated on the day, handling business. We're going back up top to you guys. I can hear you, but it's faint. So if you can just speak up when you're coming in, that'd be great. That's much better. So alongside John Broker in the Sounds final women's good. pool D matchup, and we are in for a treat. Chicago Lions taking on the Phoenix out of Florida. The Chicago Lions wearing black going from left to right across your screen, kicking off to Phoenix wearing the white jerseys for the first time all weekend. This is a Lions team. We just talked about the depth of Camp Pendleton, a very deep Lions program as well. This is a Lions team that has been undefeated in their matchup so far. The only team to remain unscored upon. They've outscored opponents by a mark of 90 to nothing. Phoenix has won some big matchups, but they have had their defensive line broached a few times. We'll see what happens next, John. Who you got? 90 to nothing in points right now for the Lions. Holds really well. It's a very good Phoenix team. 
We'll see how they come up against us, but Lions are just really showing what they have here. Two great teams from Chicago at this event, but the Lions, 90 points for none against. It just says something right there. Let's see if they can hold it up. 10 for me, 10 for me, yeah. So we saw the restart, or the start, the kick off off the boot of Kelly Hurt. It goes just barely 10 meters, but it's going to be a line out to Lions Phoenix. We see Kate King, Cindy Campbell, and Christina Swift lining up for the line out lift. Aubrey Christ with the blonde, blonde hair. They're being lifted defensively at the front for the Lions. Phoenix able to retain possession of their own line out, bouncing off the ground through the hands of Lindsay Mahoney, looking towards the outside where there's Agnes first. Back inside to Mahoney. Back, back, back. And the Phoenix reset, looking at these angles, looking at how they're trying to draw the defense in the middle of the field. That's Christina Swift in the number 14 jersey. The ball bounces away into the hands of Cindy Campbell. Morgan Freeman in support. And the Phoenix reloading. Mahoney. Changes fields, changes direction again through the hands of Morgan Freeman. And look at the shoot. Well read on defense here by Emma Hoban. Hoban. Could be a white scrum. You see the pressure coming on from Chicago here, and that's what's really telling. Phoenix getting some good phases together, but a very coordinated defense for the Lions. It's just coming up in the right places, putting pressure every time there's just a pass a little bit behind. Just a pass that goes to ground and gives them a little more room. They're taking that and just making life harder for Phoenix. The defensive work here by the Lions early in this game has been very impressive. We see that defensive set that John is mentioning. Betty wins straight behind the scrum. The option go either way as Phoenix scooches their way towards the right side of the field. There was a scrum play in the works. The ball bounces forwards off the hands of Agnes first. So we're going to have a scrum to the Chicago Lions. A little mistake there, but that comes that from that pressure from the Lions. That comes from that pressure from the Lions. Absolutely, just forcing these knock-ons. Phoenix is just going to have to get those skills together, make sure they're comfortable under pressure. But still 0-0 zero, zero here. 0-0 zero, zero indeed. Chris at the back of the scrum looking for that first receiver. The defensive right pressure the here coming from Phoenix. Right Looks like high contact may have been made. A penalty to the Lions. Chris with a quick tap and go. The young player out of Davenport University, Betty Wynn, moving towards the outside into the hands of Emma Hovanek. Another penalty. Two quick penalties against the Phoenix. Two quick penalties for high contact at that. But to be Go mindful the as the rest of the game goes on. The Lions choose a scrum. We saw this earlier in the day. I like the control platform choice. How about you, John? Uh, absolutely. Betty Wynn called for that automatically as soon as the penalty went. They just know that they want to isolate that space. They know they have runners out wide. That can certainly make a huge Crouch. difference if they can isolate them one-on-one -on -one with somebody. So now they have an open right-hand side of the field and a couple of runners out the other way. It's a great option for the Chicago Lions. We do see the spacing of Lindsay Mahoney there as a first defensive position. She's having to scoot her way further to the left side of the field as she's shading towards the right. And look at the solid hands from Hovannik. The line on the front of the Lions going over the line. And it is Chicago Lions striking first in this Pool D matchup. The winner advancing on top of the pool. The loser the second place team. Just the lines of run from each of these players here is so important. Player comes in, Betty Wynn just comes in to draw some defenders and opens up the side out there for Hovannik, and she's able to get around no problem. But just the first two runners, an arcing run to the outside here you look at, right away, and traps two players, gets opens that space in the middle. Betty Wynn draws a couple people in, and that just opens it up for Hovannik on the side there. Very intelligent play, very good running line. Kept the defense really trying to decide what they wanted to do and they were able to get around the corner, no problem. You see a happy smile right there. We talk again about these defensive shapes off the scrum. As we mentioned, Lindsay Mahoney was shading behind the scrum, so that did open a bit of space, and then she had to turn her hips, overcommit in pursuit of trying to get that first cut and that first run, took her center off of her defensive line for the tackle, and just the barest bit of space is something that the Chicago Lions will take advantage of. Never going 10. A miss on the restart, this is going to give something the Phoenix could take advantage of with a free kick at midfield. Yeah, that's not what you want to see from your team after they just scored a wonderful try, is giving up possession. This is the opportunity for, for uh, this Phoenix team. Important moment for them in the game. So Mahoney with the ball in hand finds first towards the outside. She has Samantha Black running in support, taken down by the Lions, escorted towards the sideline, but not quite there. There's a ball up in the air. 
the ruck formed hands in penalty to phoenix and this time phoenix are pushing the pace cindy campbell in the middle of the field she has christina swift towards the outside she looks back towards the near or the far sideline samantha black splits the defense samantha black and it's Black going over the line, back in Black. This time it is Black on the scoreboard as well. Seven to five, the Lions are leading with a Phoenix conversion attempt to come. This try stems, this was just a silly penalty right, right there, and that opened it up for Black. Just a bit before this, there was a hands-in penalty from the Lions, and that just was a bit of a silly play, put the ball in Phoenix hands. They worked at a couple of phases. Black just saw that she had a little space in there, dumped it to the outside able to get through and touch down for a try. Excellent work, Phoenix. We can even take it a step back further as well towards that miss on the restart as well. So the Lions, a couple of unforced errors gave Phoenix opportunity with the ball. They missed the conversion attempt, bounces all for the post. So in that, in that case, it might be better to be lucky than to be good. We'll see how the Lions can regain composure. We'll go back to the penalty John mentioned. See here, they come around. Well, this is the try that's coming here after the penalty. And it was just a uh, hands in. The, the referee even said, please release, please re release. Up, and the Lions right. player didn't. So that, that's where it came from. So another miss here on the restart. And the scrum. Lions opt for a scrum at midfield. Going across here to field to action. Nova taking on the Dallas Reds, and it is Nova going over the line. This is a team who's just been waiting for them to hit an offensive stride in their earlier matchups, hard fought games against the Lions and against Phoenix, a team that's found itself in the finals of this seventh championship many times over. So great effort there by Nova. Back to action here on field one. In and out of the scrum, Ashley Torres Brown. Lions Hoganic. She has been a fire starter for this Lions team before. We look at the offload, a little bit of a misconnection is in there off of the foot of Campbell. Phoenix scrambles, they recover and they regain possession. And now another penalty, John, we just saw this before. Another unforced the there, they had Phoenix on their five meter line. And they decided to do that. Phoenix is going to kick, kick it out and get done with the half there. But another unforced there. They were almost running the line there. Phoenix was playing some risky ball. And the Lions played right into it and committed that penalty. Could have been another five points for them. So the Lions currently leading 7-5. to five, Third game of the day for both teams. We'll be back with a second half. Both teams, everything to play for to top the pool. Liz Entwistle and John Broker here with Next Level Rugby. Back in a moment. Hold it, and out. Last one, deep breath in, hold it, and out. Okay, good Good first half, okay? We have to watch how they're trying to flank us on the outside, okay? Yeah. We're not coming up hard enough on the centers, which is what is leaving it to go to the outside, okay? So just be a little careful careful on that. On attack, okay. we need to pin somebody. We're not pinning anybody, and it's making it a little bit difficult for us, okay? Um, I'm going to leave the same team in for the first minute of the half, and then I'm going to start making subs. Go balls to the wall. Yeah. 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 You got this, girls. Fight for each other. Keep fighting. Just your speed and hold your depth. Just, just a few feet. Yeah, because that way you can catch it on the line. They were all shifting. Hey, um, people who come on, they're holding us in the scrum. Don't worry about it. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. 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 Ye
Take him down, legs in the air, but not releasing. It is going to be a 32 Phoenix. Cap taken. Cindy Campbell in the middle of the field looking for the connection. Samantha Black able to recover. Lindsay Mahoney preparing for the fend. Stopped in her tracks. Betty Wynn. Lions looking to counter on the ball and there's another penalty. By my mark, John, this is about five or six straight penalties against the Lions. You have to be worried about persistent infringement at some point. This is a worry for the Lions that continue to hit penalties here. You heard at halftime the Phoenix players, they were actually self-assessing right there, which was tremendous to do. Talking about how they have to take on this Lions team, you know, around the field. And they've been doing that very well. But the Lions just really, really, you know, pushing it here and making a number of errors. They have a number of fans in the stands with the Lions. So the scrum towards the middle of the field. Options go either direction, and Phoenix chooses towards the far sideline. Lindsay Mahoney on the attack from the first receiver position, looking for Morgan Freeman for the offload. Tripped up, the pass thrown forward. Good defensive there by Rachel Grecki, the number 12 for the Lions. It's just an error there, a little hand forward. Not exactly wanted, but this will give an opportunity for the Chicago Lions. They are there on 22, a lot of room to go. But you saw those backline moves in the first half, but it certainly created some space. So a couple of substitutions coming on for both sides. Coming on for Phoenix is number two, Antia Dedic. She takes off number 14, Christina Swift. Lions bringing up the replacement player as well. Some adjustments here in the scrum. And we'll see. Like, look at this holding on that was mentioned in that halftime talk with the Phoenix players doing their assessments. This time, penalty against Phoenix. Lions with an opportunity, ball in hand, an opportunity for composure. Scrum again. Got to Another the scrum. Time. This Lions team knows how they want to play. Coach. Absolutely right you are, John. This is a team Fine. with a legacy of coaching. We saw some of the Lions coaches Set. in the PR7's ranks, including Matt Wagner, Jeremy Nash, a capped Eagles player himself, still involved with the women's program in a coaching role. Chris scrum. taking the ball going forward. Black two going for an accidental white scrum. Same issue again, obstruction. just the other team. Yeah, ball just a little bit forward there, another little mistake. Both teams making a couple of uncharacterous mistakes here, but plenty of time to go. Five minutes in this half. Somebody's going to have to really, really just take this game by the scruff of the neck sometime in the next minute. Black with the put in. Phoenix solid in the scrum, not giving an inch. We see the set play coming off of it first, strikes towards the middle of the field. She had Morgan Freeman on the outside, Sam Black towards the far sideline. And that's where the replacement, Dedich, gets the ball in hand. And this time, Kate King. Kate King started this game, and she's looking to finish a try here in the second half. Kate King going over the line. Capped in rugby league for the United States with the Hawks program. Makes her trek from the Carolinas down to Florida to play with this Phoenix squad. And she is showing this effort paying off as Phoenix currently leading by a mark of 10 to seven with the conversion to come. Yeah, the rally native there just speeds down the sideline. It got opened up by a couple players. So you see it look one way and they're gonna go the other way. It's just gonna be a little pass right in, owning that space and getting it out there. And Kate King had no problem right at the 22 with turning that one in field. Just tremendous work from her, but it was set up by that pass as a player just really owned that space between two defenders and put it outside. Uh, that's that pass you speak of. Cindy Campbell has been a key piece in the middle of the field for this Phoenix offense right now. Ball in hand for the restart. The Lions currently trailing. These are the first points again that they've conceded all tournament long. So the first time that they have been losing in a match all tournament long. Deep and downfield, Cindy Campbell picks her target. And look at this, the stop start from the Lions. Just the barest bit of space opens up straight in front of where the defensive efforts were made. Going down the field, Ashley Dewar is bound for the Lions. Striding out, she beats Campbell. Stayed back to sweep after the kick. And Ashley Torres Brown has the answer to the question of what are the Lions going to do? They're going to score another try. Torres Brown, a former Sacred Heart University player from Greenwich, Connecticut, 19 years old, currently playing at uh, Sacred Heart. Just a tremendous run there down that sideline, finding the space, finding the gas. So the defender for Phoenix could only do what she could do 
to cut off the angle there, but excellent work. She eventually got around, taking a look, just steps it, sees that space, sees the defender starting to go to the other side of the field, makes that big break, cross halfway. She's got Meg Loomis, sorry, she's got uh, Cynthia Campbell to beat. She's able to get around her. She was trying to cut off that angle and touch it down right under the post. Great work there by Torres Brown. Excellent recovery by the Lions. Again, being down in the game for the first time all tournament long, recovering after a few of those penalty errors. And now it is the Lions again with a restart. Kelly Hurt. We're looking across again in action on field number two. Looks like a moment of HEB there. We have the knock on the kickoff. Always going back. Back on field one, the knock on from the kickoff, as our referee said. So this will be a scrum to Phoenix. About a minute and 40 seconds left to play. Only four points here. So an unconverted try puts Phoenix ahead with a minute and a half left in the game. So this is still anybody's contest, absolutely. We've seen that both sides have the ability to really open things up. Let's see what Phoenix has in their bag of tricks right here. Sam Black with the put in. Ashley Torres Brown patient on defense for the Lions. And look at that strike line run. The Phoenix has something that they want to get going. That's Morgan Freeman at the ball, a Lumberwood mm -hmm. University product. Played some youth rugby at England. Close and there. I think she thought well. she released that ball and got up. She uh, is very, very close there, but referee right on the spot deems that the player did, uh, did not just knock the ball forward as she was going back up. So it's happened to both teams. But the Lions wisely choosing to eat some time up here with under a minute to go with a scrum. And very powerful in this area. This is a good result for the Chicago Lions. However, looking a little bit at the tactical play here, the Lions opted for the scrum on their penalty, which allowed time Phoenix on. to bring a substitution on, and time was oh. off, so they didn't eat any time off the clock on that Fine. one. Set. We see the put-in, Ashley Torres-Brown. So they draw the penalty on the scrum. Five seconds. So the Lions with a huddle here at the middle. Let's have a choice. Yeah. They're just going to slow this right down. That is full. And I'm not sure where she's running to. The referee must have told them time was up there. Oh, indeed. So shades of the Sevens World Series. The Lions keep the ball in hand, eat up enough of the clock. They've come away with the win 14 to 10 over Phoenix. They will top pool D. Two Chicago teams topping their pools. Fantastic rugby here in the Midwest. We look across other pools as well. Cincinnati has advanced out of pool A. Boston topping that pool. And we got an update on field two that Nova is currently winning that match. For all your score updates, you can look at Rugby Explorer. Of course, USA Club Rugby across social media. We will round out here. I am Liz Entwistle alongside John Brooker. I am done for day one, but I'm going to sit here and watch the rest of the men's action. John and Craig will be on the mic bringing you all the details of a thrilling men's tournament. Thank you, Liz. We'll be back. This next game is going to start at 4.30 Central Time, 5.30 Eastern. We'll be right back with that action.
I am on the sidelines with the Chicago Lions going 3-0, and headed to quarterfinals. Ashley, Coach Fee, great, great Saturday for you, for you ladies. You handling business. For what you told me, this is your first summer with the ladies here for the Chicago Lions. Tell me how's it been this summer, how proud you are for what they've accomplished so far. Uh, I'm, I'm so proud of the group. I mean, what, what they've been able to do, win in the Midwest and uh, putting us in a position for tomorrow to, you know, be in the top eight. I mean, we couldn't ask for anything more, but we know it's a two-day tournament. So, you know, now we turn our sights to tomorrow. I believe this is the first try you gave up today. Is that correct? That was, that was it. Yeah, unfortunately, we gave up two in that last one, but we know the competition is going to get better throughout the tournament. So hopefully we do as well, too. What do you think about the team defense, and what do you think about your team chances going into the quarterfinals? Well, I'd like to start off. We have, I think we have really good chances going against the rest of the teams. Like Coach said, it's definitely going to get a lot more difficult, but I'm ready to take them on. And our defense has been pretty spot on the first two couple of games. Um, this game, we fluked a little bit a couple times, but I know that we'll pick it back up tomorrow. Obviously, Chicago Lions has a great history, and now we have a group of ladies that's ready to even bring that history even further. Tell me a little bit about the ladies and how this all came about, and where were your goals starting out, and are you accomplishing them right now? Well, obviously, I've got a long history on the men's side, and, uh, you know, Matt Wagner is a former player of mine, and he's uh, done great things with the men's side. And, uh, you know, with, with my spare time, uh, you know, I decided to get back into the game and, and jump over to the women's side, and, and it's been nothing but fantastic. I mean, the, the level of athleticism, the skill set, the attitude they bring is, uh, you know, it's, it's as good, if not better, than the men. And, uh, you know, they're getting rewarded for it, you know, here in the tournament. Ashley, quarterfinals time. You out there, you putting in the work. Tell me about your teammates. Tell me about somebody who did some work and this Saturday that you're proud of and look forward to doing big things tomorrow as well. Well, big shout out to Mac. Uh, her tackles have been crazy today. Emma's been working real hard on the outside and been putting a lot up. Uh, Betty's just an overall great player. I mean, she's just going to get the ball. She sees the field. Um, I mean, dang. Ever, I mean, I could go all day with everyone. But a huge shout out to Mac for her defensive skill today. We are down on the field. Chicago Lions 3-0 headed to quarterfinals playing almost flawless defense. We look forward to what you can do next. Congratulations so far and good luck later on. Hey, thanks. I appreciate you. Thank no you. problem. Thank you. Chicago Lions might be one of those teams. We'll be back for the next game. We'll see you in a bit. Welcome back to Madison, Wisconsin, the Madison United Rugby Club, Madison Sports Facility. 
this beautiful venue is playing host to the USA Club Sevens Championships 2023. You see Light West and Nav Sevens looking another way. John Broker with the contact coach. Craig Wilson bringing these final four games. First here, Nav versus Light West. This should be phenomenal. Ball up in the air, ball into the hands of Nav in the bright red here, running from left to right on your screen. Ball down there to CB Moala. Moala turns a corner across the 22. This Nav 7 team has been tremendous all around. CB Moala makes an early big break. This Southern Virginia University player shuts it down for a try. What a wonderful way to open the try. Simi Moala, what a specimen of a man. And just how he find that outside edge, we call it on the outside line or the overs line. He used his pace, then the handoff, and he broke away. When we look back at this there, moving the ball into space, and just how he goes on that overs line, gets the big fen, not only the fen, the little step there to shimmy to find an edge, and he's working hard. He's moving a lot of weight and a lot of power. And Moala goes under the post. He's a big unit, Moala, 6240, and to a Nuku. Now, playing his rugby in the States. We're ready to get started here again. It's going to be a kickoff from Nav. Nav 7's team out here. Kickoff to Life West. Life West will want to do something with this possession. Certainly answer to that. A lot of weapons in the Life West toolkit. Well taken down there. Big hit. We're going to come back for a head high shot. Referee's going to have a little bit of a conversation here. And an immediate yellow card. Wasting no time. Nav going to be down two players. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see that one back. Normally <laughs> looks a bit there. Michael McCarthy looks a bit shaky on his feet. He might be being taken off for a little bit of precaution there, but he certainly took a, a high sharp yellow card. We look back on it here. Just as he takes it into contact, yeah, it's, there's probably a little bit of mitigation that there was a, a late movement. A yellow card is right, but McCarthy's suffering now. He's going to have a, and rightly so, be checked, John. Yeah, I don't, I don't think there was anything really in there from Nye. You know, he came around, and just the reactions of players getting flung around to him. You're right, McCarthy, tough result for him. He's going to have to get looked at here. He's had a great day so far, but just a yellow card is right. Life West here, opportunity, one player up for the next few minutes. Yeah. Very critical moments, John. you got a man down. Get yourself first possession as well, really. Best chance to do it is against six men. Life looking to go downfield. I think they were trying to go to touch off that penalty, but didn't quite get there. So Jacques Odendahl has a hold of this one. Odendahl. Critical for this team all day. There's a try score, Moala. He's got Stanfill on his outside. He's going to go to the ground with this one. Stanfill kind of rolls into it there, but nobody else around. So referee says, let's just let it go. They'll switch back in. Wonderfully done. Chase Suznovich gets in, but isolated penalty there. It's going to be Life West ball, and they're going to go quick with this one. Life West looking down there. That's Kovu. Into contact inside the 22. Get the ball up to Skylar Mitchell. Skylar Mitchell looking at the line, but a little switch back in. He's going to get there better. Vakalawa is going to touch it down. Great work by Vakalawa to touch down the Sacramento, California native. All started from a wonderful turnover. It was a great hit. Bounced onto his feet, got the jackal, and then from this penalty, just moving that ball. Good carry initially, but look how he keeps the ball alive. It's just there, it's well placed, and he's keeping that alive. Nice and fast, and there's a nice little switch coming up here. Great communication. The running line, they saw the defender's hips were going to the corner flag, and then Vakavala just cruises in under the post. That gives us a tie game here. Three and a half minutes going in this first half. Still a yellow card for Nav. That one rolls back off of some player. A little miscue there. Both players know it. So it's going to be a line out here for Life West. More opportunity with a player advantage here. 
Yeah, Nav would have been expecting a little bit better there, but there was no real pressure at that kickoff. Miscommunication between the two players, Corey Jones there, and the ball trickles into touch, and this is a wonderful attacking opportunity now. It uh, looks like uh, Nav have just come back to full complement, John. Ball sailed over into Nav hands. Here comes Tim Stanfield. Stanfield shakes off one. He's got a player bearing down on him, but he's away from him. Stanfield headed towards the sticks. He's got one more player to beat. Stanfield touches it down with a dive at the back. Turns around. He looks at Corey Jones. They're happy they've answered. That's a quick score at four minutes. Very important. For yeah, this Nav 17. Yeah, off that line out over the top of Stanfield. Just look how he puts the power on and the pace. He shrugs off that first tackle. Great awareness. And then look at that leg stride. He's got the ability to kick on a little step to fool the defender. And I think there's a camera in his sights here because he goes for a big dive. That might be on his uh, profile picture pretty soon. <laughs> he had a cameraman right there. So certainly made the most of it. And that kick is good. Excellent work from the NAV 7s player. <laughs> Odendahl to get us going again. Ball back to Skylar Mitchell. Moves it across to Jakovu. Jakovu so important to this team. Caught up in the tackle that time. That one spilled forward. Scrum for NAV 7s. Two minutes to go in the first half. Great attacking position. Yeah, excellent tackle. Really targeted the ball. Just as you saw as he carried in the Tavolu, he got carried it in and he just targeted the ball on the tackle, used his shoulder, got obviously the wrap in and that dislodged the ball. And this is a great attacking position. What, 22 meters out on the right hand side. Plenty of options for Nav to exploit here. Yeah, we'll look at the other Five. field here. Five, nothing Dallas over Nova at the moment. Come back to this game here, Nav Sevens, good work. Susanovich in the distributor role there, gets the ball back to Nye. Back on the field, Nye. Want to make up for that two minutes he spent in the bin there. Susanovich moves around, Stanfield again. Stanfield always spots a space. Stanfield, another dive right in front of the cameraman again. Gets that ball. Happy with the try. Yeah, absolutely. Old Stanfield, I'll tell you what, veteran player going really well. Definitely loves his free tricks in the try zone as well. Always looking for the camera there. But why not when you've done some great work to, to get your team a nice, healthy lead here? Stanfield's definitely a standout player. As we just look back at this, he's worked off the ball. What you do off the ball tends to dictate what you do on the ball. Gives himself a 1v1, goes for the big one-handed dive. I'm sure his shoulders aren't going to be too happy about that. That's got dislocation written all over it. But give the man in this moment, he's earned it. He's certainly joined it. This kick's a little tougher here for Odendahl. He's not going to make that one. Bit of a challenge, but the lead here for Nav 7s in the West first West. half here. Madison, Wisconsin. West West. Referee tells everybody it's the last play of the half. Let's see what Odin Dahl decides to do with this up 19-7 over Life West in pool play here. Long kick up for it, comes down. Corey Jones tips it back. Sliagu takes it into the contact. He is a powerful customer. Gets the ball down there into the hands of Nye. Nye takes a look at that left-hand side. He's going to come back the other way. Gets the ball to Moala. Moala been a little quiet the last couple minutes, but is in the right place when he needs it with a beautiful offload. Here comes Stanfield. Can Stanfield get another? Stanfield times again. Is Stanfield going to get the try? Little discussion here from the Life West players. Let's listen in as the referee and assistant have a conversation. The player clearly in touch before the grounding? Yes. Okay, so no try in halftime. Yeah. <laughs> Time's on. No try. Despite the dive that time, it's not going to be a try there for Tim Stanfield, but Nav 7 still leads. We're going to look at it here. This is going to be the end of the first half. As great work there by Mao Sakare to keep him out. Diving, looking for the touchdown yeah, touch there. Hey, don't the don't laugh. Get better be in the unit, I promise. If you control the ball, it looks like he might have been. Is that, is that foot slightly in? It's a very tight call. Just can't see behind the player just, from this angle. That's a tough one. But 
Referee, assistant referee, make decision. That's going to be halftime. We'll be back in just a minute with the second half. Offside is good. Offside is good. I don't feel cooked. Yeah. Barely. Yeah. Barely. Yeah. The word was better. <laughs> um, this next seven minutes, we've got to pressure them defensively. All right, leave the rock alone, numbers on our feet. When we put them under pressure defensively, they don't have much else. Okay, see me with the long hair, all right? He's just getting it on the outside. Get up and put pressure on him. Get up and put pressure on him. Okay, Mikey's coming back in for Max. Okay, stay in, give me some, give me some more. Boys, we haven't given enough effort here yeah. in this first seven minutes. Hey, these next seven, We've got to lift our effort levels. We've got to lift our effort levels, all right? Let's Push go, let's uh, What uh, Marcel said, eh? With scrum or line out, rover our wing, you guys shut down the two guys. Yeah. Let the first play his thing. Let's go, let's go, baby. One, two, three, energy! energy. Come on, boys. Hey, it's fucking war, let's go. Make them fucking pay. Welcome back. It's going to be second half action here between Nav 7's on it right to left on your screen. In the brighter red and in the blue is Life West. Life West trailing right now off a couple of Tim Stanfield tries. Plus Moala touching one down. Life West, some fantastic players. Had a period of two minutes with an extra player. Couldn't put one in there. A lot to play for here. John Broker with the contact coach. Walton Musselman kicks that one. It's not going to make it, but Life West is going to take this one. Life West wants to play. And that is down into the hands of Skylar Mitchell. Mitchell across the 22. Life West takes a chance and makes that chance work. They're up to 12. Excellent conviction there. Often when the kick isn't going to end, you tend to see the teams leave it alone. But no way, Life West pounced on that ball and they took Nav by surprise. So if we just look at they pounced on the ball, kept it alive, and then he gets the ball away, and then we can race away in for a try there. Skyler Mitchell, what a way to start the half and a way to get yourself back into the game. Great conviction there from Life West. Skyler Mitchell, Lindenwood University product, 24-year-old, scoring that one. Vakalawa made the decision to take it. Vakalawa, veteran on this team. Wonderful job there as we see a try on the other field. Dallas scores again over at Nova. Back here on field one. Life West set to kick off. Corey Jones takes that one down. Coming back across they are. There's the big man, Moala. Moala into contact quickly. You see, it looks like Michael McCarthy is back on the field, so he must be okay. Past any kind of HIA, but Josie Nye is going to come around, and Nye for Nav headed towards the line. And he's over. No problem there. Nav continues their winning ways. Excellent try. Nav extends the lead. Yeah, Nye just raced away there. Such a power athlete. They got the turnover, and then he's away. Just look how he powered away. He's got the pace to keep going. And I think Nav might be under, there might be a bet to who gets the best dive here, John, when they're scoring a try, certainly because they're it. certainly working hard. I'm sure they'll review that tonight to get the good feels, uh, but well deserved, great finish. You see Old Blue warming up in the background, that kick was good. Right after this, we're gonna bring the East Coast, West Coast battle, Old Blue versus Belmont Shore, followed by Schuylkill River versus Chicago Lions. Brown the other day on field one with Denver Barbos and the St. Louis Bombers. Great sevens rugby action coming your way all day tomorrow, starting at 9 a.m. Central. We're going to bring you quarterfinals, semifinals, and the games for some hardware here in Madison of the USA Club Sevens Championships. Men and women will be crowned. Dante Bamdani comes down with that, gets the ball away. Good work to Vakalawa. Vakalawa holds it and it goes back inside. Well held, a little tricky there for Bamdani, but he gets a hold of it. Ball spills forward eventually. But it's in the hands of Nav. Nav puts that one away, and that one gets spilled. We're going to come back for a penalty here. Looks like a card coming for key man, Andrea Tukovu. Yeah, big momentum swing there. It looked for all money that Life West were going to go through, and then just in the tackle, spilled it. Gives Nav that opportunity to play against six men. Smart there from Corey Jones. Stanfield gets a hold of it. Corey Jones realized one person was off for yellow, another player going back slowly. 
went and took that one up, but now he's under a bit of pressure there, taken away. The back here for a penalty against Nav this time. Lifewest on the move. So Gade, so Gade moves it across, gets it in the hands of Denenberg. Denenberg steps around a couple. Denenberg looking for some space, drawing in some defenders, looking for a teammate. Finally down across the 22 there, quickly in and quickly won for Nav Sevens. Wonderful work around the breakdown, and off they go. Looking for another try coming. A little ball out there. Corey Jones gets to the Stanfield. Stanfield thinking about his dive already. Heading across the 40 meter line. Headed towards the try zone. He's across the 22. He looks inside. He's going to keep it outside. Touches it down. No theatrics this time. But a happy man right there as he scores his third. Yeah, it's just, you've got to look back at that turnover. That's where it all came from. Wonderful pressure at the breakdown. Uh, to move that ball then into space and it was catch pass, catch pass once again Then Stanfield, probably one of the easier tries that he's had. So when we look back here, just look at this technique, he's all over the ball, he's on his feet, he's got all rights to it, but not only that, he's got the awareness, once the penalty is given, he knows that there with one man on the floor, that's only five defenders, so he just moves that ball into space, doesn't do too much, good catch pass from Corey Jones, and then from, what, 60 meters out, Stanfield, he won't get an easier try than this. Uh, surprise we didn't see the dive, but if you get a hat trick, you can kind of do what you want. Fair play. Blue players looking on there in the back, waiting for the next matchup. Thirty-one twelve here, Life West. Two minutes to go in this match to cut that down. And Donnie comes down with a referee. Spots a high tackle there, so they're gonna go quick. So got a lot of directional work in this second half. Off to the left hand side, bringing it back to the center of the field. Life West with a little pop-up. It comes down into the hands of Sogare. He's looking for someone to pass to. Gets to halfway. Ball up there to Butu. Butu gets a ball to Josepa Ruotalevi. Trying to work something here is Bandani. He's hauled in a touch by Jones. The referee says, yes, indeed you were before you get rid of the ball. We'll line on here for Nav Sevens. And you can tell the intensity of this game is kind of it's kind of went out a little bit now. Uh, probably both teams are brought on the bench. It's the end of a long day, so the sting of the game is, is kind of left. But it's an important opportunity for both teams to want to leave this tournament day on a high. So just looking for a little bit of a spark for the last minute or so to go. Ball up to Jones, down again, looking for some space. Big attempted tackle coming in, but Nye is able to roll right out of it. Nye, ball in one hand, now in two, looking for runners, looking for people. He has attracted three defenders there. Could be some room on the field, but not released. So it's going to be a Life West ball, Life West. And Donnie looks back the other way, throws a little bouncer. Back on the field there is Tukovu. Tukovu takes it in. Corey Jones comes around and makes life difficult for the distributor. Able to get that one up. Now they're going to go over and try to recycle it. Have done. Ball out to the left-hand side. That one is spilled by McCarthy. We're going to come back for a penalty. Here goes McCarthy. Down to the ground again. Make a back high tackle one more time. See the 40-meter line of Nav 7s right there. Nav Sevens is sure to go through to the quarters here, so want to just maintain for tomorrow. The ball comes up into the hands of Adrian Robb. Adrian Robb takes him to the ground. We're at 14 minutes in the game clock. We're at referee's time. Player didn't release, so we have a penalty here for Nav Sevens. Everybody slowing down. Talking to the referees, seeing how much time is left. Time is out, and Nav Sevens will take this one 31 to 12. Excellent work from this Nav Sevens team, really making a statement going into tomorrow's quarterfinal matchups.
We are down on the field at the Wisconsin Rugby Sports Complex. I am here with Tim Stansfield, the legend himself, playing for NAF, going against his old squad, Life West. You guys found a win, 3-0. and Into the quarterfinals you go. How do you feel? Yeah, good. I mean, we said it all. Thank you. We are down on the field of the Wisconsin Rugby Sports Complex. I am here with Tim Stanfield, the legend, making his way with NAF. Was that a hat trick today, man? You were balling out of control versus Life West. You guys are into the quarterfinals. How do you feel about your team's performance? Yeah, good. I mean, it's nationals, and being the defending champs, you're going to get everybody's best. So we knew every team's going to come out hot and give us their best. So we just talked about weathering the storm, sticking to our shape and structure, and trusting the system. An opportunity for NAF to double up your first one with them. Tell me what you guys need to do to finish out and go 3-0 and on tomorrow. Yeah, again, I mean, it's all downhill, or it's all uphill from here. Um, we knew pool play was going to be tough, but the real rugby starts tomorrow. It's finals footy, so you got to bring your best every game. Absolutely. Hey, thank you for stopping by and your patience. Good luck in the quarterfinals, all right? Thank you, guys. Hey, NAF, 3-0, and handling business, looking almost unstoppable, unbeatable. We're back up to you guys up top. Thank you, Lance, for really getting away. Belmont Shore in the yellow, kicking off to Old Blue New York. Wonderful kick goes up, bounces in a couple directions, comes down to Belmont Shore. Belmont Shore quickly up to the right-hand side. Ball slips out, winds up almost in touch. Old Blue hacks that one forward. It's going to go back to where it was. Should be a Belmont Shore line out here. John Broker here with the contact coach. Interesting one in this matchup. Yeah, it's, it's deep in the day now for Old Blue and for Belmont Shore. It's, both teams have really got to start strong, keep that momentum, because sevens is all about momentum, but critically it's about that possession, John. Belmont go to the middle of the line out, well taken. Around the back they come, looking to get the ball wide. Speed pouring on here. Nice little show in the middle. Gets his hands free, but doesn't have someone to pass to. Quick recycle. Have to go the other way. Mike St. Clair does a good job of closing down that side. The defense here from Old Blue. We gather this quick. Forces Belmont back to about that 40 meter line. Going to have to regather and gain some momentum here. He Raymond trying to come in over the top, but a little too over ambitious. And a penalty against him as we're going to come back to Belmont Shore at the 22-meter line. Big double tackle there. Ball up. Good transfer. They went back. They seem to be okay. Powerful defense coming in from Taquan Perry. Old Blue. Players pounding each way. We have, it looks like a knock-on advantage here. Go yet again at the five-meter line. Space is opened up. It should be a try, and it is. Great work, Ryan Hudson, to touch that one down. A little bit of scrappy play, a little bit of take what you can get. Belmont Shore touches one down. Yeah, big hallmark of that first two minutes. There's a lot of pick and goes, keeping that ball alive. But from the Wipe base the of a ruck, you can score tries many ways in rugby. Belmont Shore essentially went for the direct route. So keep an eye on this breakdown. This is going to be a really key battle. Can the defense get on top, or is it going to allow the attack to keep those yards in and around those pick and goes? Good 7-0. Belmont Shore leads Old Blue in the opening moments of this matchup. We'll just look back here again. It's all close quartered stuff. It's just taking it into contact. Good ball placement. And then the support's on there for that second pick and go to get over for a try. Right 
Belmont hangs a high one up there. They wanted to play it, and they made the mistake. So we should come back for the knock-on, John. Yeah, that's what I thought was going to happen for a second. I thought they were going to run back to the 50-meter line. But that was a knock-on by Braithwaite. Yeah, it's big error there. Ball. Yeah, very big error. Big error. The, the ball wasn't going 10. Okay, if you're going to attack it, but your yeah, skill execution has to be perfect. And unfortunately, there it was a knock on. So, from going from your own free kick, now you're defending the scrum in the midfield. So, defense for the old blue are going to have to try and get on top. Set. Munoz to put this one in for Belmont. Munoz. There's Fujimura over the top of him, but offside, according to the referee. Scrum called by Belmont. They want to isolate some runners out wide. Good room in the middle of the field. Yeah, this is a midfield scrum is always one of the best attacking opportunities because you're going to have to isolate the defenders, particularly when you've got the scrum half, the defensive scrum half on the left hand side. That makes that open side to the right of our screen wide open should they choose to go that way. Ball out there from Munoz that time. Go back across the other way. Interesting change of direction. Fortunate tackle for Aki Raymond. Ball to Belmont. Little show. They've got an advantage here, but they've broken up the middle of the field. Belmont headed towards the line. The ball comes down. Little offload there. Ball over the top. They're going to go over again for another try. Ryan Hudson in the right place at the right time, two times in a row. Second try for Hudson. Absolutely, Hudson's just putting himself in a position where support play is going to be absolutely crucial. It was a wonderful fight back from Old Blue there to try and stop that try, but it's all about support when we look through. First of all, what a great break, but look at the tenacity there to get back and get the try, but it's all about the support. Offload from the floor, offload then the second time. And that man Hudson's there for number two. He scored two tries, what off the probably ran five meters total. That's all his support lines. Plays. Taya Nosa there, wily veteran, saw that one. Hudson just gets himself in the right place for the second offload. 14 nil. Time back on, five minutes gone in this first half. 14 nothing, Belmont, two tries. Old Blue will want to take this kick. Make something of it here as they go with just a little chip down the middle. And that one gets chipped forward by Old Blue. The foot race is on. Good tackle, ball loaded to Munoz. Quickly across field, reset by Belmont. Good work there, power in the contact. Old Blue trying to hold this one up. Ball spills to the ground. Every says it went back, that's kicked forward. We're going to have a penalty against Belmont Shore this time for crossing for an offside. We'll see what Old Blue wants to do with this. Michael St. Clair has a hold of the ball. Let's see what his decision is. Interestingly, five minutes 45 into the game, and this is the first real possession that Old Blue's had. So they've tapped and go. Let's see if they can maintain that possession and put Belmont under pressure. Uji Moore gets it out there to Aki Raymond. Aki Raymond, no space to work in. Three defenders on him. He got a high tackle there, so he takes that one and goes quickly. Seemed to talk the referee into that penalty. Hockey quite a chatty fella. Wouldn't be surprised. Great man. Goes to the ground right there. Ball up to St. Clair. St. Clair looks off to the side. Fujimura. He does a nice wraparound moves there. The ball comes up to Nick Franklin. Nick Franklin takes a couple of defenders with him. Works his way in there. Belmont told to let that ball go. First, we've really seen a Jake Fury, but referee's going to come back. We're going to have a card against a Belmont player. Offside. Oh, Referee off. not going to let Fujimori get away with that one. But one player down, 20 seconds to go in the half. Good result here for Old Blue. Only a good result if you get it over the try line. Belmont's defense has been excellent so far, but they're under the pump here. Aki Raymond puts that one back to Braithwaite. Braithwaite is five minutes up. Braithwaite is at the line. Can he get it down? Probably going to be held up here. No, he recycles that ball and gets it back. St. Clair has it. He's got to work to the ground, and he does. Michael St. Clair, five points here in Madison. It's a very point in this game. As coaches, you talk about scoring either side of halftime just to keep that momentum, particularly at 14 points down from an old blue perspective. 
that veteran there, St. Clair, he was not being stopped. He muscled his way over there. So that's an important try, but critically, they're still going to have another 90 seconds with Belmont Shaw still in the bin at the other side of halftime. So a real big moment in that game. Referee whistles to the end of the half. It is 14 to 5, Belmont overall blue. We'll be back in a second with this second half action. Stay with us. Get the ball, you gotta move the ball, right? Those big boys are happy because you guys are keep running straight into them. To you gotta shift it. We got the speed, we got the fitness, we have to go to the edge. We can't carry straight into them. Just is unacceptable, boys. This ball line is very, very close. Very close, right? We are receiving, we make sure we win the kickoff, and then we put one in. We gotta be the first one to score. Otherwise, momentum is shifting right now. We're good? Yes, yeah. yeah, yeah. Quick with Psycho. Yeah. Uh, on the breakdown. Hey, okay. gotta be there on the breakdown. Gotta be there. Let them make yeah, the penalties. Work all right, boys, work hard. All right. All right, Belmont on three. One, two, three. Belmont! One, two. Uso. A lot of energy, boys. A lot of energy. It's our game. Take, go. Right away, right away. But look at a second try here for Ryan Hudson just over the top there. A lead for Belmont Shore. Last second try of the half here by Mike St. Clair. A lot to play for in the second half here at the USA Club 7s Championships. John Broker with Craig Wilson, the contact coach. Old Blue will take a little bit of momentum out of that try. But they still have the work to do. Oh, absolutely. The try and the yellow card. So both teams here, it's been a bit of a battle of attrition, actually, between the both teams, particularly the third game of the day. So I'm going to keep an eye on the breakdown because I think that's going to be a big determinant of how this game goes. Underway again, Fujimura throws that one down, spilled forward by Belmont Shore. Be a scrum here for Old Blue. The pressure on there from the chasers of this Old Blue New York team. Early opportunity for them. Yeah, this is a big opportunity. We talk about when the yellow card becomes really important. Obviously, Belmont Shore are going to have to put three people in the scrum alongside the scrum half should he choose to stay close. So that means it should be potentially a 4v2. Even if you just take a look at the screen now, you can see there's a lot, a lot of space out there if Old Blue can win this ball. Have some speed out wide if they can get it there. The referee bringing this one up. Remember, after this, we have Schuylkill River versus Chicago Lions, and then Denver Barbers versus the Bombers of St. Louis on this field one. We're rounding out day one of the USA Club Sevens Championship. See Fujimura going to put the ball under the feet of Jake Fury there. Ball in the middle of the field. Let's see where they decide to go. They're going to go wide. Aki Raymond, is he going to look for the corner? He is going to look for the corner. Tries to hand off. Driven towards the sideline. Good defensive work. He has not released it. The referee says the players need to release him. Raymond catches them. Not 10, I believe, but referee's going to let it go. He took it quick. Fujimura brings it back cross field. Get the ball into the hands of Mase. Mase puts that one wide. Fury gets a skip by him. It's going to be a line out here for Belmont Shore. Huge defense from Belmont Shore there. They had to work on a drift defense or a push defense, and they absolutely nailed what they had to do. And then also they put pressure on at the ruck, and that allowed their defensive in the midfield on the return play to be set. They could get off the line, and they could force that pressure on, what led to a turnover. So wonderful play from Belmont Shore, and now they're back to a full complement of seven men. Belmont sails that one over. It doesn't work out for him. It's down in the hands of Daquan Perry. Daquan Perry gets the ball back to Braithwaite. Braithwaite shuffles a little bit, keeps himself out there, gets his knee to the ground. Belmont is going to have to release him. Hudson to try to pull that one over. Braithwaite gets it again. 
moves it out there into the hands of Mase. They got the ball to the wing to Aki Raymond now. Aki Raymond nearly wriggles away from a couple. Fujimura, quick ball, looking good. Braithwaite gets it in the middle of the middle field. Dequan Perry, Dequan Perry steps one. Dequan Perry about eight meters out from the line. Ball comes back for St. Clair. St. Clair is told by Fury to go to that side and does indeed trying to find these holes, trying to get it set up. Mase, Tim with Mase driving forward, gets it to the ground. Need a distributor here, and they find one in Raymond. Raymond pinballing through a couple of players there, just looking for his space. Well, he's willing to have a go. They're right at the line. Sometimes the hardest place to score for Braithwaite gets it to Quan Perry. Perry gets it up to Fury. Fury's going to need to push a player off here. Use all his strength to get to the line. He cannot make it. Players up and over him from Belmont Shore. We'll see where this goes. It was knocked on by Fury. It's going to be a scrum here for Belmont Shore. What defense? Oh, be so impressed with Belmont Shore's defense. What great character is shown in this team. They're obviously going to be tired because they had the man down, but their scramble defense has just been excellent. Look at this. He fends off the fend, the defender there, and then it just stops him right before the line. He just tried to force it, Fury there, just a little bit too much. There's the knock on. Okay, it's a big moment, but from an old blue point of view, <laughs> Belmont Shore has still got a long way to get out. You know, this is a real tough corner to get out of. So this game is still very, very evenly matched. It was Ty Nosa in there in the number five for Belmont Shore. The absolute veteran of the USC Eagles program, sevens and fifteens, came across to make that tackle. We knew that that was an important part of the game as we see this scrum getting set. It's fine. Not binding. Not binding. I hear it. I hear it. Old blue, not binding. Going to get a free kick here. Daquan Perry is going to take this one. Daquan Perry looks at the line and is over the line. Daquan Perry may be getting a penalty try here as a referee. Walks to the center, runs to the center of the field, and puts that one down. That is seven points. No kick needed. Two-point game here. Belmont, three minutes to go. Contact code. This is going to be exciting. Well, that really livened this three, game up. it would be interesting now if a yellow card comes. I was going to say, there's the yellow card. If you give a penalty try, you usually see a yellow card with it, and Belmont sure have just received that. So it looks like a free kick is given. It's just as we watched his scrum, referee was not happy with the scrum here. Just as we're looking back at this replay here. Early drive, it looks like. And a quick tap penalty. A big, strong drive from Taquan Perry there. I'm not too sure what the penalty try was for, but it doesn't matter now. Nice high kick from Old Blue, sails over the head of a couple of Belmont players. Belmont players saying that they may have been taken out there in the air. You can see Steve Lewis in the background there. Air contact in the air, that warm penalty. I thought it was fine, but I think it was blocked by one of the players. Um, I was fine with it. Okay. Um, so just a line out. Yeah. Okay, thank you. There's a line out to white. Off Got it. <laughs> yeah, one person came off. Number four, gold. Yes. Four? Yes. Number four, gold. Yes, he's right there. Time is on. White line out. Sub. Ten white is off. Ten white. Time is still off. I was told 10 white is coming off. It's 10 white is coming off, according to the card. In the air, so no problem with that. It looks like it came off the Belmont Shore player, trip it into touch. After all this, we're going to see an old blue line out and we restart the game. The time is off, so it's not wasting time. Okay, two is off. There's no double yellow. Yes. Yes, okay. Time is on, white line out. Now we're ready to get underway here. Old blue, a little messy there, but they're gonna get the ball down. So this is Kevlar. Little short side run. Keep this one. And penalty against Belmont again. Player not rolling away. These starting to add up these penalties here. Yeah, absolutely. They thought the breakdown would play a big part in this game. It's proven so. Across the field they come. They still need a couple of points to Old Blue. 
Just down two, a little switch back in. St. Clair, always like the tech people on. Belmont trying to drag him towards the touch line. Opens up the far side of the field for this whole blue attack. Isolated player gets hit there. They're gonna have to get back on it. And we are. Right away. Little mistake there. We'll see who's gonna come. It's gonna be Belmont ball. They have not touched the ball in a while, but now they're gonna penalty his old blue over anxious at that breakdown. And quick they go. Ball in the middle of the field. Good runner here. Good footwork. See what he can do as he slides through that gap. Ball just spills forward. They can let this go into the try zone. So they'll come back for a scrum here. A great break, a little Come mistake there from Belmont. 30 seconds to go, two points in it. 90 yards to go for this whole Blue New York team. Gold. You can just tell by the body language here, there's two very tired teams. You can see he's just searching for a hole when he decides to see a bit of footwork and powers through. But once that ball's exposed in one hand, it just takes the slightest of a knock for the knock on, particularly late on when fatigue has set in. And it just needed possession there to be kept from a Belmont Shore point of view. But this does give Old Blue one last opportunity. But if they're going to do it, they've got to go a long, long way. They've got some fresh legs in the field. We'll see who calls their number. Puts himself down field. Nick Franklin to put this one in. Nick Franklin hoping for a penalty again there, but not going to happen. As they come wide, ball goes bouncing. Long way to go. Mike St. Clair at his own five meter line, play just it, across it. the field now. Shows one way, goes the other. Gonna have to put a pass in here. Looking to get in the middle of that gap. Blue dealing with some tenacious defense from Belmont Shore. But we have a whistle here. Tackle's gotta get low. And they're gonna go quick. High tackle there, got a number of white jerseys on this side of the field. A big hit comes in from Belmont Shore. I want to explore a little more space here, but Belmont over that ball for over 14 minutes. I'm sure they'll check the clock here. Belmont's going to kick this one out. The referee is going to whistle for the end of our match and a two point barn burner. Old Blue loses to Belmont. Sure, what a game we have just had. Stay with us here. Coming up next is going to be Schuylkill River versus the Chicago Lions right after this. Sideline at Wisconsin Rugby Sports Complex with a legend in USA Rugby, a legend in New York, and a legend in storytelling. I'm here with Steve Lewis, Lizard Rugby, better known as Steve. Old Blue taking a two and one in the pool play. Dropped the game at the very end to Belmont Shore, who looked really strong. Tell me about this group, and tell me about your chances going into tomorrow. Yeah, so two and one in the day, so we've qualified for the quarters. So that's kind of the important thing. Uh, in fact, that was our best game. That was the best performance against a good Belmont team. So quite happy with that, actually, coming through that. We played better. Um, didn't get the rubber green here and there. Um, one thing I do have to say, though, Lance, is that is a wonderful hat. You know, let, me, let me take this off real quick. Let's not distract you. Let's talk about the game at hand. Coach, you have been all over the world giving to the game, giving back to the game, even find yourself helping Nigeria, coaching Nigeria on their chance to go to the Olympics. What does an Olympic appearance mean for you as a coach if you've given an opportunity? Yeah, well, you know, like as a player, it would be an honor. Um, professionally, you know, it's one of those achievements that you'd, you'd like to do, right? That we'd all like to do. So I don't think it will happen in Nigeria this time, but obviously I want to help as best I can. we got to go back to the action on the field. Chicago is heating up right now. Back to you guys up top. Thank you, Coach Steve. 
We're back here. Schuylkill River in black makes a huge break. They're the five meter line of the Chicago Lions here in the second last game of the day. Schuylkill River from the Philadelphia area moves that ball across into Danoy's hands. Coming across field, going to hand to Ben Jansen, the big number three. Jansen headed towards the line. Jansen going in, ball up into the hands of Vanoy. Vanoy shows one way. Very Bryce Gumcraft goes the other way. First five points. Kuko River in black here gets their first five. It's been a hallmark of their play all day, just very calm and composed. And they've got all the tools right now, Schuylkill. They can either go through, round, or sometimes they've been going over. On this occasion here, they just kept the momentum. They just ride it out, the rough tackles there from the Chicago Lions, and eventually the dam will break. If you just keep chipping away, that's exactly what happened. Good footwork, good power, and a well-deserved try. Tough angle for the kick here. And it is going to push to the right of the post. So it's going to be 5-0. Scuba River over Chicago just getting underway here on field one. Chicago in white. Running from right to left. Two minutes gone. Scuba to kick this one off. Nice high kick. Sailing down and back towards the 22. Well taken by Chicago. They get that one going right away. Cross field they come into the hands of Goodrum. Nice break. Looking forward is Chevalier. Chevalier just hangs that one back up. It's into the hands of a Schuylkill River player trying to keep it in field. Is John Scoli. John Scoli rolls that one back. At their own 22, Schuylkill going to hang on to this one. Defense coming up. Going to have to make some yardage here before they can break through. John Scoli again gets the ball in the middle of the field. A little suffocated by the Chicago defense at the moment. Just about 10 meters out, looking for the right break. Lockie McDonald over that one in defense. Ball back, however, Brian Keown takes it in the contact. A lot of hard work going on here, but able to maintain the ball. John Scoli moves it to the wing. Nothing happening there except for this little break after I said that, and off they go. It's like Capriati headed down the line. Capriati's got a chase for Capriati. Spins after another one. He wasn't held, so he can keep going. He's across the 22. Going to get to the corner. Dalgo is going to stop his getting to the center of the field. But a great individual play by Jesse Capriati. I'm happy to be on your field as well. And Skokil there worked so hard to get that try because the Lions Just were make sticking sure their tackles. They were working really hard. Okay. And then Capriotti, when he had that opportunity, look how he just worked his way. He had no space. He had no right to get through there. But that footwork and that power. And then even though when he was dragged down a little bit, just looking at the presence of mind, he rolled. He knew he wasn't held, so he can continue to go up. And then he could jog the ball in. But he, he was made to work at the end there. As we just look back, look at that footwork. Nowhere to go. Two defenders. It was footwork, it was strength, it was power. And then he raced away under a lot of pressure. Capri out of the Penn State product playing for it. Justin Pitt Hundley down in State College, PA. Playing here with Schuylkill River. Scoring the first try. Second try, pardon me. Both tries in the corner, hard kick. So we're going to stay at 10 nil. Four and a half minutes gone. That one hangs high just inside the 10 meter line, but played by this Schuylkill River at Vice Chicago. So Schuylkill River will take this one back. Chicago might have better just let that hit the ground. Vanoy looking in the middle of the field. Ball up there to Ben Jansen. Jansen takes that one down, coming back across field from Keown. Gianna Scoli. It's a two on three, so he's just going to size everything up. Intelligent player. Penalty advantage there. Penalty against Chicago, not rolling away. Player just in the way of everything. The highlight of this Schuylkill team is just their ability to keep calm every single occasion, whether it's high intense play or just slowing it down. They know how to use the momentum. See the other field there, things getting tied up between Tennessee Elite. Washington had a club whack. Big pressure coming up in this field, however. Chicago Lions turn that one over. Great work. Ball to Jacob Hidalgo. Hidalgo looking for some runners. Gets it across into the hands of Goodrum. Goodrum 
gets it in the middle of the field and gets it back from Carso. Looking wide to Lockie McDonald. Lockie McDonald trying to eat up some space. Beautiful switch back to Chevalier. Chevalier can't make it, but he's able to get back up and go ahead. They have a penalty advantage right here. He did not release him on the ground or tackle him again. Nearly card worthy there as they're going to get back at ball, but McDonald, Lockie McDonald, the Australian, going to touch that one down. And then you've got to release him as well. You've got, but he's Big fan of what the Lions are doing, the Chicago Lions. They've got good character. You can see they're a very connected team. They hustle, they work hard for each other, and they're willing to rough it up. So you can just see this switch here was a thing of beauty. It was great timing, and he had an opportunity to keep going there. But as you can say, the tackler must release. He didn't. That's where the penalty advantage came from, and then eventually that try. Yeah, that was holding on a little bit long there. It could have been a card, but they got the try anyway, so they'll be happy. We'll have a restart, and then it's last play. Kick is no good there, so we're at 10 to 5. Referee has said we have a kick, but that'll be last play. First half almost over. Nice high kick when someone makes something in hat, say, make something happen. Pardon me, long day. The last moments of this half, Schuylkill River certainly would like to have thrown 22. Moving that one across field. A little bounce. Gianna Scoli is going to go wide with this one. The try score, Capriati. Capriati nearly wriggles away again. Free character when he gets in there. Looking a little flat, trying to get some big runners there. A little spin around. Mulville gets through the defensive line. All back to Brian. Stella. Stella to the ground. Chicago players bearing down there. This will be a penalty against Schuylkill River. But they decide. They say they decide to take the line out. They'll have time for the line out, but they're going to take the scrum here. Yeah, I think the scrum tends to be the, the safer bet particularly when fatigue sets in, nailing those kind of small skills like the line out throw are really big deals. But brilliant work at the breakdown there. If we look back, Will McMahon was just all over that ruck, just trying to get the turnover, just forcing the, the attack to get in there and also free to make a decision because he put himself in a really good position. And now they've got the, they've got the scrum. Looking at the other field, it's 14-7 halftime. Tennessee Elite over at Washington Athletic Club. A great game on field too as well. On our field, referee and assistant referee having a little discussion. We're just about at halftime or a little player injury. And how about shout out to the next level production team? What about those shots there, John? Oh, Absolutely beautiful drone shots, shot. far shots, bring you all the fields. Next level rugby. I'll do all my thank yous tomorrow. Another great production job here at the USA Club Rugby Sevens Coach. National Championship. Binds, set. Ball in from Dorier there, but it goes over the top of Carso. So they have to regather just a little bit. He puts on a bit of speed looking to get through, but he's caught up by Stella. Across they come to Lockie McDonald. Lockie McDonald pushes across field. Good speed of ball here. Little switch back in. Is it there? It is going to be not quite, but a little pop up. And a try coming for the Chicago Lions. Chicago Lions under the post. Try awarded five points. Yeah, big moment. Like a carbon copy of the uh, switch we saw a little bit early. It's all about the timing and then the run and the pace onto the ball. But first of all, it's all set up with a good midfield carry. It was like a wrecking yeah. ball there. That created the off sideline. That, that yeah, put yeah. Chicago Lions on the front uh, foot. Nice. Yeah, yeah, just watch the timing the of this switch. Bang, the power goes on there. And that's when that line break is made. Good follow up support play and a really, really brilliant try there for Chicago Lions. Great way to end the half for this Chicago team for a bit of extra play. And we're going to come back with second half action just after this.
nothing's quite been like. The wings, let the fucking line leave you so if they kick, that's your fucking job to go. Yeah. yeah. When that ball cross, as that ball leaves the third hand, you have to fucking cover the joint. I'm going to add and lay it on the edges. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey, hey. We're good. We're good. Are we seeing the drag switches? Yes. Going yes. Through? yes. Okay. yes. If you're taking on. that drag That's switch, it. be deep and fucking yeah. patient. That third guy has to run the short line. Listen. That is your ball to score. Listen, we received this ball to start the half going this way. Boys, this is it now. Fucking seven minutes. Keep fucking playing like that, and the bench is going to give us a lift. Let's fucking go. Hey, finish, boys. Let's go. Hey, Leave it all in there. Magic. Let's go, light. Hey, good start. Let's finish this shit. We got it rolling. Let's keep it going. Let's keep it going. Wild Lions on three. One, two, three. Lions! We are back for the second half here. Late surge by the yeah, Chicago yeah. Lions. After a good start by Schuylkill River. It is going to be Schuylkill River in black running from right to left on your screen to kick off and Chicago Lions are set to receive this one. John Broker here with the contact coach Craig Wilson. Very close now. This is going to be interesting. Yeah, but those two tries for the Lions just before half time has really put this game in motion. And these are important, important games. You want to get that momentum going into the third day, a second day. Yes, yeah, finally poised, John. Lockie McDonald just getting a little tape job there. Take a look at the other field. Still 14-7. Tennessee Elite. And be here against them. As we're ready to get underway. A little chip forward there. Doesn't make 10. Gonna come back. Opportunity option here for Chicago Lions. Who they choose. Scrum option. They're gonna come center here. Plenty of room on either side. Yeah, momentum is all with the Lions right now. Uh, sometimes they've made it on their own just by good play, but also with Schuylkill going for uncharacteristic mistakes. There's been a lot of kicks today that haven't went 10. It's just a fundamental part of all sevens, getting that restart right. Let's see what Lions can do with this opportunity. Set. Ball comes around there in the hands of Carso. Carso looking around the side. Carso. Taken down by two. Stella tries to get in there and take that one away. McDonald's going to be able to recycle off to that right-hand side. Good work here by the Lions. They're putting the pressure on. Hidalgo takes the straightforward route. Back across they come into the hands of Lockie McDonald again. Nice show there. And it opens up for him. Lockie McDonald taken down inside the 22. Stella tries to get over that one. Can't flip the ball. They're going to go back for Carso. And here come the Chicago Lions, first five points. They take the lead in the second half. Very strong, just before and after the whistle for the Chicago Lions team. Absolutely. Just for momentum, it's all with Lions, and that one, they earned it. That was brilliant sevens play, just moving that ball to the edges and then letting their fast men do their work. But what I also liked was the offloads and then the quick rucks. So when we look back on this, just look at the balance of the running here. Absolutely brilliant there from Carso, and then the offload from support to McDonald, and then great vision back on his feet, Carso, after that run to get over and get that try. Big, big moment in this game. Google to receive this one. You see the teams warming up in the background there. Last game on this field of the day will be Denver Barbos versus the Bombers of St. Louis. Chicago line to kick off. Back off block. High kick goes back Stay off on. of Schuylkill. Bounces that time. Referee says, all's good. Let's play. Quick ball coming from Chicago. Chicago to Lockie McDonald. Lockie McDonald. Cut back in. Lockie McDonald. It's a pass up. Doesn't quite get the story the way he wants. Can he get a hand free? He's going to get to ground. Good work. Holding his feet. Wait for some support there. Hidalgo looks at it. Hidalgo can't quite get there. Hidalgo able to recycle. Excellently done. Donald once again in that elite position there. Shows the ball to several people before he finally gets rid of it. Off to the right-hand side they go. Chicago Lions just about two or three meters out. Okay, over this one. Player over the top there from Schuylkill. Be okay as they come to the middle of the field. Big run up the middle there. Right at the post they go, and Dorier, can he get it in? He can. Dorier, try awarded. Another five points for the Lions, coming good in the second half. 
Yeah, that was a brilliant try that worked, and that was multi phases and there's some decision making. But what I also liked was the little detail. Their presentation there was excellent at every single run, even then when they were under pressure. So you can carry here, look, this is a double tackle of three guys around there. You just look at the presentation to get that ball back. That's what's absolutely vital to keep that ball alive. And it was a pick and go to get over the try. But I tell you what, that was well worked there from the Lions. And the kick is good. We're at 22 to 10. A lot of time, a lot of points to make up. Excuse me, not too much time as we're going on three minutes left here. Schuylkill River has the players. Let's see what they can do as they will receive this ball off the Lockheed McDonald kick. Ball off a couple people's hands. Going to be a line out for the Chicago Lions, you would imagine they will slow this down and take their time about it? Uh, they absolutely set. will. Set, uh, I can't remember Skuko having any of the play of this, this half, John, at all. Four unanswered tries so far. Ball down and across, or at the 40 meter line. Good run up the middle of the field here. Keeping his feet, Chevalier pushing towards the 22. Off they come through Goodrum. Goodrum, they move the ball wide. A little spill there. This should be turned over to Schuylkill. Schuylkill gets a hold of it. Stella ducks under one. Puts the ball back. Schuylkill on the move now inside their 22. Schuylkill, they have two minutes. They have the time. If they can make something happen quickly here, and that's what they need. A big break up the middle of the field. Looking good for Schuylkill River. Kyle Hegarty. Hegarty headed towards the line. Hegarty, the 24-year-old of Westchester, Pennsylvania, touches down. Five points. They can put this one over the post. Yeah, this has made it a tight one there. It's Google, great job. They just managed to get a bit of possession, and that's what's absolutely vital in the game of seven. So deep in their own half, contesting the ruck, and he had the opportunity to see the hole, but he took it. And I tell you what, he was made to work the whole way there. I think it was another 10 yards. He might have been in trouble, but that doesn't matter. I tell you what, this game is right on knife edge. Kick is good. We have a five-point game. A converted try would win this for Scoopal River. Unconverted would tie it up. Plenty to play for here. Scoopal will be kicking off as we hit the one-minute mark to go. Ball up, Skukul tips that one forward to an advantage for Chicago, but they're going to take it and run with it. They're good to go, advantage gains. A little slow down, a little speed coming around the outside. And there we go for Chevalier, he's across the 22. One player to beat, hands him off, just gets caught. Skukul player digging over the top there, able to rip that one away. 25 seconds to go, 98 meters to go for Skukul River. First. Can they make it happen? That penalty will help. Google looking to run this one, looking for the break. Gonna have to be some stout defense here from the Chicago Lions, looking to force a mistake here. Another penalty, player just kicking their way through there. Pretty cynical play there. Very much so, but they're gonna let that one keep going. And here comes Schuylkill River, out to about their 15 meter line at the moment. And Google River just hooks that one in a touch. They're ready to be done with the day, and that is going to be the Chicago Lions game. I'm not too sure about that decision making there. You've got an opportunity for him to go 3 0. Uh, you can argue about the slightly negative play. Tomorrow's going to okay. tell, but if I was the coach, I'd be wanting to try and get that win. Uh, tough one there to end on, but they, uh, they're going to go out with a two and one record, John. That's going to be that for this. Schuylkill River loses to Chicago Lions. We have one more game coming up. The Denver Barbos versus the Bombers of St. Louis. We'll be back in a minute with the last game of the day. How was that? I have a go, man.
We're back. We're almost ready to get underway. We just saw a spectacular try by the Beltway Elite on field two. Little kick ahead, rolls into the try zone, pops up in their hands. On field one, we're going to have Denver Barbarians and the St. Louis Bombers. Final game of the day. You see the Bombers in black on the left of your screen, wearing white of the Denver Barbarians, set to kick off. Last game of the day here. Exciting action. Ball up into the hands of Schumann. Schumann, big power player for this team. Nick East, key man for the Bombers, moves that one away quickly. They're inside their 22. But this is a well-oiled machine, this St. Louis Bombers team. As you see a little step in and step out there. Across the field they come one more time. Ball into the middle of the field. Feeks has it. He shows a couple of people the ball. is going to hang on to that one. He's about 30 meters out. Nice ball off to the right-hand side here. The ball to Emmanuel Alberts. Alberts, such a powerful runner for Minneapolis, Minnesota. Another Lindenwood grad. Ball back across field. Taken to the ground. Quick recycle. Come back in the other direction. Really working both sides. Pushing this Denver Barbarians defense. Denver Barbarians made to work here. Once you drag that defense back and across two or three times, they really start to tire out. And to do just that are the Bombers. Bombers get that one up into the hands of Terrell Johnson. Terrell Johnson has to stop as the field runs out on him. He's going to get that one to ground. They've been back and forth about three times already. So this is going to be a test for the Barbos. Denver looking for it. Ball goes up into the hands of the big fellow there, Emmanuel Alberts. He hands off one. That defense doesn't tee tire down. Try awarded five points for the Bombers. Oh, what a brilliant try. As you mentioned, in comms there, it was just going from side to side. And what you're trying to do, a defense, when it's at its best, have their hips square. But they were going from side to side, and then the opportunity for the attack is eventually going to open up. And as you can see here, the defense got more and more passive. And then again, opportunity for Alberts there to get his fend in. You can see the hips are facing the touchline, facing the corner flat. Right, That's the easiest right. fend that he'll do, but the work was done earlier on. Albert 6'4", 240, full speed coming across the 22-meter line. That's a hard man to stop. Particularly this late in the day, John. Feeks. Going to push that one to the right of the post. Feeks originally from Canberra. Played Nola Gold Rugby New York MLR. Graduated from Lindenwood University, as did a number of these bombers. Feeks hoists a high one, doesn't quite make the 10 meters, rolls back. Referee Musanera will bring us back to the middle of the field. Take a beautiful look from the drone shot here, as you see the Barbos getting going on a set move. Across the 10 meter, across the halfway line, Feeks has to make the tackle. A lot of the middle field, first real chance here for the Barbos. Haven't had a lot of offense. Good footwork there, excellent from Warmer. Gets the ball out to the wing. Big power coming in here from Denver. That's going to go across the try line. What a response from the Denver Barbarians. Brilliant response, as you say. But it was interesting. I'll tell you what, that drone footage gave me some great information. Denver are operating seven up in defense so they've got all their players in the front line so that means when any back or any line break is made there's not going to be much opportunity to stop it and they just keep testing and look how they move the ball back towards the right hand side great step there really just been shifty not getting tackled and watch this once they're behind because there's no sweeper that allows for an easy break and good athleticism to get through Nick Johnson takes that one. You can see just a step out of the tackle there. The kick was good. So that is seven points for this Denver Barbarians team as they're set to kick off. Two-point lead to the Barbarians. Four minutes gone in this first half. Bombers go up and take that one. Feeks works it across field. This does Millar. Quick leap to that wick. This has been what they want to do. Terrell, Terrell, jo Terrell Johnson, South Missouri State University player. Yeah, 
And penalty drawn by the Denver Barbarians. A little slow at the breakdown that time are the Bombers. Referee says, fool off the mark, but you can take it. And off they go. Warmer once again with that tremendous footwork. Takes himself down. Bombers have to release. Crossfield they come, little show to the outside, keeping it to the inside. This footwork has been tremendous from this team. That's number two for Denver Barbarians scoring a try. I tell you what, individual brilliance from there. There's footwork all around, but if we just take a look back at this, from a standing start, just watch the momentum what is made with this footwork. Bang, off the left foot, then again on the left foot, third time on the left foot. That's three defenders beaten, and then had the pace to get through, even shrug off that tackle. Brilliant try. Kick is no good as it slides across the post, but they got the five points on the board. Very important there for the Denver Barbarians as we work our way towards halftime here. Just about a minute left in the first half, up by seven points. St. Louis to receive this one. The Bombers want to get some points on the board going into the break. All up, taken by Schumann. Schumann comes down. He's going to take a little run with it. Players not releasing. Nick Feeks goes quick. Nick Feeks out to the 50-meter line, still continuing his run. Players off their feet there, but get away quick enough. Schumann gets it. Referee's pretty happy with it. Emmanuel Albert, the try scorer. Emmanuel Albert barrels his way into one of the defending Barbos players, but does not release, gets himself isolated. And here comes Denver late in the first half. Denver. 15 seconds left in this half. Throw an errant pass. It comes down into the hands of one of these St. Louis Bomber players. And Jeremiah Munoz is going to cross the line. Munoz from Long Beach, California. Touches down a try. Excellent look and there in the defense, just keeping himself always an option ready to strike. So it looked like the Barbarians there from Denver were going to be moving that ball into place. But just the defender got himself, Munoz, into a position that he can be effective, picks up that ball and takes a very welcome five points for his team. And that kick is good. Referee whistles us for halftime. All tied up here. We're back of the second half. It's going to be a great one. Stay with us. And in. All right, boys, take one step in, eyes on me, please. Yeah. Right? Offensively, boys, let's get more depth so we can attack more. Right, they actually want us to force back into the middles. Let's get some more width off of that. Yeah. Off of our offensive, we'll create more opportunities with our posts, etc. Right? We go with that. Yeah, and so when we quick fucking tap, we follow. Yeah, yeah. Right? We yeah, follow. Yeah. Worm is all isolated there, right? If we could follow, it would have been easy. Yeah. Right? Yeah. We want to pick up the tempo. Quick taps, we all fucking yeah. 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 Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Defensively, boys, we've got to make our fucking one on ones. Right? And then at the breakdown stuff, patience is good, but if you have half a chance, fucking go. We can't have every ruck be really fast for them. Yeah. We have to put some pressure on, we can put pressure on and bounce back out. Yeah. Alright, does that make sense? Yeah. Alright, boys. Hey, we're in the fucking battle of yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. It's time yeah. to fight get back to yeah. our yeah. fucking yeah. system. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Let's go, we're, we're much better. Let's just yeah. look at our yeah. systems, people Back ourselves, back ourselves. On three. One, two, three. Bravos. Bravos. Yeah. Receiving. Welcome back. It's going to be the last seven minutes for today, but don't let that stop you. There's a lot coming up tomorrow. Tomorrow, quarterfinals, semifinals, and the championship matches for all the hardware. Men's, women's, the best rugby in the USA for sevens. Go to the USA Club Rugby Sevens page for the schedule for all the matchups. going to be fantastic. Right now, the St. Louis Bombers are going to kick to the Denver Barbarians, where it's all tied up here. John Brook, we're the contact coach for our last seven minutes of the day. And what a better game to end on. Yeah, this is a 
12-12, two excellent teams who could go very deep into this tournament. I'm excited for this seven minutes. Deeks puts up a long kick to the 22. A little Aaron pass there, a little slow. On nearly forward, but deep in their own end. Attack on the now. Barbarians are going to have to battle their way out. Man, the footwork right there, Wormer. Barbarians. Keep on a little offload, too. Just trying to push the defense, give them some room to run. Taco now. Block. Marked as Wormer. Full defense on their feet for the bus. Face. Yep. Both these teams two and other players of how this game finishes. But that's a penalty, and Feeks is going to waste no time. Feeks sees it, and Feeks spills that one forward. Knock. Referee's going to whistle it up. We'll probably come back for a scrum of the five meter line unless players weren't 10. But referee Musonera is indeed yeah. going to give a scrum at their own five meter line to the Denver Barbarians. Yeah, when the teams go back and analyze go, their play, it's not always the big highlights yeah. in attack and play that you're going to see. It's this characteristic in defense there, not giving up, particularly when you're 2 0, 12, 12 all. So it's really tight. It puts a lot of pressure on. Those are the clips you want to be seeing because that's going to get you deep into a tournament. Bind. Sit. See what kind of pressure the Bombers can put on here deep in their end, in their own try zone. Here come the Barbarians, working their way out. Now seven meters out there. Good recycle. Looking to go wide. You heard their coach talking about using the width a little bit more, not playing in the center of the field too much, saying that's what the Bombers <laughs> wanted to do. A little run, switch back around to Wormer. Wormer, the man with the good footwork. Barrels into one, taken down by Basca. Cross field they come. Haven't really dragged the defense too far yet. Barbarians will switch back in. Can they find the room with the try score here? Attack Nick Johnson. At the 22, not going too far. Looking for an offload there. Keep the ball alive. Pretty leading match on this side. Speed comes on, looking to get him across. Wesley White tackles him. They're right at the touch line. Able to keep it in. Good play there. Hi. Referee's going to go back to a penalty for a high tackle. Hi. Barbarians opportunity here. Two and a half minutes gone in the second half. The 40 meter line of the Bombers have worked their way down from their try zone. Get that offload up. Great play right there. Let's see what they can make it happen out of this one. Ball comes up into the hands of Lucatani. Denver Barbarians push that one forward. After all that work, a bit of hard luck. Going to be Bombers ball. Looks like there's a few tired bodies out there, John, and you don't blame them. They're working hard. But you can see there from Denver, they would really work controlling possession. But interestingly, the Bombers, uh, they've got their seven men in line. So in theory, you should always have a defensive overload. Because if the attack has to do the ball carrier, us a clearer that thing is as an overload so Time that makes the Denver progression at the field even more impressive because they were doing it with less attacking numbers right. yeah. forward pass call there not sure a little close Bind. but it's going to benefit the St. Louis Bombers one way or another this one in, but play is going to go against St. Louis this time. Free kick for the Barbos. Free kick. Scrum. Yeah, really good captaincy there. It looked like a free kick and the ball was bobbling around and one of the Denver players was asking for a yellow card. We don't often like that in rugby. We let the referee do their job, but the Captain there from Denver just diffused the situation, walked away, Crouch. everyone moves on happily. Bind. Liam Wynn made that call there. He seemed a tight head spot. Ball comes in from Wormer, five meters out, taken away by the Bombers. Referee says that's fine, so they're going to play. Do they have some speed out wide here? They're going to turn the corner on this one. Across they come. Keeping this one alive, ball in the hands of Calvin Erig. Erig is going to go into contact. Albert over that one. 
He's hard to dislodge. A little spin around there. Munoz looking for it. But Munoz can only go so far. They should have some width here if they can move the ball across. Long pass comes. The runner out wide, but trying to keep it in the middle of the field is Feeks. Feeks. Unload the ball. Referee says that's a mall. So if it stays up, it's going to be a scrum here for the Denver Barbarians. Just under 12 minutes gone. Barbarians attack. Everything's still tied. Yeah, very, very tight game. It's a massive arm wrestle right now. It's not often you see the choke tackle, the choke tackle to hold him up. It was a really interesting technique there. Look here at the play. Beeks had a runner outside of him, decided to keep it in. Might have been better to look for that width there and play the speed game. Ends up getting caught up here. Might have been a bit of a mistake in this game. Well, that's the danger. If you just look at it from a technical point of view, he had the ball in one hand, John. That means he's definitely not going to pass the ball so the defenders can swarm around. Maybe when he looks back at that, get the ball in two hands, then you've always given yourself attacking options. Free kick there, an early push from the St. Louis Bombers. Barbarians go in there, take that one as quick as they can. Referee whistles again. We have another penalty here. El Wormer cannot go quickly, giving him the mark. Barbarians, under a minute and a half to go. Set play here. Opportunity to score. Moving ahead here. It's all not at a 12. What kind of defensive structure does this team have? Albert tries to get over that one and poached away. Can't have it happen. Ball coming back across Wormer again. Footwork makes it dangerous. Always able to find a little space there and keep the ball alive. We got a two on one on the side here. Can they get it for Johnson? Johnson is there. Johnson is over. Try awarded by referee Musonera. Tell you what, Johnson is an excellent player. Every game he plays in, he has a massive impact here. And when you're looking for a finisher, he's not only got the power and pace, but he's got the understanding of where that try line is, when and where to reach out. That is an absolute skill, particularly that close to the try line. That is really, really well taken. He's been excellent all day long. Block, block, get out. Kick to come from a tough block, angle block. here. Yeah, we get more time. Yeah, now. Five points in it. Bombers still have an opportunity here. And that's not going to make it. They can get through. And again, remember tomorrow morning started at 9 a.m. Central, quarterfinals, then semifinals, finals. All the way through the championship matches, USA Club Rugby's YouTube page. And if you're around here in Madison, Wisconsin, feel free to come out, watch the games. Wonderful facility here at Madison United. That one didn't go 10. Free kick at the halfway. Is that a mistake from the, the Barbarians? That's going to make them pay. It looks like it is because here comes Feech. Can Feech make it? He slows down just a bit. I thought he had the gas to go, but they hang on to that one. Ball to Erig. Erig was it across. Looking for Wesley White out wide. Wesley White is going to get into a wrestling match here. He's in the five-meter line, powering his way forward. Got the big man. Chris Schumann coming in and a pick and go. Over the line they go. We are tied up again here in Madison, Wisconsin with a kick to come about. It is a game of fine margins, John. I heard the referee say last play and from the kickoff, he went short. But it looked for all money, the Feeks was gonna be in. It looks like he just tripped over himself a little bit. I'll tell you what, they kept their composure and they got the try. But it all comes back down to that short kickoff. It was an interesting decision there. Now let's watch this kick. Didn't work out from the end. We have a draw at the end of the day here. Both teams going through nonetheless. That kick is no good as the referee whistles us for the end of the game and the end of our day. It is going to be all level here. What a matchup and a tremendous day of rugby here. We're going to bring you a lot more of it tomorrow. It is going to be all of the championship matchups starting with the quarterfinals at 9 a.m. Central. Join us tomorrow for some more great USA Rugby Club 7s action brought to you by Next Level Rugby. Three minutes will play down.
We are down on the field. Denver Barbos taking care of business once again. I'm here with not only a player that was here last year for Sevens National Championships for Denver, but also one of the 15th National Champions from this year, Devarius Miller. You guys had a business on the way to the quarterfinals. How do you feel to get the job done and prepare for tomorrow? It feels great, man. It feels even better that that was a really hard-fought game. It, they fought down all the way to the end, down to the wire, to crunch time. So it felt really good to pull that one out. One of the things we talked about before in the past is about this, this Denver culture and how they bring you in and make you a part of the group. Does that have an effect on how well these guys are playing and how you always show up to these tournaments and do well? You said, does that have an effect on how well these guys are playing? Everybody. I mean, the culture was already there, man. They just added me to it, and I just bring what I can to the table. But the culture is already established. Uh, hard working, good defensive stands, multiple phases of offense or defense has always been the culture. So anybody that comes out here, you got to get with it or get lost pretty much. Hey. Good nothing, nothing to do with me. Good luck. All right, quarterfinals, big rugby time, championship season. You guys handle business, all right? Yes, Take care, brother. Right on the field at Wisconsin Rugby Sports Complex. It has been an amazing first day. Day two has already been said. We have some amazing teams ready to vibe for a national championship. Hey, we'll see you all tomorrow. Next Level Rugby, we're out.